Welcome to my channel. If you've enjoyed watching one or two of our videos and haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button now for more captivating stories like this. Don't miss a single story. Zhang Yu visited the first central hospital in Uni City to see Dr. Zhao, an ophthalmologist, for a consultation regarding his eyes. The consultation took place in consultation room number one. Initially, there was some doubt about Zhang Yu's identity and whether he was the correct patient, based on his appearance. However, Dr. Zhao reviewed Zhang Yu's paperwork and proceeded with the consultation. During the consultation, Dr. Zhao asked Zhang Yu to describe his eye symptoms. Zhang Yu expressed discomfort with his eyes and mentioned that his vision was different from what is considered normal. Specifically, he perceived colors in an unusual way, with a red layer covering objects and distorting their true colors. Although Zhang Yu could see Dr. Zhao's natural color, it was also filtered by the red layer, preventing him from perceiving the appropriate colors. Dr. Zhao inquired about Zhang Yu, age, but Zhang Yu was momentarily distracted by the red layer in his vision. Eventually, he shared that he saw the number 18 when he closed his eyes. Zhang Yu later asked Dr. Zhao if he had been asking about his age earlier, as he had not responded at the time. Dr. Zhao became upset by Zhang Yu's groggy appearance and questioned whether they were in the right department or if there had been a mistake in the appointment. Zhang Yu speculated that the red layer covering his sight might be blood, considering the number 18 he had seen. He observed Dr. Zhao's energetic behavior during the consultation. Dr. Zhao continued the consultation, providing advice based on Zhang Yu, medical report. However, there was a miscommunication when Dr. Zhao asked about alcohol consumption, as Zhang Yu mistakenly thought he was referring to his current alcohol intake. Dr. Zhao was disappointed by the difficulty in clear communication and determining Zhang Yu, diagnosis due to Zhang Yu, distracted state of mind. Zhang Yu noticed Dr. Zhao's fatigue and lack of focus during the consultation and apologized for his own distraction, which had led to unfocused and unclear responses. Dr. Zhao acknowledged the challenge of concentration but assured Zhang Yu not to worry and promised to carefully assess Zhang Yu, words and symptoms. Dr. Zhao meticulously examined Zhang Yu, thighs, focusing on his pupils and confirming his perception of the described symptoms. He asked Zhang Yu to look left and right to identify any issues in his eyes and carefully observed for any problems. After completing the examination, Dr. Zhao informed Zhang Yu that his eyes appeared normal, with no unusual findings. However, even outside the consultation room, Zhang Yu continued to perceive people around him as covered in the red layer he had described, despite Dr. Zhao's reassurance that there was nothing wrong with his eyes. As a result, Zhang Yu remained uncertain about his diagnosis. As he walked into the hallway, Zhang Yu noticed that all the people around him were covered in a red layer. Additionally, he saw a percentage number displayed above their heads, resembling a life indicator. The number he observed was 96%. Zhang Yu interpreted this positively and believed that there was no need to treat the red layer, which he thought might be conjunctivitis or inflammation in his eyes. He even associated the red layer with his ability to make money. Since Zhang Yu didn't find a solution for his eye condition during the consultation, he contemplated leaving the hospital. He questioned the usefulness of his ability to see the red layer, wondering how he could capitalize on it. In a world outside the hospital, strange creatures had started entering through pit holes, and soldiers were guarding against them. Zhang Yu exited the hospital, feeling disappointed that he had found no cure for his eyes. Meanwhile, the government announced the recruitment of a new team for the night patrol to ensure public safety on the streets. 99 years later, after a cataclysmic event, the government of Uni City had established a safe haven for people to survive. The mutants that had been infiltrating their world were reported to be retreating gradually, giving hope for a brighter future. While pondering the red layer in his eyes, Zhang Yu decided it would be best to carefully consider his situation once he returned home. As he walked the streets of Uni City, he noticed that his shoelaces were untied. While bending down to tie them, he sensed a demonic aura and heard someone speaking in a peculiar manner. Feeling scared and unsure of what to do, Zhang Yu opened his eyes and saw a shadowy figure approaching him. Overwhelmed by fear, he froze in place. Suddenly, a massive green light appeared above Uni City, captivating Zhang Yu, attention. Wondering about its nature, he observed a girl rushing towards something. Following her gaze, Zhang Yu realized she was about to engage in a battle with a mutant lurking behind him. Zhang Yu saw the percentage of both the girl and the mutant, indicating their life force. 
mutants had become a prevalent presence in Uni City, and Zhang Yu could perceive the percentages of soldiers and mutants alike. Zhang Yu contemplated the complexity of his own issue while witnessing the fight. The enormous green ball of light, which he had noticed earlier, was now in close proximity. Feeling panic rise within him, Zhang Yu observed that the percentage bubbles had emerged throughout Uni City, seemingly generated by the mutants. The spreading of these bubbles appeared peculiar and dangerous in Zhang Yu's eyes. After one of the water-like bubbles fell on his head, Zhang Yu experienced a peculiar sensation. In the bustling streets of Uni City many people continued with their daily lives, including Zhang Yu. However, Zhang Yu suddenly stopped in the middle of the street, questioning his actions and contemplating his life. He noticed an individual assisting an elderly man in crossing the street, cautioning him to be careful and watch his step. The busy street of Uni City persisted. Meanwhile, Zhang Yu found himself lost and thought about the Night Patrol Bureau, which was established by the government during the Great Cataclysm 99 years ago. He believed that the Bureau was a reliable support system for the city's citizens, and he held the belief that their world was progressively improving, becoming increasingly safe from mutants. As Zhang Yu stood on the streets, he caught the attention of a young boy who regarded him as foolish for idly standing there. At the same time, a vendor attempted to sell medicine to passers-by, claiming it came from the printing factory. The vendor informed a potential customer that genuine medicine cost 50,000 per bottle, but the one he was selling was significantly cheaper, priced at only 5,000. Zhang Yu contemplated whether Uni City, their place of residence, was truly as secure as they believed, or if the government was selectively showcasing positive events to divert attention from underlying problems. In the midst of Zhang Yu's thoughts about Uni City's true nature, a man suddenly approached and touched his shoulders. Zhang Yu was taken aback by the man's unexpected contact. It turned out to be the same vendor who had earlier been selling medicine. The vendor offered Zhang Yu the opportunity to purchase the medicine, claiming it was identical to genuine medicine from the printing factory. Zhang Yu expressed his skepticism, criticizing the vendor for selling medicine despite the presence of monsters throughout the city, which made it unsafe for people to venture outside. He sarcastically questioned the vendor if he considered himself a god of medicine. The vendor showcased various medicines but eventually walked away when Zhang Yu showed no interest in making a purchase. However, he warned Zhang Yu that he would regret not buying the medicine in the future, even if no monsters were currently in sight. As Zhang Yu deliberated whether to buy the medicine and jokingly asked if the vendor was giving it away for free, he approached the man and assured him that he was merely jesting. He then inquired if the vendor sold divine oil. Ultimately, Zhang Yu decided against purchasing the medicine and boarded a train. He believed that the vendor's asking price of 3,000 for a bottle of divine oil was excessive compared to what was being sold on the street. He contemplated reporting the vendor to the police but dismissed the idea, realizing that ordinary people like him could be found on every other street in Uni City. He concluded that his concerns were possibly unwarranted. Upon reaching Huan Station on the bus, the driver announced their arrival, instructing passengers to disembark. As some passengers prepared to disembark from the bus, Zhang Yu was taken aback by a startling discovery. He noticed something peculiar, a sudden reflection of himself materialized before him. Zhang Yu examined the reflection closely, perplexed by its appearance, especially since he seemed to be the only one who could see it. However, the reflection gradually began to fade, prompting Zhang Yu to scan the bus and his surroundings for any signs of unusual occurrences. He wondered if this was another hallucination, feeling cautious and uncertain about what was happening to him. He contemplated whether this strange phenomenon was a result of a second growth spurt, as he had been experiencing some discomfort lately. The bus departed from the station, continuing its journey to another stop. Zhang Yu pondered the slight pain he had been feeling since earlier and resolved to thoroughly examine himself once he arrived home. After enduring a long and exhausting day outside, Zhang Yu finally returned home. His first course of action was to take a shower, cleansing himself of the pollution prevalent in Uni City. As he prepared to look at himself in the mirror, he was taken aback by a surprising revelation, a peculiar pattern was embedded on his chest. Zhang Yu experienced a sense of familiarity with the pattern, believing it to be connected to the incident that caused him to be struck earlier. Driven by curiosity, Zhang Yu hurried to the library, determined to find books that might help him recall where he had seen a similar pattern before. After an extensive search, he stumbled upon a book whose cover bore a striking resemblance to the pattern etched on his chest. Zhang Yu was shocked when the book seemingly materialized out of thin air, 
floating before him. The pattern on his chest responded to the book, emitting a vibrant green light and electricity. An emerald aura enveloped Zhang Yu's body as he knelt in the bathroom, enduring the pain emanating from the pattern. He grasped the pattern tightly, feeling an intense heat and struggling to cope with the discomfort. Eventually, he finished his shower, rinsing the area where the pattern resided and where the sensation of heat persisted. As Zhang Yu observed the pattern, a sense of calm washed over him when it finally cooled down. Once his emotions stabilized, Zhang Yu gazed at the mirror and noticed that his number percent had increased to 100. He felt both curious about the sudden increase and elated that it had reached its maximum value. As Zhang Yu continued to scrutinize his transformed body, he made a startling realization, his shadow had vanished. Panic surged through him as he frantically searched for his shadow, scouring every corner and changing positions to confirm its absence. After exhaustive efforts, he finally caught sight of his shadow, bringing him immense relief. Although momentarily alarmed, Zhang Yu had experienced such a series of extraordinary events throughout the day that he pondered if losing his shadow would even surprise him. As Zhang Yu prepared to leave the bathroom, he once again encountered something peculiar. Opening the door, he found a shadow materialized directly in front of him, a shadow resembling his reflection. Zhang Yu carefully observed the shadow, drawing closer to it. He approached the shadow and conveyed his belief that things were not as simple as they seemed. After noticing his shadow, Zhang Yu experienced a sudden surge of pain and a rapid heartbeat. Though relieved that his shadow hadn't vanished, he discovered that it was actually alive, causing him stress. In the meantime, at Zhang Yu's home, he contemplated the situation of his animated shadow. Zhang Yu and his shadow spent time together, attempting to determine the extent to which the shadow could follow his commands. Zhang Yu felt reassured as the shadow showed no signs of harm and seemed obedient. He decided to test the shadow's capabilities by instructing it to raise its hands. To his delight, the shadow swiftly complied, showcasing impressive reflexes. Proceeding with further commands, Zhang Yu directed his shadow to raise its right leg, despite the stiffness and awkward movements. Zhang Yu was pleased with the shadow's obedience and began to believe that it would follow his every command. However, Zhang Yu also considered exploring alternative methods to ensure the shadow's compliance. Consequently, he commanded the shadow to dance, leaving it with no choice but to comply. To Zhang Yu's surprise, the shadow performed an impressive dance, exceeding his expectations. The series of events throughout the day left Zhang Yu with a headache, and as time passed with the shadow remaining alive, he became increasingly intrigued by its sudden appearance and its animation. Suddenly, a light emanated from Zhang Yu's chest, prompting him to wonder about the nature of this new occurrence. The light, which had left his body, now floated above him in the form of a magical green ball. Zhang Yu was astonished by the appearance of this mystical force. As the light transformed into a screen, it displayed detailed information about the shadow, including its attributes, shadow points, grid, and abilities. Zhang Yu was amazed by the screen, believing it to be the attribute panel for his shadow. Intrigued, Zhang Yu touched the plus sign beneath the shadow's information, which revealed even more detailed data about the shadow's capabilities. According to the panel, Zhang Yu's shadow was not only possessed by him but also held all his memories and was fully synchronized with his strength. The shadow could follow any command given by Zhang Yu. However, it had limitations and lacked independent thinking. Zhang Yu recalled the system's instructions and the shadow's compliance with his dance command. As a mere shadow without a physical body, it couldn't move or speak independently. Consequently, the shadow was unable to answer Zhang Yu's questions, even though it possessed all of Zhang Yu's memories. Nonetheless, Zhang Yu proceeded to his study table, preparing to assess his shadow's skills and capabilities. He posed math questions to the shadow, instructing it to solve them independently after completing all the math problems. Zhang Yu handed his shadow a pen, revealing that it was holding his summer homework, and asked it to take a look at it. He was surprised to see his shadow, holding the pen without a physical body. As the shadow sat down to attempt to answer Zhang Yu's summer homework, he tried touching different parts of the shadow, pondering whether it had a physical form or not. Zhang Yu experienced some discomfort due to the sudden appearance of his shadow. Curiously, his shadow looked at him and stopped solving the math problem, leaving the writing unfinished. Zhang Yu was intrigued by his shadow's gaze and its sudden halt in answering the math problem. Upon examining what his shadow had written, Zhang Yu felt frustrated and contemplated hitting its head due to its inability to answer the math problem. However, 
the paper passed through the shadow since it lacked physical body, Zhang Yu began to question the usefulness of his shadow, despite having all his memories, and mockingly mentioned that he could finish the math problem in just two minutes for amusement. Reflecting on the information provided by the system earlier, Zhang Yu considered a different approach to test his shadow, uncertain if the previous math question had been too challenging. Zhang Yu decided to further assess his shadow's memory skills by instructing it to record all the lessons from his memory. The shadow promptly followed Zhang Yu's instructions, impressing him with its speed and compliance. Zhang Yu admired the shadow's ability to record lessons, questioning whether it possessed superhuman capabilities. He even contemplated focusing on selling books instead of studying, given the shadow's efficiency at recording information. Zhang Yu observed his shadow diligently carrying out all the tasks he had assigned, realizing that his shadow possessed far more potential than he had initially anticipated. As the shadow continued to write down all the lessons stored in Zhang Yu's memory, he took a moment to examine the attribute panel of his shadow, searching for other ways to interact with it. Once again, Zhang Yu pressed the plus sign button beneath the shadow's attributes, causing information about shadow devouring to appear on the screen. The attribute panel explained that shadow devouring could either draw shadow points from darkness to enhance oneself or decompose and absorb dead objects. Curious about the process of shadow devouring, Zhang Yu wondered whether it required physical contact with the shadow's body or the object's shadows. Intrigued, Zhang Yu searched his house for an object to test his shadow's devouring ability. Delving into the darkness, he embraced it, hoping that his actions would grant him mastery over it. However, he found himself struggling to utilize this power, unsure if there was an instruction manual or beginner's guide to assist him. In the midst of his attempts at shadow devouring, the system suddenly appeared, displaying information about the shadow pupil. It revealed that Zhang Yu's eyes had undergone an unknown transformation, granting him access to the dark side of the world. With this ability, he could choose to observe or enter the dark side at his own free will. Recalling a previous encounter with mutants and soldiers, Zhang Yu connected it to the mention of the dark side in the system's information. Eager to enhance his shadow pupil ability, he began contemplating the necessary steps to achieve his desired skill. Meanwhile, Zhang Yu noticed his shadow once again, diligently writing all the lessons from his memory. Playfully, he instructed the shadow not to cheat on the papers and to do a few push-ups first, wanting to witness its response. Unexpectedly, the shadow complied by standing up and melting into the floor, piercing through the ground rather than performing the requested push-ups. Shocked by this unexpected behavior, Zhang Yu became frustrated with his shadow's disobedience and wondered where it had gone. Within Zhang Yu's home, he searched for his shadow, which had disappeared after penetrating the floor. Eventually, the shadow reappeared when Zhang Yu called for it, seeming to have gone to a place where it believed he had instructed it to go. Zhang Yu questioned his shadow about its whereabouts, having searched for it throughout the house. As the shadow was unable to speak, Zhang Yu provided it with paper and a pen to answer his questions. Through writing, the shadow explained that it had gone to the dark side, leaving Zhang Yu curious about its purpose there. In response, the shadow revealed that it had gone to the dark side to exercise. When Zhang Yu instructed his shadow to do a few push-ups, it misunderstood and instead ventured into the dark side to exercise, based on its interpretation of Zhang Yu's words. After explaining the situation to Zhang Yu, he pondered whether it would be more beneficial to exercise in the dark side of the world rather than in Zhang Yu's own realm. Understanding this, Zhang Yu told his shadow that it could return to the dark side of the world to practice without hesitation. Following his orders, the shadow vanished once again, leaving Zhang Yu's house and heading towards the dark side of the world. Feeling relieved that his shadow was finally gone, Zhang Yu could now focus on his own endeavors without any distractions. He returned to his study table, ready to engage in serious work. Hours passed, and the morning sun illuminated Zhang Yu's residence. He had fallen asleep while immersed in his tasks from the previous night, his head resting on the study table. Zhang Yu's dreams were filled with various food and situations, so vivid that he even requested a pen to draw within the dream. Zhang Yu awoke when he heard someone knocking at his door, trying to shake off the remnants of sleep. He realized that sleeping on his stomach had caused his back to ache. The person at the door persisted in their knocking and called out to Zhang Yu, urging him to open it. Finally responding, Zhang Yu got up and made his way to the door, questioning the urgency of the person outside. That person turned out to be Lu Yao Yao, Zhang Yu's childhood girlfriend and classmate, 
who was also an ardent and loyal fan. Curious about why Lu Yao Yao had come so early in the morning, Zhang Yu noticed that her HP percentage was unusually low, at 93, unlike her usual HP status. Recognizing the cause of her HP drop, Zhang Yu understood that it was her time of the week, according to the calendar date. Lu Yao Yao quickly entered Zhang Yu's house, and he asked her why she had come so early when he had just woken up. As Zhang Yu was about to close the door, Lu Yao Yao implored him to hurry, mentioning that she had planned a new drawing and had already decided on its content the previous night. She expressed her desire to see Zhang Yu's collection of designs, which was why she had come to his house early in the morning. Surprisingly, Zhang Yu slammed the door shut with force, startling Lu Yao Yao Du to the loud bang. The impact of the aggressive door closing caused a crack to appear on its edges. Lu Yao Yao was taken aback and began to cry, admonishing Zhang Yu for shutting the door so forcefully, even if he didn't want to show her the designs. She expressed her disappointment at his actions. Zhang Yu's aggression towards the door left a perplexing sensation within him, distinct from his usual physical and mental strength. Lu Yao Yao noticed this change in Zhang Yu when he closed the door, leaving him standing in front of it in a dazed state. This experience left Zhang Yu confused about his current condition. Lu Yao Yao was on the verge of asking about Zhang Yu when she noticed his shocked expression. Lu Yao Yao inquired if Zhang Yu had been going to the gym lately, remarking that his body appeared more toned than before. Considering their infrequent meetings, Lu Yao Yao hesitated to believe that Zhang Yu, a loner who hadn't exercised in years, could suddenly decide to start working out. She wondered how he had achieved such well-defined muscles overnight. Lu Yao Yao approached Zhang Yu and touched his body to confirm any changes. Sensing that he might have been hitting the gym due to his improved physique, she asked if he had been doing anything specific to enhance his physical fitness. Zhang Yu playfully replied that he did nothing except lift bookshelves every day. Lu Yao Yao remained doubtful and attempted to lift Zhang Yu's shirt to inspect his body closely, unable to believe his claims of minimal exercise. She suspected that he might be taking supplements to achieve his transformation. However, Zhang Yu denied the allegations and assured her that he had only been exercising recently. Zhang Yu believed that his shadow's workouts in the dark side of the world would directly benefit his own physique, which explained his muscle gains. Lu Yao Yao continued scrutinizing Zhang Yu's body by repeatedly lifting his shirt, surprised that he had achieved such results in a short time frame. She mentioned some cases her father had dealt with and suggested that Zhang Yu should exercise caution and control his desires. Zhang Yu was not surprised by Lu Yao Yao's remarks and dismissed them, teasing her for speaking nonsensically. In a surprising turn of events, Lu Yao Yao suddenly grabbed Zhang Yu's hands, leaving him bewildered and unsure of her intentions. She forcefully held his hands behind him, catching him off guard. Zhang Yu wondered what Lu Yao Yao had in mind and questioned her about her actions. Lu Yao Yao produced a watch-like device, indicating her intention to put it on Zhang Yu's wrist against his will. She warned him not to move as she intended to subject him to a pollution index test. Zhang Yu was unfamiliar with the concept and curiously asked about the purpose of the pollution indexes. Lu Yao Yao explained that the device she was using could detect and eliminate alien races, foreign objects, and negative emotions, which would contribute to the pollution index reaching a certain threshold. Suspicious of Zhang Yu, Lu Yao Yao believed that something was amiss and decided to test his pollution index to see if his appearance would change. Zhang Yu pondered her words and considered that his abilities might be related to the pattern on his chest, concluding that pollution would have no effect on it and therefore had no cause for concern. As Zhang Yu's chest reacted to the pollution index test, he realized that the device seemed to respond to his pattern and sensed that it had detected something unusual occurring within his body. After Lu Yao Yao pointed the gun at Zhang Yu, he was taken aback by her actions and questioned whether she was serious about using it against him. Zhang Yu emphasized that Lu Yao Yao couldn't find out what was happening to him and believed that the abnormality in the device in his body needed to be stopped immediately. Fortunately, after a minute of testing, the device showed no reaction to Zhang Yu's pattern, indicating that he remained unaffected and normal. This brought relief to Zhang Yu, who laughed off the situation. Lu Yao Yao lowered her weapon and informed Zhang Yu that he seemed normal, just as she had expected. Zhang Yu jokingly remarked that despite being normal, Lu Yao Yao had still pointed a weapon at him. With the testing complete and no abnormalities detected, Zhang Yu felt relieved that he had escaped. Suspicion. Lu Yao Yao explained that her father had taught her to be cautious and that's why she had taken extra precautions when she noticed something unusual. 
Zhang Yu changed the topic, diverting Lu Yao Yao's attention, and mentioned that he had recently drawn some famous comic characters. He asked if she would like to see them. Lu Yao Yao's expression changed, and she happily expressed her interest in seeing Zhang Yu's newly drawn comics. Zhang Yu was glad that Lu Yao Yao's focus had shifted to his comics rather than testing him. As they were about to view the comics, Zhang Yu playfully told Lu Yao Yao to control her excitement, comparing her to a little child eager to see something new. Unable to contain her anticipation, Lu Yao Yao urged Zhang Yu to quickly show her the comics, as she had been eagerly waiting since her arrival that morning. After Lu Yao Yao left his house, Zhang Yu went to his bed and lay down, feeling relieved that he had escaped a potentially dangerous situation. He wondered about the earlier encounter with Lu Yao Yao but was glad that he had managed to get away with it. While resting, Zhang Yu contemplated opening the system of his shadow to check its status and see what his shadow had been doing all night in the dark side of the world. The system revealed that his shadow had entered the dark side and engaged in exercise. Zhang Yu was astonished to see the activation of dark power and learned that his shadow had become stronger after absorbing shadow points for the first time. He discovered that his shadow had gained numerous points for arm strength due to its exercises. Surprised by his shadow's activities, Zhang Yu realized that his shadow had been training throughout the night after Lu Yao Yao had left his house. Curious, he attempted to summon his shadow. After attempting to learn the shadow devouring ability the previous night, Zhang Yu successfully summoned his shadow, which amazed him. He felt that he could already perceive the results of his training and perform the ability without difficulty. Excited by his success, Zhang Yu desired more and resolved to make the exercises for his shadow more challenging. His shadow readily agreed and signaled its willingness to proceed. Impressed by his shadow's determination, Zhang Yu instructed it to perform push-up planks. The shadow obediently followed, repeatedly executing the exercise. Zhang Yu then directed his shadow to perform push-ups using two fingers on one hand and to assume a tiger pose. The shadow flawlessly performed all the exercises as instructed. Zhang Yu further commanded his shadow to engage in a set of martial arts exercises, including standing body exercises known as the human banner. Determined to push his shadow's physical abilities, Zhang Yu instructed it to do squats and informed it that he would intensify the exercises. His shouts of encouragement could be heard from outside. Unbeknownst to Zhang Yu, Lu Yao Yao was listening to his actions and words outside his apartment. Lu Yao Yao felt relieved upon hearing Zhang Yu's activities and realized that her doubts and suspicions had been unwarranted. She acknowledged that she had wrongly judged Zhang Yu, even going so far as to subject him to a pollution index test. Lu Yao Yao reflected on the worries caused by her doubts and was glad that Zhang Yu was truly fine. She departed, needing to return home and read some comics. After several days of rigorous training in the dark side of the world, on January 20th, in the year 99 of the disaster calendar, Zhang Yu stepped outside his house for a walk. The extensive training his shadow had undergone had inadvertently made him stronger and significantly improved his physical strength. Zhang Yu's body showcased the visible effects of the training, and he exuded confidence. Zhang Yu contemplated whether he could defeat Lu Yao Yao with a single punch but acknowledged that he still lacked the ability to do so. He determined that it was time for him to work harder. On January 21st, Zhang Yu's uncle Lai, who worked the night shift, visited his home but failed to notice anything unusual about Zhang Yu. Uncle Lai, who had lost an arm and was aging, was unaware of Zhang Yu's growing power. Zhang Yu entertained the thought that he could defeat three Uncle Lai's and ten Lu Yao Yao's with a single punch. The following day, January 23rd, when Zhang Yu woke up, his first thought was that he needed to exert more effort. He realized that his life could not continue as usual and that he had to strive for extraordinary abilities. Zhang Yu resolved to work hard, understanding that he could not simply lie in bed and do nothing. The following day proved to be highly productive for Zhang Yu as he devised a new set of training for his shadow. While Zhang Yu focused on completing his work, his shadow continued training independently, as they usually did. As January 25th came to a close, Zhang Yu initially attempted to do 10 push-ups but quickly grew tired. He instructed his shadow to continue training on its own. Zhang Yu glanced at his shadow's attribute panel and wondered why the growth rate of shadow points was so slow. It took a considerable number of shadows to provide only 8 points, while the required points were 10. As he tried to concentrate and enter the dark side, Zhang Yu contemplated the uncertainty of when he would accumulate the necessary 10 points to activate his character. 
he wondered if venturing into the dark side of the world alone would allow him to progress faster. With determination, Zhang Yu successfully ventured into the dark side of the world, where his shadow was already training and gaining incredible strength. Having penetrated the ground, Zhang Yu found himself halfway immersed in the dark side. Unbeknownst to him, he had unconsciously traveled to the dark side in his pursuit of concentration. Upon opening his eyes, Zhang Yu realized he had already entered another dimension, the dark side. He noticed that the dark side resembled his room, as described by the system. After contemplating various methods, he managed to leave his room and step into the other world, which mirrored their own but with a darker and more menacing atmosphere than what he typically encountered in Uni City. Zhang Yu felt relieved to escape his residence and venture outside, as leaving his room had been a struggle on the dark side. Contrary to his expectations, the dark side resembled their real world, and Zhang Yu observed his surroundings with disappointment. However, he soon realized that he could only enter the dark side from outside his actual room. As he explored the city within the dark side, Zhang Yu grew frustrated that it didn't meet his anticipated expectations, fueling his anger. In the streets of the dark side, an unfamiliar creature began following Zhang Yu. The mysterious presence emitted a sound that caught Zhang Yu's attention. Sensing the stranger's proximity, Zhang Yu perceived their presence as that of a person, based on the emotions emanating from the dark side. Believing the stranger was there to assist him, Zhang Yu found himself being observed by a mutant on the streets, giving him the impression that he had taken the mutant by surprise. An unsightly mutant, resembling a human with disheveled hair and unkempt clothing, lurked on the streets, caught Zhang Yu off guard. The mutant, exhibiting an unattractive appearance, suddenly attacked Zhang Yu, leaving him in a state of surprise. With quick reflexes, Zhang Yu evaded the monster's assault, skillfully avoiding its attacks. However, the mutant persisted in its hunger for Zhang Yu, relentlessly pursuing him despite his evasive maneuvers. As the mutant continued its relentless onslaught, Zhang Yu grew increasingly panicked, unable to concentrate on formulating a plan of action due to the sudden appearance and relentless attacks. Shocked by the encounter with such a mutant in the dark side, Zhang Yu swiftly devised a plan. He summoned his shadow to open a portal, intending to escape from the mutant's clutches. Taking swift action, Zhang Yu swiftly dove into the summoned shadow portal just as the mutant closed in on him in the dark side of the world. Without much difficulty, he emerged from the shadow portal back into the real world, finding himself safely on the ground in his own house. Relieved to have made it out in time before the mutant could harm him, Zhang Yu felt a sense of calm and relief. However, during the encounter, the mutant managed to scratch Zhang Yu's buttocks, tearing his pants and exposing his rear. Reflecting on the ordeal, Zhang Yu realized how terrified the mutant had made him and pondered why it had attacked him without any apparent reason. Despite his escape, Zhang Yu harbored a desire for revenge against the strange creature, considering various scenarios to make it pay for its attempt on his life. Resolute in his stance, he vowed to show no mercy, even if the creature were to beg for its life. On January 28, Zhang Yu found himself facing a mysterious creature in the dark side, caught off guard and unprepared for a fight. Unfortunately, he became a victim of the creature's attack. The second scenario took place on January 29, where Zhang Yu sought revenge against the strange creature. However, his attempt ended in failure as he was struck in the chest, nearly breaking his ribs. Filled with anger, he swore to take revenge in the third encounter, which occurred on January 30. During this battle, Zhang Yu suffered three scratches on his buttocks while attempting to retaliate. The pain was excruciating and left him with only 6% of his health points remaining. Unable to continue fighting off the demon, Zhang Yu returned home to rest and recover from his injuries. Fortunately, Lu Yao Yao was present to treat his wounds and apply ointment to them. Intrigued by the scars covering Zhang Yu's body, she couldn't contain her curiosity and asked him about the fights he had been involved in recently. Zhang Yu responded by telling Lu Yao Yao that even if he explained, she wouldn't understand, and he jokingly referred to the scars as a man's medal. Angered by his remark, Lu Yao Yao grabbed Zhang Yu's scars on his buttocks and retorted that there was no medal in that area. Zhang Yu cried out in pain as she touched his scars forcefully. Lu Yao Yao remarked that Zhang Yu was fortunate to still feel pain and warned him that he would become even more arrogant as his body grew stronger. Amidst the scolding, Zhang Yu suddenly remembered that there was only one month left and asked Lu Yao Yao about her plans. Surprisingly, Lu Yao Yao seemed unaware of what Zhang Yu was referring to and asked him for clarification. 
Zhang Yu sat up in his chair and explained to Lu Yao Yao about the upcoming martial arts test and asked if she had forgotten about it. In the strange world and the tumultuous year, they were in, most industries, particularly those related to culture and the arts, had become less popular. Music, arts, and technology had lost their appeal to the current generation, and even practitioners in these fields found themselves at the bottom of society. Mutants and soldiers had become the focus of attention, with people more interested in national affairs than entertainment such as cinemas and television. The individuals, fighting on the front lines, like the night guards, had become stars in the hearts of the people. To become a night guard in Uni City, one had to pass a martial arts exam established by the government. Participating in the martial arts test and passing it meant that one's life would no longer be ordinary. Zhang Yu attempted to jog Lu Yao Yao's memory about the approaching martial arts exam, which was less than a month away. However, Lu Yao Yao sadly revealed that she had no desire to participate in the upcoming exam. Zhang Yu became curious when Lu Yao Yao suddenly expressed her reluctance to participate in the martial arts exam. Initially hesitant to reveal the reason, Lu Yao Yao finally disclosed her motive to Zhang Yu, surprising him by stating that she wanted to pursue music instead of martial arts. Zhang Yu encouraged Lu Yao Yao to follow her passion for music and pursue it for as long as she desired. However, he raised concerns about the possibility of Uncle King disagreeing with her chosen path, considering that Uncle Lu held a senior position in the Night Watch department. Zhang Yu thought that Lu Yao Yao's desire to pursue music might be seen as equivalent to a second-generation employee bypassing the civil servant exam and becoming an independent worker. Regarding Uncle King's potential disagreement, Lu Yao Yao clarified that it didn't necessarily mean outright disapproval. She hesitated to reveal the real reason to Zhang Yu, indicating that there might be an underlying issue that caused her to hold back from learning music and pursuing martial arts, much like Uncle King. Perplexed by Lu Yao Yao's cryptic statements, Zhang Yu questioned her about it while she continued applying ointment to his wounds. Lu Yao Yao assured him that what she was about to disclose would remain confidential and not be shared with others due to its sensitive nature. Lu Yao Yao proceeded to explain her concerns, mentioning that the laws had changed. According to her, in this year's exam, everyone in Yunhai City who met the qualification standards was required to take the martial arts exam and apply. Essentially, Lu Yao Yao was conveying that all eligible individuals were obliged to apply for the martial arts exam. Zhang Yu was taken aback by this rule and pointed out that the government had previously disregarded personal preferences but was now allowing students with average qualifications to apply for the general examination. Worried about what she knew regarding the Night Watch, Lu Yao Yao expressed her concerns to Zhang Yu, stating that the pressure on the Night Watch had increased. She mentioned that unless there was an unforeseen circumstance, she would have to take the martial arts exam, even if she didn't want to. As Zhang Yu contemplated the implications of the Night Watch and the martial arts exam, he also recalled the small instrument that Lu Yao Yao had used to test him on whether something abnormal was happening to him. This memory caused Zhang Yu to worry, as the instrument nearly made a sound. He believed that with the strict rules of the martial arts exam, he wouldn't be able to hide his abilities and feared that having a gun with him on that day wouldn't bode well for the night guard. In his musings about surviving the martial arts exam, Zhang Yu wondered if his unreliable guide, his shadow, would put him in a precarious situation or help him overcome the challenges. As Zhang Yu contemplated his options, he suddenly asked Lu Yao Yao if the small instrument she had used before could be used to ward off alien creatures. Lu Yao Yao clarified that the small instrument she mentioned earlier could only detect aliens and supernatural beings, not prevent them. She jokingly advised Zhang Yu that if he encountered a different kind of species, he should run as fast as he could and make an emergency call before his demise. Intrigued by the mention of a different kind, Zhang Yu asked Lu Yao Yao to explain the distinction between them and the alien species they had discussed. The two of them exchanged awkward glances as Zhang Yu inquired about Lu Yao Yao's statement regarding encountering a different kind. Noticing that Zhang Yu's injuries had healed, Lu Yao Yao felt it was time for her to return home. Before leaving, Zhang Yu mentioned that her family must possess some basic knowledge of the paranormal and asked if he could see it. Curious about his interest, Lu Yao Yao questioned whether he was planning to take a public examination related to the subject in the future. Zhang Yu responded, reminding Lu Yao Yao that she had informed him about the mandatory martial arts exam this year and suggested that if he had talent, he should be aware of it beforehand based on what she had said. Wanting to confirm Zhang Yu's interest in discovering his talent, Lu Yao Yao asked if that was the reason. 
Zhang Yu affirmed that what he said was true and shared that his primary intention was to create something related to superhumans and alien blood in comics. Liu Yao Yao became suddenly excited when Zhang Yu mentioned comics and urged him to tell her more about his plans. Zhang Yu began sharing his initial idea for the comics. He described a skinny boy named Ben who faced bullying at school despite his kind heart. With the help of his kind classmates, teacher, and Kainan, Ben was chosen to be part of the Night Watch and participate in the Super Warrior Project. Through the Night Watch's support and his extraordinary willpower, Ben underwent a transformation after receiving injections of the Super Soldier Serum, becoming a powerful leader and eventually Captain Ben. However, Captain Ben's role was not to be on the battlefield like other Night Watchmen but rather to attend various gatherings frequented by high-ranking officials and affluent families, mingling with noble ladies. Liu Yao Yao expressed her enjoyment of Zhang Yu's story about Captain Ben and added that until the city was invaded by alien species, there was a formidable extraterrestrial known as Pig Skull who possessed a blue cosmic cube. When Zhang Yu expressed his desire to see the paranormal, both of them went to Liu Yao Yao's house. Zhang Yu was amazed by Liu Yao Yao's house, as it was located in the same lane and residency as his own. Liu Yao Yao instructed Zhang Yu to wait in her room while she went to her dad's room to retrieve the materials he wanted to see. As Zhang Yu explored Liu Yao Yao's bedroom, he noticed something familiar, a comic book lying on her bed. Immediately, Zhang Yu picked up the book and opened it, realizing that it was titled, Destiny, a place where the Mangus resides. The story revolved around a brother and sister's love. Zhang Yu taunted Liu Yao Yao, questioning how she dared to read a book with a genre focused on brother-sister love. Feeling mocked, Liu Yao Yao swiftly took the manga away from him, explaining that a friend had left it in her bedroom but she hadn't mustered the courage to read it. Instructing Zhang Yu to sit quietly and wait in her room, Liu Yao Yao warned him not to tamper with her belongings. Zhang Yu agreed and reassured Liu Yao Yao, urging her to go and retrieve the materials they needed. As Liu Yao Yao left, Zhang Yu contemplated how she hadn't changed much since childhood and noticed her lack of suspicion towards people. Observing the musical items in Liu Yao Yao's bedroom, Zhang Yu wondered if she had loved music from a young age and held onto these old belongings for sentimental reasons. Zhang Yu reminisced about a time when Liu Yao Yao would pester him to listen to music together, even though he had no interest in it. While waiting for Liu Yao Yao's return, Zhang Yu turned on the radio and played music from a cassette, recalling their childhood moments of playing together. He remembered when Liu Yao Yao caught insects while he promised to help her catch goldfish. Zhang Yu also recalled a moment when he frightened Liu Yao Yao by pretending a ghost was approaching, causing her to be startled by his face. Lost in thoughts of Liu Yao Yao and their shared music experiences, Zhang Yu drifted off to sleep. In his dream, Liu Yao Yao returned to the room and asked Zhang Yu if he liked music. Suddenly awakening from his slumber and the dream of Liu Yao Yao, Zhang Yu was surprised to see her standing before him. Liu Yao Yao remarked that Zhang Yu clearly couldn't even recognize musical instruments, suggesting he wasn't someone who enjoyed music. When Liu Yao Yao returned with the materials she found in her father's room, she handed them to Zhang Yu, telling him to take a look as they were all for him. Zhang Yu proceeded to place the tool in his eyes to witness the paranormal activity they had discussed. However, when he inserted the virtual material into his eyes, he saw something unexpected and noticed peculiar occurrences. It felt as if Zhang Yu was falling behind or entering a different realm. Upon awakening, Zhang Yu found himself in another dimension, a virtual world. As he surveyed his surroundings, he wondered if this place was the abyss and contemplated the realism of the virtual reality he was experiencing. The term, abyss, referred to the unknown world full of taboos, dangers, and the source of disasters. In the abyss, cruel alien species were born, constantly wreaking havoc and destruction. Zhang Yu recognized some of these species, possibly the same ones he had encountered during his visit to Dr. Zhao in the hospital regarding his eye consultation. The virtual reality had explained to Zhang Yu that between their world and the abyss existed a realm known as the Shadow, a dark side of the world that was an integral part of reality. Zhang Yu, Having ventured to the dark side of the world multiple times, understood the explanations of the virtual reality system. The system revealed that alien species from the abyss infiltrated their world through the shadow layer, despite the Night Guardian's efforts to control their entry and exit. Some creatures managed to slip through undetected. The virtual reality system informed Zhang Yu that every two months, the shadow layer would reset to reflect the current state of the dark side. 
During this time, the number of alien species would significantly increase, necessitating their timely elimination. However, the system cautioned that the Shadow class weakened human combat effectiveness, advising against the participation of individuals above the fourth level. Pondering the virtual system's words and observing the dark side, Zhang Yu felt perplexed. The system warned of significant pollution in the shadow layer, suggesting that prolonged exposure could transform humans into strange creatures. When Kai Ying Tong entered the dark side, he experienced no discomfort. As Zhang Yu continued exploring the virtual reality, a peculiar creature materialized behind him, seemingly poised to attack. Startled, Zhang Yu swiftly noticed the creature's presence and grew alarmed. However, a sudden burst of light intercepted the creature, preventing harm from befalling Zhang Yu. The radiance engulfed the dark side, dispelling the imminent threat. Still in shock from the encounter, Zhang Yu questioned the fate of the strange creature. To his surprise, a mysterious individual appeared before him. The virtual system explained that combating alien species required possessing a force capable of matching their strength, demanding extraordinary abilities. Observing the man in front of him, Zhang Yu marveled at his exceptional qualities and handsome appearance. He pondered the possibility of becoming like this extraordinary man if he were to pass the martial arts exam. As Zhang Yu studied the man, the virtual system revealed that extraordinary individuals were primarily aliens inhabiting human bodies. Physically, they resembled humans, but genetically, they were of alien origin. Extraordinary individuals wielded energy as their power source, and they fought tirelessly against pollution and alienation, safeguarding humanity in the real world. Upon their demise, there was a high likelihood of becoming a virtual element, an extraordinary person. Realizing the potential consequences, Zhang Yu was taken aback by the transformation occurring before his eyes. He swiftly removed the virtual material from his eyes, shocked by the revelation. Curious about Zhang Yu's reaction, Lu Yao Yao inquired about what had happened. Zhang Yu downplayed the significance, explaining that he was merely overwhelmed by the vast amount of information he had received and added that the system hadn't been updated for a while. Zhang Yu then beckons Lu Yao Yao to come closer and massage his back. Surprised by his command, Lu Yao Yao angrily asks him to repeat his request. Zhang Yu quickly strikes a deal with her, offering three original drawings or Ultra HD content, whichever she prefers, in exchange for the massage. Lu Yao Yao agrees to the deal and promptly begins massaging his back. While working on Zhang Yu's neck and shoulders, she notices their firmness. Zhang Yu explains that he has been working out, attributing the muscular neck to his fitness regimen. Lu Yao Yao then inquires if he has also focused on his abs, leading Zhang Yu to believe she wants to touch them. In response, Lu Yao Yao touches Zhang Yu's abs, but their moment is abruptly interrupted when someone opens the door to the room. To their surprise, it is none other than Lu Yao Yao's father. Zhang Yu feels shocked and embarrassed by the situation, as Uncle Lu has witnessed them in that state. Time passes, and Zhang Yu dines with Lu Yao Yao and her father at their residence. Zhang Yu notices that Lu Yao Yao's father is visibly upset, likely due to what he had witnessed earlier in his daughter's bedroom. Lu Yao Yao's father eats aggressively, expressing his anger towards Zhang Yu, having likely misunderstood the situation. Lu Yao Yao tries to assure her father that he misinterpreted what he saw and asks him not to be angry with Zhang Yu. However, Lu Yao Yao's father insists that he saw everything with his own eyes and that his perception cannot be mistaken. Unable to find the right words to convince her father, Lu Yao Yao gestures towards Zhang Yu, urging him to explain the situation to her father and clarify that nothing inappropriate had occurred in the bedroom. Zhang Yu struggles to find alternative explanations and takes the blame for the incident, deciding to punish himself by drinking three cups of liquid, as he had told Uncle Lu earlier. He swiftly consumes all the liquid, telling Uncle Lu to do whatever he pleases. However, Lu Yao Yao's father remains angry. As he starts suggesting getting a knife, Zhang Yu panics and attempts to flee, explaining to Uncle Lu that everything was merely a misunderstanding. Zhang Yu and Lu Yao Yao have been childhood friends and have had feelings for each other since they were young. However, despite their close bond, they have distinct personalities. Zhang Yu is often viewed by some as a troublesome boy, while Lu Yao Yao is seen as well-educated and knowledgeable, primarily based on her appearance. Despite their personality differences, Lu Yao Yao has always enjoyed playing with Zhang Yu and stood by his side, even when he exhibited peculiar behavior. Zhang Yu believed that Lu Yao Yao wanted to maintain their friendship because he had once stood up for her and protected her from bullies when they were children. 
Although Zhang Yu was the only one who defended Lu Yao Yao, he did so despite being at a disadvantage. Zhang Yu even considered Lu Yao Yao's appreciation of his bravery and charm when he protected her, even during situations where he pretended to be a homeless child begging for money on the streets. Lu Yao Yao remained supportive by participating in the make-believe game, acting as a homeless child. When Lu Yao Yao's father noticed how dedicated his daughter was to the role, he became emotionally stirred and felt upset with Zhang Yu, mistaking it for dishonesty. After finishing dinner, they moved to the living room, where they stood in front of Lu Yao Yao's father, creating a somewhat eerie atmosphere. Due to their history since childhood, Lu Yao Yao's father had always been wary of Zhang Yu and did not approve of his daughter being with him. Therefore, when he saw Zhang Yu in his daughter's bedroom, he became furious and assumed they were engaging in inappropriate activities. The reason Lu Yao Yao's father stared at them was because he was still upset about what he had witnessed earlier in her bedroom. As Lu Yao Yao's father was about to light a cigarette, his daughter noticed and immediately attempted to take it from him, concerned about the impact of smoking on his health, especially since they were indoors. Without hesitation, Lu Yao Yao swiftly snatched the cigarette from her father's hand, leaving him speechless, his gaze sternly fixed on Zhang Yu. Lu Yao Yao's father began questioning Zhang Yu, seeking information about their activities during his absence from home. Zhang Yu acted quickly, responding to Lu Yao Yao's father's inquiries, explaining that they were merely in her bedroom gathering information about aliens and supernatural phenomena. He assured Lu Yao Yao's father that nothing strange had occurred and there was no need to worry. The perplexed expression on Lu Yao Yao's father's face indicated his confusion in response to Zhang Yu's unexpected explanation, catching him off guard and leaving him uncertain about how to react. This visible confusion prompted him to turn his attention to his daughter, hoping to find clarity or understanding in her response to the unusual situation. Once he grasped the circumstances, Lu Yao Yao's father perceived her as spoiled due to her willingness to offer assistance and support to Zhang Yu. Upon realizing the situation, Lu Yao Yao's father proceeded to question Zhang Yu, seeking insight into the reasons behind the government's decision to restrict students from acquiring knowledge about supernatural matters. When Zhang Yu expressed uncertainty, Lu Yao Yao's father clarified that human souls can take various forms and deviate from expected paths. He emphasized how feelings of hopelessness can lead someone down a dark and challenging path. As a result, he explained that certain subjects may be deemed inappropriate to share with everyone, as not everyone may comprehend or handle them well, potentially leading to negative consequences. Zhang Yu listened attentively to Lu Yao Yao's father, understanding that not everyone possesses the same level of inner strength. Lu Yao Yao's father went on to explain that even a small crack in someone's emotional well-being could be exploited by aliens. To ensure appropriate readiness, preliminary assessments are necessary before engaging with the supernatural realm. He clarified that only individuals who possess physical well-being and strong willpower would be allowed to explore the realm of the supernatural. Zhang Yu paid close attention to Lu Yao Yao's father's description of the process of gaining superpowers, envisioning and contemplating their previous conversation. Lu Yao Yao's father emphasized that the journey towards acquiring special abilities is lengthy and filled with potential risks, requiring determination and patience to overcome challenges. While Lu Yao Yao's father was smoking his cigarette, he specifically addressed Zhang Yu, highlighting situations where individuals with superpowers may struggle to control their abilities, leading to regret. Due to this, he advised against pursuing knowledge in this field. He then asked Zhang Yu to confirm his understanding of the advice. Zhang Yu made it clear that he comprehended Lu Yao Yao's father's words and expressed gratitude for his concern. However, Zhang Yu remained determined and informed Lu Yao Yao's father that he couldn't avoid the military examination taking place that year. He explained that despite the risks involved, he believed it was better to trust himself rather than always rely on others. He also acknowledged the importance of having someone reliable during challenging times. Lu Yao Yao's father was surprised by Zhang Yu's unwavering resolve, leaving him in a contemplative state as he hadn't anticipated such determination from him. Suddenly, Lu Yao Yao's father's phone rang, and he answered to learn about an urgent mission. Without hesitation, he informed the caller that he would head to the location immediately. Before leaving, he turned his attention to Zhang Yu and informed him about the mission. He offered advice, encouraging Zhang Yu to behave politely and respectfully, while making it clear that any misbehavior would not be tolerated, warning that he would harm him if he acted wrongly. Zhang Yu made a promise to Lu Yao Yao's father, 
assuring him that he would never engage in any inappropriate behavior with his daughter from that point forward. Upon hearing Zhang Yu's words, Lu Yao Yao was taken aback and surprised by his statement. They playfully pinched each other's cheeks, with Lu Yao Yao feeling a bit annoyed by Zhang Yu's remark and curious about its exact meaning. Meanwhile, in the city of Yunai, each individual went about their day separately, finding enjoyment in their own activities despite the chilly weather. Posters prominently displayed throughout every corner of the city showcased the Night Watch, a vigilant force responsible for safeguarding the well-being of the general populace from various threats, ensuring the safety and security of living in Yunai. Zhang Yi went to a store, contemplating whether he wanted to seek more information but ultimately only glanced at basic knowledge. While shopping for food inside the store, he also picked up a bottle. Zhang Yu sighed, considering the likelihood that valuable information would be preserved and kept hidden due to Uncle Lu's character, potentially limiting access in the future. As Zhang Yi prepared to pay for his groceries at the checkout counter, he received an incoming call on his phone, surprising him to find that it was Lu Yao Yao. Zhang Yu answered the call, and Lu Yao Yao asked if he could buy her a box of eggs and a box of milk. Initially, she had intended to buy more items but changed her mind and requested only the eggs and milk. Zhang Yi retrieved the items Lu Yao Yao had asked for and decided to also buy her pants. He was aware that she needed pads but felt too embarrassed to ask directly. He reassured her that there was no need for hesitation and that she shouldn't feel uncomfortable mentioning it to him. Finally, Zhang Yi finished his grocery shopping and left the store. As he walked along the streets, he contemplated the fact that there was only a month left until the start of his studies. Amidst his thoughts, he considered the significant improvement he was experiencing in the effectiveness of his shadow exercise routine. He also realized that relying solely on shadow training might not be sufficient and pondered the idea of incorporating more hands-on exercises into his routine. Zhang Yi also noticed an increase in the promotion of efforts against alien races, with a rise in fights against them. Consequently, more students were participating in this year's martial arts examination. He looked up at the full moon above and a thought crossed his mind that something unfavorable might occur in the world soon. However, he believed it would be wiser not to dwell on those thoughts and avoid causing unnecessary anxiety. Instead, he considered facing alien races and improving himself through fights with them to be a more positive approach. Feeling slightly nervous, Zhang Yi quickly surveyed his surroundings, ensuring there was nobody nearby. With his concentration focused, he formulated a strategy for venturing into the less illuminated and less known parts of the world. Carefully navigating his way to the dark side, Zhang Yi's first observation was the remarkably low health points of an individual, catching him off guard. Without hesitation, he prepared himself to launch an attack swiftly. In response, Zhang Yi redirected his attention to the approaching figure emerging from the dimly lit section of the streets. His gaze fixated on the individual as they drew nearer, and he noticed that their health was alarmingly low, merely at 14%. Furthermore, the person exhibited visible wounds, indicating that they were hurt. As the person approached, Zhang Yi had a clear view of their condition and appearance. To his surprise, upon closer observation, he suddenly recognized a sense of familiarity in their features. Eventually, he realized that the wounded individual approaching him was none other than his neighbor from the same building. This situation piqued Zhang Yi's curiosity as he began to wonder about the circumstances that had led the person to the dark side. Zhang Yi's surprise deepened when he witnessed the injured person collapse right in front of him, falling to the ground. Captivated by the scene, Zhang Yi's attention was drawn to the person's dwindling health points, and he remained relatively silent. As he glanced at the person, his gaze extended to the surrounding environment, where he noticed something peculiar that had appeared behind the injured individual. Suddenly, a strange creature materialized out of thin air, displaying a health status of 24, indicating that it was not in the best condition. Zhang Yi surmised that this creature was likely responsible for the injuries inflicted on the person who had approached him earlier. The weird creature then shifted its attention to both Zhang Yi and the injured person lying on the ground, its menacing expression suggesting that it was prepared to cause harm. Feeling a surge of anger, Zhang Yi confronted the strange creature, questioning its role in the injuries sustained by the person on the ground. Meanwhile, one of the individuals who worked the night shift side, visibly expressing his fatigue. He mentioned that the workload in the night department had increased, leading to his heightened exhaustion. Initially, he had believed that the administrative tasks in the night department would be straightforward and rewarding. 
However, he was caught off guard when he found himself working longer hours every day, extending into the late hours. Reflecting on the situation, he wondered if he had been aware of this demanding workload beforehand, as it might have influenced his decision to register for the comprehensive military examination. While engrossed in his own activities, the man suddenly heard a noise resembling a cry for help. He discovered two children struggling to seek assistance, as they were under attack from the dark side. The man began to contemplate whether the alien races were behind the attack on the children, attempting to lure people into the dark side. However, he hesitated as he tried to decipher how these alien races could traverse from the dark side to their world to cause trouble. Additionally, he could not recall any instances where people were directly led into the dark side. The children found themselves in a dire situation, exerting every effort to call for help. When they noticed the man nearby, he reacted swiftly and without hesitation, springing into action to aid the kids who were in grave danger and desperately in need of assistance. The man reached out his hand towards the children, finally managing to grasp hold of them. However, despite his efforts, he encountered difficulty in pulling the kids out due to a powerful force at play. To his astonishment, as soon as he had a firm grip on the children, an unexpected force began pulling him in as well. Helpless and unable to take action, fear and apprehension washed over him as he realized he was being drawn into the dark side. The man and the children found themselves on the dark side, separated from their previous location. The siblings were now crying and feeling disoriented, unsure of their whereabouts. The man, caught in this unforeseen situation, began to overthink his circumstances. Realizing that, like the civilians around him, he lacked protective gear for defense, he became lost in thought. He contemplated the inherent danger of their situation and couldn't help but consider the possibility of sudden death. Out of nowhere, a strange creature appeared before them. Reacting swiftly, the man positioned himself protectively in front of the children, shielding them from the entity. Fueled by concern, he instinctively used his leg to kick the approaching shadow, warding off the strange creature's attempts to harm them. Fully engaged in the fight, the man noticed that the small crack they had initially observed had vanished, leading him to the realization that returning to their own world might no longer be an option. Deeply absorbed in contemplating how they could find their way back home, the man suddenly noticed something extremely frightening right in front of him, a large, dark creature. The man quickly understood that there could be alien races lurking in the dark side, ready to attack. Unfortunately, due to spending considerable time on administrative tasks, he had forgotten the basic fighting skills he had acquired during the military exam. As he gazed at the children, he realized their circumstances were even more challenging, as they lacked any fighting abilities to defend themselves. The kids began crying, overwhelmed by fear and discomfort in this unfamiliar place. Through their cries, they expressed their strong desire to return home. In an attempt to ensure their safety in the dark side, the man devised a plan. Recognizing that activating the distress signal was their only viable option at that time, he decided to initiate it and patiently wait for help to arrive. With determination, he switched on the distress signal, maintaining a composed demeanor despite the unfavorable situation. Walking over to the children, he sought to comfort them. He handed them the device, explaining that it had the capability to temporarily reduce the pollution in the area. He reassured the kids that he was committed to coming up with ideas to keep them safe and eventually lead them back home where they belonged. Entrusting the device to the children, the man believed it was the wisest decision. He pondered whether the children had any chance of enduring the situation they were in, realizing that their fate rested in the hands of uncontrollable circumstances. The young boy, seeking reassurance, questioned the man about his true intentions of safely returning them home. The man assured the boy that their current strategy involved finding a hiding spot and patiently waiting for the rescue team to arrive. However, a sense of danger arose as the man sensed an unusual presence fixating its gaze on them from a distance. He shared with the boy that there was a minor matter he needed to address before they could proceed to find a safe place to hide. He mentioned the strange creature's presence, expressing concern that it might pose a threat and potentially launch an attack. Recalling his past experiences, the man recounted how, at the age of 18, he had successfully passed the military strength examination, which granted him admission to the university's department specializing in superpowers. During his first year at the university, he dedicated himself to regular training sessions, diligently working towards building a strong foundation in pursuit of his dream of becoming a fighter. 
In his second year, under the guidance of his teacher, he achieved a significant milestone by defeating an unidentified alien entity. This accomplishment filled him with joy and a profound sense of pride, as it showcased the positive outcomes of his unwavering training efforts. However, upon observing how effortlessly some individuals could wield their superpowers, he began to doubt whether his dedicated efforts and hard work were truly sufficient. He realized that in a world where superpowers were prevalent, the significance of exerting effort through hard work seemed to diminish when compared to the innate genetic abilities some individuals possessed. Despite his consistent training and diligent efforts, he found himself unable to meet the expectations he had set for himself. Despite his lack of belief in fate and regardless of the earnest efforts he exerted, he ultimately discovered that he couldn't overcome the limitations that held him back. Finally, he reached a turning point where he had to make a choice. He decided to switch from the military forces department to the morals department, ultimately becoming a regular employee within the Night Watch division. As he prepared to confront the monster standing before him, he mentally readied himself for the impending battle. He took a moment to carefully examine the creature's appearance, aiming to determine its classification and identify the type of monster he was about to engage in combat with. The moment he laid eyes on the monster, recognizing its semi-animal appearance with four limbs and four eyes, he immediately realized that it belonged to a higher level of advanced middle-class aliens. The alien creature rushed toward him with considerable speed, prompting him to swiftly adjust his posture and stance, preparing himself to face the approaching challenge head-on. Despite not having been in a fight since he switched to the morals department, he stood steadfast, showing no sign of wavering as he encountered the alien creature. As the man initiated his assault on the alien, the creature began to bleed, its blood spilling out as a result of the attack. Uncertain about the consequences, the man decided to throw a punch at the alien, unsure of what would unfold next. In the midst of the tense situation, he continued to strike the monster relentlessly, despite the noticeable difference in their sizes. The more the man punched, the more difficult it became for the alien to retaliate. The continuous strikes seemed to impede the creature's ability to defend itself effectively. However, a familiar feeling crept in triggered by his act of punching the alien, leaving him taken aback by the unexpected turn of events. The alien managed to catch him off guard from behind, forcefully pushing him against the wall. As he prepared to stand up, the alien wasted no time and swiftly moved towards him with great speed, catching him off guard once again. Despite his intention to evade the oncoming attack, the man found himself contemplating the situation. While his mind recognized the need to avoid the strike, his body seemed to lag behind, failing to respond accordingly. Reacting swiftly to the alien's attack, the man successfully evaded the impending strike. Despite the alien's relentless assaults, the man struggled to launch a successful counterattack, relying on his agility to skillfully evade each incoming strike, protecting himself from harm. As he adeptly evaded the ongoing attacks, he noticed an unusual change in his physical condition. It felt as though his body was gradually growing heavier, akin to the sensation one might experience after enduring numerous needle piercings. While skillfully evading the alien's continuous attacks, the man's mind was fully engaged, generating various ideas to overcome the situation at hand. He actively contemplated ways to conquer the challenges posed by the relentless alien onslaught, fueled by determination. With determination burning within him, the man clenched his fist, realizing he couldn't prolong the situation any further. He was resolute in his intention to eliminate the threat posed by the alien and prepared to take decisive action. Assuming a determined posture, the man positioned himself to launch an attack directly targeting the alien. Fully prepared and geared up, he summoned his inner strength and unleashed a surge of shadowy energy towards the alien, rendering it temporarily sightless. Without holding back, he channeled all the energy he possessed into his hands, unleashing a powerful attack to defeat the alien and neutralize it as a threat to himself and the children accompanying him in the darkness. Despite the alien's composed demeanor, it continued to attack the man forcefully from the dark side, persisting in their fierce confrontation. However, as the battle wore on, the man found it increasingly difficult to breathe due to the worsening pollution in the vicinity. He noticed that every time the aliens utilized their extraordinary abilities, it resulted in a surge of pollution in the environment. When the man assumed his normal employee role, he was fortunate that the aliens didn't rely on their superpowers as frequently, leading to better pollution control. However, this turn of events also proved unfortunate for him since he couldn't fully utilize the abilities he had diligently developed and honed. Despite facing adversity, 
the man firmly held onto the belief that he shouldn't refrain from engaging in the fight simply because he didn't feel completely prepared. He continued to actively participate in combat against the alien species. During one instance when he rushed towards an alien, he realized he wasn't adequately prepared for the counterattack, resulting in injuries and leaving him vulnerable to further assaults. He was propelled through the air and crashed onto the ground by the force of the alien's attack, sustaining significant injuries and physical harm. Frustration mounted for the man as he faced ongoing struggles in his battle against the aliens, finding it increasingly arduous as the confrontation persisted. Observing the alien charging towards him, he considered that the creature had likely become accustomed to its powers quickly, making it a middle-class opponent among its kind, one that a martial arts student could likely defeat with relative ease using only one hand. However, when the responsibility of fighting the alien fell upon him, he encountered a formidable challenge, prompting contemplation on the distinction between effort and natural talent. While he believed that winning the fight might be an improbable feat for him, given his occupation as a night cop, he remained resolute in his determination to hold his ground without yielding an inch. Thinking about the frightened children in his care, he realized that their best course of action in that situation was to exercise patience, as no other viable options appeared available to them at that particular moment. The man was caught off guard as the alien swiftly charged towards him, launching repeated attacks that took him by surprise and caused him to endure unexpected blows, resulting in multiple injuries. The alien's aggressive assault forcefully drove the man into the ground, inflicting severe harm. Despite his grave injuries, the man's determination remained steadfast as he awaited the arrival of his fellow night police officers to rescue him. Struggling to recover from the powerful blows and finding it challenging to rise again, he became increasingly aware that his life might be in peril, prompting his mind to revisit a poignant memory from his past that flooded back to him in that critical moment. In that critical moment, the man's mind transported him to a memory from his past, where he had witnessed the tragic circumstances surrounding a close relative. This event had occurred when he was only 15 years old. Additionally, he recalled a distinct memory from his life, the moment he had made the decision to enlist in the military Terry Forces Department at the age of 18. Amidst the chaos of the present situation, triggered by these recollections, the man's hand instinctively reached out. He remembered another memory from when he was 20 years old, having completed his sophomore year at the university. Circumstances had compelled him to withdraw from the combat department at the age of 21. He had initially joined the department as a trainee and had progressed to become an ordinary employee. Now, four years had passed since then, and the man reflected that even though he was leading a regular, everyday life, it was still his own life to live. In the ongoing interaction between humans and monsters, which often lacked the tranquility and peace presented by the government to the general public, many individuals found themselves constantly yearning for an escape from the harsh reality that surrounded them. Contemplating the idea that death might be a natural outcome for those possessing supernatural abilities, the man retrieved something from his pocket. It turned out that he had reached into his pocket to retrieve a blue pill. Holding the pill in his hand, he proceeded to swallow it. Upon ingesting the pill, a powerful surge of energy coursed through his body. In that moment, he realized that by consuming the pill, he had taken on the responsibility to protect the children. The pill had restored his strength, and along with it, a surge of bravery welled up within him. Empowered by this newfound courage, the man boldly confronted the alien once more, declaring the start of round two. He made it clear that he was prepared to face the challenge anew and continue the fight. With his physical abilities heightened, he felt a strong sense of enthusiasm and readiness to engage in combat with the alien. Summoning his bravery, the man confidently assumed his stance, displaying determination and confidence. He was fully prepared to confront the alien, showing no hesitation in his actions. Charging forward with determination, he aimed to counterattack the alien, skillfully evading each blow despite the alien's repeated attacks. Seizing the opportunity, the man executed a swift counterattack, delivering a powerful kick to the alien's face. The forceful and vigorous nature of his strike steadily pushed the alien backward, unable to withstand the impact of his powerful blows. Gathering all his strength into his fist, the man unleashed a mighty punch with great force, channeling every ounce of his determination into the strike. With each punch he landed on the alien, the man mentally reaffirmed his commitment to persevere a little longer, holding onto his unwavering determination to continue the fight. After a series of intense efforts where he exerted all his energy, the man began to notice a gradual decrease in his strength. The man repeated to himself, 
urging to keep going for a little longer, even as he felt his energy dwindling. His determination refused to waver until he had expended every ounce of his strength. After a series of punches, however, he discovered that he could no longer move his fist. Filled with surprise and trembling with realization, he understood that his body had reached its limit and could no longer respond. This revelation struck him deeply, having exerted all his strength in those punches. Unable to move, the man became vulnerable, and the alien took advantage of the opportunity to strike back with a powerful blow. He was forcefully thrown to the ground, lying there in a helpless state. Contemplating his own limitations and the repercussions of his abilities, tears welled up in his eyes. He gasped at the notion that he couldn't even achieve small victories and felt utterly powerless in the situation. As he thought that his life was coming to an end, his attention was abruptly seized by the sound of a human nearby. Someone named John could be heard shouting that he had arrived to find a boy who hadn't waited by the door. The man's mind pondered whether this person he heard was a night watchman, but he was uncertain due to the voice and speech patterns. It was difficult to believe that an ordinary person would venture to the dark side. Approaching him, Zhang Yu advised the man to rest for a while and entrusted the remaining situation to himself. Zhang Yu was prepared to fight the monster with his own bravery. Observing Zhang Yu, the man realized that going into or coming out of the dark side was strictly prohibited by the inspection department. He found it hard to believe that someone could simply come there without any trouble. The man considered the possibility that Zhang Yu could be a mysterious individual residing in the dark side. However, his thoughts were interrupted when he received a punch and fell into a calm and silent state, causing him to reassess his previous assumptions. Due to the alien's attack, Zhang Yu was forcefully knocked off the ground, revealing his vulnerability despite his initial confidence. Witnessing this, the man recognized Zhang Yu's weakness. As the alien turned its attention towards him, preparing for another attack, Zhang Yu suddenly rose to his feet and positioned himself to deliver a powerful slap to the alien. Caught off guard, the alien let out a cry of agony as Zhang Yu's strong slap struck its face, causing significant pain and discomfort. Feeling anger towards the monster for targeting the man instead of him, Zhang Yu diverted its focus away from the man. Showing no hesitation, he confidently pointed at the alien and asserted that he was the one the alien should be facing in the battle, not the man. While Zhang Yu continued his fight against the alien, time continued to pass in the dark side, ticking away. Zhang Yu remained locked in combat with the monster, skillfully evading all of its counter-attacks with swift and precise movements. He retrieved the bottle he had purchased earlier from the grocery store, intending to use it as an improvised weapon. Aggressively wielding the bottle, Zhang Yu struck the alien with force. Zhang Yu continued to press on with his battle against the alien. Despite the alien's attempts to launch attacks with its sharp hands, Zhang Yu skillfully evaded them, avoiding serious injuries. After deftly dodging the alien's counterattack, Zhang Yu swiftly identified an opening and took advantage of it, delivering an unexpected strike from the side that caught the alien off guard. Playfully teasing the alien, Zhang Yu pointed out his ability to anticipate and counter its attacks, citing their multiple past battles as the source of his insights. Through a series of attacks, Zhang Yu inflicted severe injuries on the alien, resulting in a noticeable decrease in its speed and strength compared to before. The alien cried out in pain, struggling to stop Zhang Yu's relentless assault. Overwhelmed by the intensity of its injuries, the alien felt helpless and unable to effectively retaliate against Zhang Yu's attacks. Taking a brief pause, Zhang Yu left the alien in a state of confusion, unsure of his next move. The man whom Zhang Yu had rescued observed Zhang Yu's actions, uncertain whether they indicated strength or weakness. Although Zhang Yu's actions didn't appear particularly remarkable, the man sensed that he possessed the capability to overpower an opponent if necessary. In a firm and serious tone, Zhang Yu threatened the alien, recalling a previous incident when it had injured him. He declared his intention to reciprocate by targeting the alien's throat and charged forward with unwavering determination. As Zhang Yu rushed towards the alien, he noticed that it was also preparing to launch an attack against him. The alien struck Zhang Yu's body with force, overpowering him and throwing him off balance. The impact sent Zhang Yu crashing into the wall, triggering a memory of a previous situation where he had been taken by surprise and the alien had successfully landed a blow on him. Disappointed in his own actions, Zhang Yu recognized that his lack of caution in attacking the alien had led to his own injury, once again highlighting a recurring pattern where he ended up hurt due to his approach. Under the impression that Zhang Yu had been caught off guard and would be an easy target, the alien rushed straight at him. 
Considering the safety of the children, Zhang Yu contemplated the idea of seeking safety by escaping to the dark side and returning after a few days. However, he also recognized that such an approach didn't align with his usual style of handling situations. Zhang Yu realizes that there's no need to fear the alien, considering its health points are down to 20%, acknowledging that facing the alien in battle will indeed be a challenging situation for him. The man offers advice to Zhang Yu, suggesting that he target the alien's already seriously injured ribs for attack. Acknowledging the man's advice, Zhang Yu swiftly rushes toward the alien, putting his plan into action. The alien appears uncertain and puzzled as it tries to anticipate where Zhang Yu is planning to launch his attack. With a chuckle, Zhang Yu feels a sense of relief as he realizes that things are going well according to his intended plan. Zhang Yu continues to baffle the alien by keeping it uncertain about where his next attack will be aimed. Seizing the opportunity when the alien is caught off guard, Zhang Yu launches an attack, using the sharp bottle he was wielding as a weapon to injure the alien. The alien lets out a pained scream as Zhang Yu stabs it, causing its health points to decrease to 18. Screaming in distress, the alien quickly turns and rushes away in the opposite direction from Zhang Yu, as if trying to escape from the ongoing fight. Zhang Yu finds himself in a state of confusion, uncertain whether the alien is attempting to flee from the situation and pondering where it might be heading. As the alien passes by the man, he immediately begins contemplating the potential motives behind the alien's actions. The man urgently alerts Zhang Yu, who promptly reacts to the situation, realizing that the alien is attempting to reach the children. The man's assumption proves accurate, as the monster indeed aims to target the children. The alien rushes towards the children, positioning itself in front of them with the intention of harming them. The alien's intent leaves both the man and Zhang Yu feeling anxious. It races towards the children with a clear aim of harming them, which is deeply concerning, especially considering that the alien seems desperate to take their lives in order to increase its own health points. The alien makes an attempt to devour the children, positioning itself directly in front of them with its massive mouth wide open. Filled with fear, the children look on, believing that the alien intends to eat them. The older brother instinctively hugs his sister tightly, both of them frightened by the thought of being eaten by the alien. With a sense of acceptance and no other option in sight, the older brother shuts his eyes tightly, allowing the outcome to rest in the hands of the alien. Summoning all his strength, Zhang Yu directs his focus to his arms, determined to intervene and stop the alien from causing harm to the children. Determined to protect the children, Zhang Yu readies himself to throw the bottle at the alien with all the strength he can muster. He knows that this action is his best chance to prevent any harm from coming to the children. Zhang Yu hurls the bottle towards the alien with a powerful and forceful throw, and the bottle rapidly advances toward the alien, heading straight for a direct impact. While the alien is in the process of trying to consume the children, the bottle almost reaches it. Despite Zhang Yu's full effort in throwing the bottle, the alien manages to successfully evade it. The bottle went straight through the alien, continuing its trajectory and heading towards the man's position. Summoning all his strength, the man attempted to strike the alien with his body while catching it off guard. The alien became aware of the man positioned on top of it and recognized that the man was likely preparing to launch an attack while it was vulnerable and had the upper hand. With swift determination, the man charged forward towards the alien, channeling all his strength into his lower body. After mustering all his strength, the man successfully inflicted an injury upon the alien. However, the monster swiftly regained its composure and launched a counterattack, throwing the man to the ground. As a result of the man's attack, the alien's health points decreased from 18% to 15%. The alien forcefully threw the man to the ground, causing him to suffer from the impact and cough up blood. In his severe condition, the man urgently called out to Zhang Yu, pleading for him to save him. While the man struggled to regain his strength, the alien set its intention on launching another attack against him. Fear filled the man's eyes as he looked at the alien, realizing that it was on the verge of consuming him completely. Just as the alien was about to consume the man, Zhang Yu swiftly intervened, coming to the man's rescue and gripping the alien's head. Zhang Yu grinned jokingly as he held onto the alien's head, showing his determination to stop the alien's harmful intentions. The alien was caught off guard when Zhang Yu suddenly bit its neck, aiming to bring an end to its life. As Zhang Yu bit into the alien's neck, its health points decreased further, dropping down to 14. Zhang Yu persisted in his attacks on the alien, maintaining his grip on its hair while continuing to deliver attacks. As Zhang Yu kept the alien pinned down, 
he playfully teased it, suggesting that as an alien, it should be barking rather than engaging in combat and trying to harm others. Zhang Yu's continued assault on the alien caused it to struggle intensely, leading to a continuous decrease in its health points. The alien was truly surprised by what Zhang Yu did, it thought that Zhang Yu's actions looked a lot like cannibalism, which is when one creature eats another creature of the same kind. The alien didn't understand how Zhang Yu was able to do it, so it asked Zhang Yu to explain how he managed such a thing. Zhang Yu tried to tear the alien into smaller parts, but then he noticed a bright light coming from the alien's body. This light piqued Zhang Yu's curiosity, and he wanted to know what it was. Zhang Yu decided that he wanted to take the light form out of the alien's body. Using a lot of strength, he attempted to remove the light from the alien's body. The alien struggled to fight back as Zhang Yu was trying to remove it, but Zhang Yu used all his power to try and end the alien's life. Zhang Yu was very determined to end the alien's life in order to stop it from hurting others in the near future. As Zhang Yu put all his strength into his actions, the things around him began to move strangely. This was due to the strong force he was exerting, which started to affect his surroundings in unusual ways. The force that Zhang Yu was generating continued to intensify, causing the environment around him to become increasingly intense. After a prolonged struggle, Zhang Yu managed to muster all his strength and successfully defeat the alien, putting an end to its life. They had been engaged in a long, arduous battle, particularly when they encountered each other in the dark side of their encounters. Once Zhang Yu had vanquished the alien, he began coughing, and to his surprise, he started coughing up a significant amount of blood. The surroundings on the dark side started to crack and shake as a result of Zhang Yu's actions. As Zhang Yu regained his footing, he could sense a powerful force gathering around him. This force was so potent that it caused objects to float, defying the usual pull of gravity. The items around him started exhibiting peculiar and unexpected behaviors due to this unusual force. Right before Zhang Yu's eyes, his surroundings began to develop cracks and fractures. The ground kept cracking and trembling, an effect caused by Zhang Yu's emission of an extraordinary force. This force caused the dark side to become even more peculiar and unsettling. After their encounter with the alien, the man and the children were utterly exhausted and fell into a peaceful sleep. This occurred before Zhang Yu took action to rescue them. After eliminating the alien, Zhang Yu took a moment to shake off the intense experience and regain his composure. Reflecting on the situation, Zhang Yu felt a sense of relief. The alien that he had fought against numerous times and had previously been defeated by had finally been overcome. Not only that, but he had also successfully rescued the man and the children, removing them from danger. While Zhang Yu observed the man and the children, he began to notice that his ability to see clearly was gradually fading, and his vision became blurry. Zhang Yu felt confused and uncertain about how to proceed when his vision suddenly became increasingly blurred. The blurriness persisted and worsened, to the point where even when Zhang Yu looked at his own shadow, his sight gradually faded. After struggling for a minute to hold on, Zhang Yu's vision was completely gone, and he lost consciousness. Once unconscious, he started to have a dream. In this dream, he witnessed the dark side of the world, a place shrouded in darkness like nighttime. However, something astonishing occurred, the entire dark place caught fire. As Zhang Yu continued dreaming, he saw something exceptionally peculiar. Despite the inferno and the transformation of everything into ashes, he could discern a group of people lying on the ground. In his dream, the entire city on the dark side became engulfed in flames, with fire spreading across buildings, streets, and everything else, creating a fiery scene. Zhang Yu felt deeply puzzled within his dream, uncertain of his location. Everything around him seemed unfamiliar, like nothing he recognized. He surveyed his surroundings, attempting to make sense of the bewildering environment in his dream. Something caught his attention, and he suddenly spotted an unfamiliar sight. There were peculiar creatures, a species he couldn't recognize or name. Out of nowhere, these strange creatures that Zhang Yu had noticed earlier gathered around him, forming a circle. In his dream, these unfamiliar beings became the focal point, with Zhang Yu right in the middle of it all. He found himself in a perplexing situation, observing the beings but unable to determine if they were extraterrestrial or not. As Zhang Yu closely examined, the strange beings that he suspected might be aliens, something astonishing occurred. Without warning, these creatures he was unsure about suddenly launched an attack on him. Zhang Yu was completely taken by surprise, as he had not anticipated their aggressive approach. 
The sudden presence of the aliens surrounding him left him startled and caught off guard. They swiftly closed in on him, pulling him into their midst. It happened so rapidly that he couldn't help but become entangled within their group. In his dream, Zhang Yu envisioned a scenario where he became drawn into the aliens' world, becoming a part of their realm. In this world of shadows, a place where the earth seemed fractured and the light faded, the concept of death was uncertain and enigmatic. It was a puzzling realm, different from what we know, inviting contemplation about what lies beyond our understanding and sparking curiosity about the nature of change in life. While Zhang Yu was immersed in his dream, he emitted various sounds, as if speaking aloud. The man and the children could hear these strange sounds as he struggled in his dreams. Gradually, Zhang Yu started regaining awareness, awakening to a sense of consciousness. In this phase, he felt a compelling urge to reach out his hand to the man, a gesture seeking help. Simultaneously, the man he had saved earlier stood before him, displaying a mix of concern and curiosity. The man inquired if Zhang Yu was still alive after his prolonged unconsciousness. Zhang Yu found himself in a state of confusion as he tried to comprehend the man's words. Puzzled by the man's question, he took a moment to reflect on his recent experiences and questioned the possibility that everything he had undergone might have been nothing more than a mere dream. After awakening, Zhang Yu's mind wandered, unable to recall anything that transpired after defeating the alien species. He pointed at the heads of the aliens and attempted to explain a technique called, shade eating. As Zhang Yu utilized his unique power, something intriguing happened, the heads of the aliens began to disappear. They gradually faded away, as if his ability had the power to make them vanish into thin air. The man appeared puzzled and uncertain about Zhang Yu's well-being, as he was confused by the lack of communication from Zhang Yu. This left the man wondering if everything was all right with Zhang Yu. The man became concerned and curious about Zhang Yu's silence, trying to understand the reason behind it and if something was wrong. Zhang Yu was alarmed to notice that the man's health points had dropped to just 10%, indicating a dangerous condition. However, based on a system reference that assessed health using a measure related to blood volume, Zhang Yu realized there was still a chance to help the man recover. Feeling confused, Zhang Yu saw the man rise from his previous position and reach out to hold his shoulder. This sudden action caught Zhang Yu off guard, leaving him uncertain about the man's intentions and movements. Out of nowhere, the man instructed Zhang Yu to assist him in leaning against the wall. Both Zhang Yu and the man leaned against the wall together, finding a comfortable spot to rest. They let out a sigh of relief, synchronized in their shared moment, which offered a brief respite from the events unfolding in the dark surroundings. While still leaning against the wall, the man shared his thoughts with Zhang Yu, expressing his belief that he was not actually a night watchman, contrary to assumptions that might have been made. Zhang Yu felt puzzled by the man's words and couldn't help but wonder if the man truly didn't recognize him, despite living in the same building. It seemed strange because Zhang Yu had seen this man around the building multiple times. Before, assuming they would have at least some familiarity due to their shared living space. Zhang Yu firmly rejected the man's assumption and clarified that he was not a night watchman, determined to make it clear. The man had initially mistaken Zhang Yu for a night watchman, but upon hearing the fact, he became convinced that Zhang Yu was not one. As their conversation continued, the man remarked that fighting was quite tough and emphasized that he himself was definitely not a night watchman. Zhang Yu thought of the man in a strange manner, finding it amusing how he laughed off the situation beside him. Zhang Yu believed that the man lacked proper communication skills and had forgotten the fact that Zhang Yu had saved him earlier from the alien. With a lighthearted laugh, the man admitted that he had been joking and expressed regret for playfully teasing Zhang Yu. He extended his apology and complimented Zhang Yu for his amazing skill. Amused, the man chuckled as he recalled Zhang Yu's earlier use of a soy bottle as a weapon against the alien, pointing out that Zhang Yu seemed to be the only one who had ever used such a unique weapon in their battle. While finding amusement in Zhang Yu's earlier use of the soy bottle, Zhang Yu contemplated how the man managed to remain calm and continue laughing despite the challenging circumstances they had faced. Notably, the man's ability to laugh, even with decreased health points, caught Zhang Yu's attention. Zhang Yu reflected on the night guard's tendency to maintain a cheerful aura despite facing challenges. Suddenly, the man inquired about the university Zhang Yu attended, prompting Zhang Yu to provide a fabricated answer in order to keep personal matters private. Zhang Yu playfully steered the conversation to another topic. However, when Zhang Yu responded about the university, the man continued to pursue the topic by asking if Zhang Yu was studying martial arts or liberal arts. 
This put Zhang Yu in an awkward situation, contemplating whether to disclose the truth or not. Zhang Yu perceived that the man was becoming comfortable asking personal questions, assuming that Zhang Yu must be pursuing studies in martial arts or liberal arts, believing Zhang Yu couldn't handle mediocrity. Out of the blue, the man abruptly asked if Zhang Yu had a cigarette, leaving Zhang Yu puzzled about the sudden change in topic. Zhang Yu offered a biscuit instead, as that was all he had to offer in exchange for the requested cigarette. The man expressed gratitude and accepted the biscuit appreciatively. Zhang Yu split the biscuit into two parts, intending to share half with the man on the night watch. The man was surprised that Zhang Yu had given him only half of the biscuit. As Zhang Yu extended the biscuit to him, Zhang Yu told the man to go ahead and enjoy it. Zhang Yu pointed towards the scattered biscuits on the ground, explaining that they had been broken into pieces during the battle. Zhang Yu offered to gather them for the man, but the man instructed Zhang Yu to collect them for himself instead. While enjoying their biscuits, both Zhang Yu and the man fell into a silence after their previous conversation. After an extended period of silence, the man initiated a new line of conversation by asking if this was Zhang Yu's first experience in single-handedly hunting down an alien. Zhang Yu confirmed the man's question and acknowledged the correctness of his assumption. Continuing the conversation, the man opened up to Zhang Yu, expressing a sense of envy towards people like Zhang Yu who were born with natural talents. He contrasted himself, describing his perceived weaknesses in terms of abilities and determination, comparing it to the lifeless and hopeless environment of the dark side. He noted that even possessing a modest amount of strength, could appear as weakness in the eyes of others. Zhang Yu advised the man to conserve his energy and refrain from talking, suggesting they wait for a rescue team. In response, the man reassured Zhang Yu that he understood but expressed his desire for company and conversation to pass the time. The man likened the determination of their civil servants to cotton wool, remarking that no matter how many layers there were, the core remained soft and easily compressible. Gazing at his injured hand, the man contemplated the challenge of finding rest in a place like the dark side, where pollution seemed to surge relentlessly. Attentively, Zhang Yu listened to the man's thoughts and posed a question, asking if he regretted becoming a night watchman. Zhang Yu further suggested that the man might have chosen a more general path in the field of liberal arts. The man inquired about the reasons behind a civil servant like himself striking the shadow cast by Zhang Yu's words. Deep in contemplation, his fist tightened, indicating the intensity of his thoughts and the weight of their discussion. Surprisingly, the man stood up and confessed to Zhang Yu that he deeply regretted the choices he had made. Emotion surged within him as he raised his voice, revealing that he had once been a mere office worker who enjoyed socializing with girls and found joy in mentoring new night watchmen effortlessly. He recounted past successes, including a period of being at the top. However, he now found himself trapped in the dark side with seemingly no way out. Amidst the man's outburst, he began to cough, and Zhang Yu intervened with concern, advising him to take it easy and not overexert himself. Zhang Yu cautioned that using up too much energy could decrease his chances of survival. Pointing towards the children, the man informed Zhang Yu that he had already activated a rescue signal, indicating that help should be on its way to their location. He conveyed that once he managed to leave the area, assistance would likely arrive. The young boy who was with them in the dark side held the device responsible for transmitting the rescue signal from the other world, clutching it tightly with a sense of hope for rescue. As Zhang Yu got to his feet, the man cautioned him against wandering around, expressing concerns about the possibility of encountering more aliens. He noted that Zhang Yu's attack and escape tactics might not always be effective. Instead, he suggested that Zhang Yu stay engaged in conversation with him while they awaited rescue. Contemplating the situation, Zhang Yu found himself torn between the desire to escape and the realization that being with the man might be more distressing than facing aliens, as the man's company seemed to be an emotional challenge in itself. As time passed while they awaited rescue, Zhang Yu and the night watchman engaged in ongoing conversation, filling the moments with their exchange of words. The man showered Zhang Yu with compliments, expressing his admiration for Zhang Yu's bravery when confronting the alien. He further remarked that Zhang Yu's decision to join the fight had caught him off guard but had ultimately made a significant difference in the situation they had faced. Continuing his compliments, the man expressed amazement at Zhang Yu's actions, particularly the effectiveness of his solo attack on the alien. The man then requested Zhang Yu to visit the university on his behalf and apologize to the head. He explained that he had been unable to defeat a first-class strange creature, which had led to disappointment and unmet expectations. 
Zhang Yu found himself unable to respond, realizing that he had previously lied about attending the university. The man conveyed a message to Zhang Yu, asking him to pass along his regards to Deputy Director. Huang from the Academy of Supernatural Literature. He requested Zhang Yu to express gratitude for her guidance. The man also shared that the advice to always act arrogantly in class given by the deputy was somewhat embarrassing to follow. Zhang Yu informed him that he would need to wait until he could retrieve his notebook to jot down all the requests the man had made. Alternatively, he suggested waiting until he had fully recovered so he could personally convey the requests. The man found himself puzzled, unsure if Zhang Yu's words were meant as a joke or if there was a serious undertone to them. He then opened up to Zhang Yu, explaining that he had been carrying the weight of his thoughts and feelings for years without anyone to confide in. He expressed his desire to find someone to share his thoughts with, which was why he had confided in Zhang Yu with a smile. The man contemplated the idea of returning to a time when he was at the Northern Watch Academy, perhaps wishing for a chance to relive those moments. The man made a request for more cookies, specifically mentioning his preference for spicy ones. Zhang Yu playfully commented on the man's unique taste preferences, remarking that it was quite unusual. He also mentioned that finding spicy flavored biscuits was a challenge as they were not commonly available anywhere in the world. The man nodded in agreement with Zhang Yu's response and decided to let go of the idea of finding spicy flavored biscuits. After a lengthy conversation, a sense of relief washed over them as a night patrol unit appeared to be heading towards the dark side for a rescue mission. The man informed Zhang Yu that a night patrol team had arrived in the dark side, and Zhang Yu's face lit up with a smile, knowing that he could finally leave the situation behind. Zhang Yu felt relieved, knowing that help had arrived to rescue the man and the children from their location. Seeing the rescue team on the dark side, Zhang Yu quickly gathered his belongings and prepared to leave the scene and continue on his way. Zhang Yu walked away, leaving behind the man and the children who were awaiting their rescue from the approaching team. The man gazed at Zhang Yu as he saw him walking away, and then he mustered the courage to ask if Zhang Yu might be willing to accompany them back to their world instead of staying behind in the dark side. Zhang Yu reassured the man that there was no need for him to come along and told the man that he would make his way back on his own with a smile. The man expressed his agreement with Zhang Yu's words and bid him farewell, wishing him a safe journey. Understanding the man's words, Zhang Yu finally walked away, taking his own path and leaving behind the man and the children, knowing that the rescue team was about to arrive. Zhang Yu carried on walking, fully aware that he would be continuing the journey to the other world all by himself, with focused determination. Zhang Yu started to channel his concentration, preparing to return to the world he had come from earlier. Glancing back at the man he had conversed with, Zhang Yu took one last look before stepping away from the dark side. Finally, after a long wait, a group of rescuers arrived on the scene to offer their help to the man and the children. Their arrival brought a sense of relief as they swiftly assessed the situation and reported the presence of a night patrol officer who had suffered significant injuries, along with the presence of the children nearby. Zhang Yu observed attentively as the rescue team conducted their assessment, keeping his gaze fixed on the man. The rescuers diligently checked the man's vital signs, and Zhang Yu noticed that his health points remained at a mere 10%, a reminder of the intense battle they had faced together. One of the rescuers exchanged a look with his colleague, indicating through a nod that there was little hope of saving the man's life. Zhang Yu felt a sense of confusion, unsure about the unfolding situation before him. To his surprise, the man's health points started to decrease right in front of his eyes. Zhang Yu was puzzled by this gradual decline, finding it hard to understand what was happening. However, he held on to the thought that modern medicine could potentially improve the man's health and lead to a full recovery. Zhang Yu watched in despair as the man before him began to fade away, disappearing right in front of his eyes. The rescuers had come to terms with the unfortunate outcome and had risen to their feet. As Zhang Yu was gradually being drawn back to the other side, he observed that the rescuers saluted the man in recognition of his bravery, having passed away with honor. The man's health points had dropped to 0%, and unfortunately, there was nothing Zhang Yu could do to change the outcome. Even as he was almost disappearing from sight, the night watchman managed to form a faint smile on his face, leaving Zhang Yu with a sense of warmth and connection in those final moments. Zhang Yu could see the smile on the man's face even during his final moments, which left a quiet impression on him. He gazed at the man, watching as he slowly faded away. Desperately, Zhang Yu extended his hand, hoping to hold on to the sight of the man disappearing before his eyes until the very end. 
However, as his hand reached out, he realized that the portal from the dark side had already closed, leaving him with a feeling of loss and a memory of the brave night watchman who had fought valiantly until the end. Upon returning to the other world, Zhang Yu found himself standing in the middle of a bustling street. Passers-by were intrigued by his sudden appearance and couldn't help but wonder what he was doing, some even thinking he might be engaged in some sort of theatrical performance. As Zhang Yu took in his surroundings, he noticed the patrol officers who were likely about to announce a warning to the general public of the United City. Zhang Yu listened intently as the commander addressed the public, emphasizing that even in dire circumstances, exceptional individuals should never give up. The commander mentioned a blue pill that, if taken by a soldier, would greatly enhance their potential but also carried a high risk of death, up to 90%. In other words, consuming the pill could lead to a critical situation where conventional means of escape might not be possible. The commander instructed the soldiers to take the compound and be prepared to sacrifice their lives for the greater cause of the two nations. In his address, the commander emphasized the importance of self-sacrifice, urging the soldiers to bravely give up their lives for the greater cause. He assured them that their courageous actions would leave a lasting legacy, motivating them to move forward with unwavering determination to eliminate all unusual creatures until they were completely wiped out from existence. Standing firmly on the ground, their eyes turned upward, fixated on the sparkling stars that painted the night sky. They felt as if they were embarking on a journey through time itself, with their human bodies as vessels, elevating the ordinary into the extraordinary. Together, they formed the Night Observation Department, a united force harnessing their potential to safeguard the world from the unknown. After a day filled with intense battles against the aliens that left him tired and drained, Zhang made the decision to return to his home on the eighth floor of a building. As he rode the elevator, Zhang remained silent and lost in thought, haunted by the image of the man who had disappeared before his eyes into the dark side. Contemplating deeply, he continued up to his apartment, still puzzled and uncertain about the man's fate. Stepping out of the elevator onto the eighth floor, Zhang found himself immersed in his thoughts and contemplation. He couldn't help but feel disbelief and shock over the man's fate. Just moments before vanishing, the man had been laughing and engaged in a conversation with Zhang. Unlocking the door to his apartment, Zhang couldn't shake the thought that the man had passed away quietly, leaving behind a simple but meaningful connection they had shared. Reflecting within himself, Zhang acknowledged that the memory of the ordinary man would remain attached in his mind, serving as a reminder of the significance of the person's existence. This man had sacrificed himself to protect the children, leaving a lasting impact on Zhang. Exhausted and burdened emotionally, Zhang found himself lost in contemplation, grappling with physical fatigue and the frustrations of the day. Upon entering his home and seeing himself in the mirror, Zhang was surprised to find that his health points were halfway full, contrary to his expectations. He had anticipated them to be almost depleted due to the tough day he had endured. Reflecting on this, he marveled at the man's attitude, who remained composed even with only 10% health points remaining. This realization made Zhang aware of his own shortcomings and the need for further personal growth. Deciding that physical exercise alone was insufficient, Zhang began cleaning out his refrigerator, discarding all the expired food. He understood that focusing solely on physical fitness wasn't enough and that he also needed strong willpower to succeed in his endeavors. As Zhang packed the expired foods into a box, his attention was suddenly captured by a loud shout from Lu Yao Yao. She urgently asked him about the egg she had requested him to buy, which took him by surprise. Lu Yao Yao approached Zhang with concern, explaining that her phone wasn't working and she couldn't find anyone around. She asked if Zhang had already been to the chicken coop to gather the eggs as she had asked. Speaking gently, Zhang explained to Lu Yao Yao that the Chinese New Year was approaching, and there were many people waiting in long lines. That's why he didn't buy the eggs, as it would have been troublesome for him to wait in line. Zhang was taken aback as he suddenly realized that Lu Yao Yao had somehow obtained his house keys and gained access to his apartment without his knowledge. He wondered how she had managed to do so without him noticing or giving permission. Lu Yao Yao explained to Zhang that she regularly orders takeout, and Uncle Lai, who was concerned about him, entrusted her with the responsibility of looking after him. As a result, Uncle Lai gave her the keys to Zhang's apartment to make it easier for her to take care of him. When Lu Yao Yao noticed Zhang's bloody and torn clothing, she became curious if something had happened outside. She asked if he had been in a fight or encountered any trouble. Zhang averted his gaze, pulled his hoodie over his head, 
and explained that it was getting late, suggesting that she should go back to sleep. He added that her father might misunderstand the situation if he saw them together, so it would be best for them to part ways for the night. Despite Lu Yao Yao's persistence in wanting answers, Zhang still hesitated and came up with an excuse about feeling hungry and wanting to prepare some instant noodles before addressing the matter. When Lu Yao Yao reached out to grab Zhang's arms, she couldn't help but notice his torn clothes, which made her even more curious and concerned about what might have happened to him. With a worried expression on her face, Lu Yao Yao shouted at Zhang and asked him about the source of his injuries and the reason for his disheveled state. Despite Zhang's attempt to divert the conversation by mentioning the forgotten eggs, Lu Yao Yao remained persistent in her concern and continued pressing him for an explanation. She told him that she wouldn't let him go unless he told her the truth. Zhang fabricated a story about a robbery he had allegedly encountered, claiming that he had bravely intervened and left the robber severely injured. He tried to downplay the situation, urging Lu Yao Yao not to pity him. He described how the police couldn't even recognize the injured robber due to the extent of his injuries when they arrived at the scene. As Zhang continued recounting the story, Lu Yao Yao fell into a deep silence, processing what had happened to him. He was taken by surprise when Lu Yao Yao unexpectedly reached out and tenderly touched his face, displaying genuine concern for his well-being. Both of them fell into silence, and in that moment, Zhang couldn't help but wonder if Lu Yao Yao genuinely believed the story he had made up. He felt a mixture of uncertainty and curiosity about her reaction. The apartment was filled with an awkward atmosphere after Zhang Yu shared his fabricated story with Lu Yao Yao, creating tension and unease between them. Zhang found himself in an uncomfortable position as Lu Yao Yao held onto him, unsure of how to respond to the awkwardness that had settled between them. Lu Yao Yao looked at Zhang Yu and asked if his injuries were causing him any discomfort or pain, lightly poking his face. Zhang Yu reassured her that his injuries weren't causing him pain and suggested that she should go back to sleep. Lu Yao Yao simply gazed at Zhang Yu, keeping her thoughts and emotions in spoken for a moment. Afterward, Lu Yao Yao informed Zhang Yu that she intended to report the incident to Uncle Lai, providing details about him fighting people in the night. Zhang was surprised by Lu Yao Yao's unexpected statement. He earnestly tried to reassure her that he hadn't been involved in a fight and attempted to dissuade her from notifying Uncle Lai about the situation. He hoped to avoid any misunderstandings or unnecessary complications that might arise from her sharing the incident with his uncle. In an attempt to dissuade Lu Yao Yao from informing Uncle Lai, Zhang Yu acted as if he was hurt, hoping that his actions would make her reconsider. His sudden behavior took aback Lu Yao Yao and urgently asked about his well-being, concerned that he might have sustained injuries. As they sat together, Lu Yao Yao expressed her concern about Zhang Yu's injuries and advised him to seek proper treatment. However, Zhang Yu continued to resist, assuring her that he had access to effective medicines through Uncle Lai's connection with the night patrol office, which he believed were even more effective than hospital treatments. Lu Yao Yao interpreted Zhang Yu's intentions as him wanting her to help him apply the medicine. With a light-hearted tone, Zhang Yu thanked her in advance and jokingly referred to her as doctor. Lu, playfully acknowledging her role in taking care of his injuries. However, Zhang couldn't help but let out a cry of pain as Lu Yao Yao aggressively applied the medicine and wrapped his injuries with bandages. As a result, Zhang complained about Lu Yao Yao's treatment, telling her that she made him look like a puppet and exaggerated the use of bandages. Lu Yao Yao questioned Zhang Yu about whether he would continue to show off in the future, to which he assured her that he wouldn't involve her next time, for certain. Lu Yao Yao asked Zhang Yu if he was truly making a promise, and he quickly clarified that he wasn't swearing. Feeling frustrated with Zhang Yu's response, Lu Yao Yao playfully threatened to hurt him while mentioning that he could participate in fun activities. However, she also mentioned that if the situation seemed serious, he could simply observe and not get involved. She then asked Zhang Yu to repeat what he had said earlier about getting involved in fights. Zhang promptly reassured Lu Yao Yao that he would only observe and not actively participate in such situations. As Lu Yao Yao stood up, she informed Zhang Yu that she was leaving. In response, Zhang playfully teased her by asking if she wanted to spend the night because his bed was spacious. She then turned around and playfully made a funny expression at Lu Yao Yao. After spending some time together and assisting Zhang Yu with treating his wounds, Lu Yao Yao left his apartment. Zhang Yu found himself lying on the living room couch and lost in his contemplations. As he remained lost in thought, he reflected on the message he had received from the night watchman on the dark side. 
The message was a request to pass on information to the patrols of the Northern Watch Academy, a responsibility that weighed heavily on Zhang Yu's mind. After some time lost in thought, Zhang Yu suddenly recalled something important with a sense of urgency. He quickly got up from his seat as a realization dawned upon him. Zhang Yu realized that during their conversation on the dark side, the man had never actually mentioned his name to him. Even after spending time together while waiting for the rescue team, this detail had slipped his mind. After a period of contemplation, Zhang Yu decided to access the system. Upon accessing it, he was presented with detailed information about the alien creature he had encountered and defeated on the dark side. The system indicated that the creature was classified as a low-quality abyssal creature at the immediate first order level. As a result of defeating this creature, Zhang Yu had acquired a new ability known as Shadow Strike and noticed an increase in his shadow points. While examining the information, Zhang Yu found himself wondering whether the system's manual included a record of his kills of mutant creatures. He pondered whether it was necessary to utilize the Shadow Devourer ability for the system to acknowledge and record the killing of a mutant creature, or if simply defeating the mutant alone was sufficient for it to be registered in the system's records. Zhang Yu focused his attention on the system, searching for additional information and insights that could shed light on the information he was trying to uncover. The system presented him with a tutorial on how to utilize the Shadow Assault ability, prompting him to give it a try and experiment with his newly acquired skill. Feeling motivated and ready to warm up, Zhang Yu got up from his seat. With a hint of amusement, he decided to give the new Shadow Assault skill a try. He raised his hand and made a few exaggerated gestures, attempting to activate the skill in a somewhat lighthearted manner. All the while, he wondered what kind of effect it might have. However, to his disappointment, he noticed that nothing was happening as he tried to activate the new skill with his gestures and stances. Frustration grew within Zhang Yu as he realized that the skill wasn't working at all. He began to question the effectiveness of the skill and wondered if the system was playing a trick on him. Taking a moment to contemplate the situation, Zhang Yu realized that the skill might not have worked because there was no target present for it to activate upon. Deciding to give it another try later, he settled back onto the sofa, thinking that he would attempt the skill again when the opportunity arose. Zhang Yu proceeded to click on the system once more, searching for other information and details. The system displayed Zhang Yu's personal information, indicating that his attribute was associated with shadows and his role was that of a rogue. It explained that his proficiency in eliminating threats from the shadows made him a natural assassin adept at moving silently and striking from the cover of darkness. Confused, Zhang Yu stared at the system and wondered how it managed to alter all the game lines. He contemplated that the phrase should have been, hunting in the light, rather than, hunting in the darkness. The system provided Zhang Yu with some important information. His shadow had changed, and he could now control it in a new way. By blending his shadow with his own body, he could transform into a special version of himself with unique abilities. This discovery left Zhang Yu feeling surprised and thought, it's a new skill again. While reviewing the tutorial for using the skill, Zhang Yu's face lit up with satisfaction and joy. He couldn't help but feel pleased and excited, thinking to himself that this newfound ability was like having a cheat code that granted him incredible powers. Upon reading the instructions, Zhang Yu's attention was drawn to the information below, which seemed a bit confusing and nonsensical to him. It stated that his health points would decrease by 99 if he were beheaded, but he wouldn't die. Zhang Yu found it quite baffling and thought to himself that it seemed rather nonsensical, and he would rather just meet a quick death. Putting aside his complaints, Zhang Yu resolved to give the new skill a shot. He commanded his shadow to emerge and eagerly attempted to activate the ability. Upon his command, his shadow swiftly emerged and fully manifested right in front of Zhang Yu. With a simple hand gesture, Zhang Yu attempted to communicate his intention to the shadow, hoping that it would understand and follow his lead. Responding to Zhang Yu's gesture, the shadow promptly moved in sync with him, extending a finger to touch his finger. Upon contact, Zhang Yu's shadow seemed to gradually dissolve, almost as if it were attempting to merge with him. Much to his surprise, Zhang Yu hadn't anticipated the skill working on his first attempt, and he watched in amazement as his shadow began to seamlessly integrate with his form. The merging process continued, with the shadow slowly enveloping him inch by inch, until it was almost on the verge of completely covering his entire body. After a while of merging, Zhang Yu found himself fully merged with his shadow, and he felt a unique sensation coursing through his entire being. 
With the merging procedure now finished, Zhang Yu found himself pleasantly surprised by the captivating nature of the transformation. He directed his gaze towards his altered form, taking in all the changes that had taken place before his eyes. Zhang Yu took cautious, deliberate breaths, making an effort to execute a specific action. He proceeded to move around, testing out the newly acquired ability to know its effectiveness. Using his newfound ability, Zhang Yu moved around his apartment with remarkable speed, his form shifting and gliding effortlessly as he utilized his shadow form. As Zhang Yu tested out his enhanced speed in his apartment, everything around him turned into a chaotic mess, a result of his rapid movements and the effects of his newfound abilities. Zhang Yu decided to conduct further experiments. Amazed by the capabilities he now possessed, he was curious about the extent of his newfound strength. With determination, Zhang Yu set out to test the limits of his newly acquired abilities and the extent of his defensive powers. He deliberately directed his transformed self towards an object weighing 100 kilograms, wondering if his enhanced shadow form could withstand the impact. With a satisfied grin, Zhang Yu couldn't help but chuckle, thoroughly pleased with the impressive performance of his shadow form and the incredible abilities it granted him. However, amid his active experimentation, a voice from a lower floor expressed annoyance at the noise and requested that he lower the volume. After thoroughly testing his newfound ability, Zhang Yu decided to deactivate his shadow form and return to his original state. Curiosity piqued by the button labeled, can be activated again, he turned his attention back to the system. As he pressed the button, the system unveiled the meaning behind it. It revealed that his current control over the shadow form was only partial, and the full awakening of the position was yet to be achieved. Activating it would unlock the position's full potential and grant him exclusive access to its branch abilities, while others would be unable to awaken any abilities under the same position. After conveying this crucial information, the system posed a direct question to Zhang Yu, asking if he indeed wished to activate it. The system also emphasized that risks on certain occasions could transform into valuable opportunities. Zhang Yu pondered over the system's words and concluded that it might indeed be a favorable idea. Staring at the, yes, and, no, buttons, he contemplated the fact that risks were highlighted in red, making him hesitate to choose, yes. Yet, he couldn't ignore the fact that risks often came hand in hand with rewards. In a moment of unintentional action, Zhang Yu's finger mistakenly pressed the, yes, button, leaving him slightly startled by the unexpected choice he had just made. Suddenly, a black entity surrounded him, causing him to be taken aback by its unexpected appearance. When the sudden black entity, a shadowy presence, surrounded and enclosed him, causing a feeling of being completely consumed by its darkness. A radiant and conspicuous light emanated from within his apartment, attracting attention and illuminating his surroundings. Zhang Yu could feel his form changing, adding to the mystique of the situation. The system delivered a message to him, emphasizing the importance of excelling in hunting, warning that failure to do so could lead to his downfall. It declared him inherently a hunter, highlighting that his attacks would undoubtedly inflict damage. Zhang Yu's appearance went through a significant change, resembling one of the extraordinary beings originating from the dark side. The system provided him with additional information and advice on effectively utilizing his newfound power. It also informed him that even gods would struggle to escape from his abilities. After reverting to his original form, Zhang Yu found himself contemplating the system's statement about his attacks being capable of causing damage even to gods. Lost in thought, he was suddenly alerted by a light that appeared in his left eye, likely a signal from the system. The system informed him that after activating the shadow form, his execution ability would be enhanced, reducing the required health threshold for executing attacks. It added that when the target's health reaches a critical level, their health bar would turn crimson, and Zhang Yu would be able to identify the fatal spot on the target. By directing his attack towards the pinpointed fatal spot, he could initiate an execution and fully eliminate the target. The amount of health required for this move depended on various factors, including the strength, abilities, and positions of both parties involved in the encounter. Absorbing all this information, Zhang Yu stood in contemplative silence, gazing at the system's interface before him. As the system explained the concept of the fatal point, a memory sparked in Zhang Yu's mind, recalling an encounter with an alien on the dark side whose appearance had a red spot resembling the one described by the system. This realization left Zhang Yu pondering whether his previous encounter was linked to this new knowledge. While contemplating the information provided by the system, Zhang Yu found himself deep in thought, 
carefully considering the concept of absolute damage combined with execution. A smile of light amusement spread across his face as he contemplated the skills he now possessed and how he could effectively use them to combat the monsters he encountered. Overflowing with happiness and a surge of excitement, Zhang Yu enthusiastically raised his hand high, glorifying the feeling of being invincible and full of confidence. Amidst his joyful celebration, Zhang Yu paused for a brief moment, his attention diverted by a sudden recollection that popped into his mind. He decided to remove all the bandages that were previously wrapped around his body. Upon carefully examining his body after removing the bandages, Zhang Yu couldn't help but find it peculiar that there were no apparent negative effects or risks, leaving him in a state of wonder. It seemed that nothing out of the ordinary had occurred. Gently touching his wounds, Jiang Yu was surprised to discover that they had mostly healed already. He couldn't help but wonder if the medicine he had used could be responsible for such a speedy recovery. It seemed almost too quick to be true. Jiang Yu went as far as lightly pressing one of his wounds to confirm that it had indeed fully healed and that there was no lingering discomfort or pain. He examined the small pieces of skin he had removed and marveled at how activating the shadow form seemed to have significantly enhanced his healing ability, resulting in such rapid recovery. One of Lu Yao Yao's friends approached her and asked if she had seen Zhang Yu's recent social media post, which was shared yesterday. The friend questioned whether she believed the content of the post to be true or if it might be fake. Another mutual friend informed them that Zhang Yu had sent her a private message detailing an encounter with human traffickers. According to the message, he mentioned confronting the traffickers while wielding a knife and engaging in a fierce battle that spanned the entire street. Upon hearing this account, another friend in the group doubted whether Zhang Yu was actually injured during the incident and suggested that they should visit him to check on his well-being. Lu Yao Yao affirmed their friend's concerns and urged them not to take Zhang Yu's story seriously. She explained that he was simply exaggerating and that the truth was he had been chased by a dog, making his story more of a playful exaggeration than a genuinely dangerous encounter. Lu Yao Yao felt annoyed and frustrated by Zhang Yu's tendency to boast and exaggerate his stories. After contemplating for a while about whether they should visit Zhang Yu, they eventually decided to go and see him in person to verify the truth behind his post. Lu Yao Yao encouraged their friends who had decided to visit Zhang Yu to believe in what she said about him making up a story. As Lu Yao Yao prepared to open Zhang Yu's door, her friend became curious and asked how she obtained the keys to his apartment. Lu Yao Yao blushed slightly as she responded, admitting that she had obtained the keys from his uncle. As Lu Yao Yao entered the apartment and called out for Zhang Yu, she mentioned that their friends had come to visit him. While she was in the middle of calling out to him, a sudden shout echoed through the room, capturing their attention. Zhang Yu dropped to the floor, clutching his stomach in apparent distress as if he were experiencing intense pain. Zhang Yu realizing that he had underestimated the sensitivity of his scabs. He realized that he shouldn't have tried to remove them so easily. Observing Zhang Yu's discomfort, Lu Yao Yao hurried over to him, expressing her concern about his well-being. Upon seeing his condition, she noticed that he had removed his bandages and questioned him about why he had taken them off. As Lu Yao Yao and Zhang Yu's friends observed the scene, they couldn't help but realize that Zhang Yu's social media post from yesterday might actually be true, given the current situation they were witnessing. Zhang Yu's friends quickly gathered around him, closely observing his transformed physique and even touching his body in awe. They were genuinely impressed by the sudden increase in his muscle mass and marveled at how his newfound physical appearance might have given him the confidence to confront the human traffickers he claimed to have encountered. Lu Yao Yao swiftly intervened, pulling her friends away from Zhang Yu and urging them to stop staring. She directed them to go sit in the living room. However, one of the girls even speculated to the others that they might be dating. Lu Yao Yao began tending to Zhang Yu's wounds, carefully applying medicine and bandages. Zhang Yu let out a sigh and expressed his discomfort, mentioning that his wounds were hurting. Lu Yao Yao playfully scolded him, telling him to stop complaining because she knew that the medicine she was applying shouldn't be causing him any pain. Sitting beside Zhang Yu on the bed, Lu Yao Yao wore a short skirt that caught his attention, particularly her beautiful legs, momentarily distracting him. While scolding Zhang Yu for his impulsive action of reopening his wound, Lu Yao Yao noticed him blushing slightly as his gaze unintentionally wandered to her exposed leg. Zhang Yu's gaze remained fixed on Lu Yao Yao's legs, seemingly lost in his thoughts and even unknowingly letting a bit of saliva escape from his mouth. On the contrary, Lu Yao Yao sat there quietly, thinking that Zhang Yu was an idiot and a pervert. 
With a light-hearted tone, she jokingly poked fun at Zhang Yu's perceived perverted tendencies, playfully suggesting that someone like Xiao Peng would be more suitable to apply the medicine. However, Zhang Yu promptly refused the idea, stating that Xiao Peng's lack of skill and clumsiness wouldn't be the right choice for such a task. Observing Zhang Yu closely, Lu Yao Yao maintained a steady gaze on him, seemingly intrigued by his response and perhaps trying to read more into his personality. She playfully pinched Zhang Yu's cheek and teasingly remarked that his behavior might be a result of Uncle Li not taking care of him properly for a long time. She mused that no matter how much care and attention Zhang Yu received from her, it might not make a significant change in his personality, hinting at his innate traits. Curiously, Lu Yao Yao leaned in closer to Zhang Yu and inquired about his activities from the previous day. She teasingly questioned whether he truly engaged in a robbery as he had previously claimed. With a sincere expression on his face, Zhang Yu looked directly at Lu Yao Yao and earnestly conveyed that he was not fabricating a story. He emphasized that he felt compelled to stand up for justice, even if it meant putting himself in risky situations. As Lu Yao Yao expressed her feelings and accused Zhang Yu of being dishonest, he found himself in a dilemma. He realized that revealing the actual truth might not convince her, and he felt trapped between wanting to share the reality of the situation and fearing her disbelief. In an attempt to divert the conversation, Zhang Yu shifted the focus to Lu Yao Yao's father's schedule, curious about the timing. He asked when her father would return home. Lu Yao Yao responded that her father hadn't returned yet and inquired about Zhang Yu's reason for asking. Zhang Yu brought up the topic of night patrol, mentioning how demanding and challenging the job could be. He discussed the long working hours during the day and the additional overtime required at night. He also acknowledged the risks associated with being a night patrol officer, highlighting the potential dangers that come with the job. After Zhang Yu expressed his thoughts, Lu Yao Yao remained silent, processing his words and perhaps considering their implications. Zhang Yu couldn't help but notice the change in her expression and couldn't help but think that she must often feel concerned for her father given the risky nature of his night patrol work, where he has to be on guard during the night and potentially face dangerous situations. Zhang Yu's thoughts wandered as he reflected on the reality that only a few individuals engaged in night patrols could enjoy a peaceful existence. He recalled the challenges faced by Lu Yao Yao's father, who had lost an arm, as well as the tragic fate of Lenmo, who had passed away at a young age. Even formidable individuals like Uncle Lu Zhang Yu realized had experienced grave injuries that had a lasting impact on their abilities. These injuries had hindered their potential for further advancement in their lifetime. As the conversation shifted to the topic of night patrol duties, Lu Yao Yao posed a question to Zhang Yu. She inquired whether he would consider joining the night patrol if he successfully passed the martial arts exam. With a concerned expression, Lu Yao Yao fixed her gaze on Zhang Yu, waiting for his response to her question. Caught in a moment of uncertainty, Zhang Yu struggled to come up with a swift response to Lu Yao Yao's inquiry. His mind was torn between the possibility of joining the night patrol after passing the martial arts exam and his lingering doubts about the challenges and risks associated with such a decision. Lu Yao Yao's expression turned puzzled as she listened to Zhang Yu's uncertain response. His response that he wasn't sure whether he would choose to join the night patrol after passing the martial arts exam left her wondering about his intentions and plans. Zhang Yu lightened the mood by adding a playful joke, mentioning that he might consider joining the night patrol due to the presence of beautiful girls. Lu Yao Yao's mood shifted to irritation, and she expressed her annoyance by pinching Zhang Yu, telling him to stop talking because he was irritated. Their friends who were waiting outside the bedroom were able to catch snippets of the argument between Lu Yao Yao and Zhang Yu. As they exchanged teasing remarks, their two friends, who had been patiently waiting in the living room, exchanged puzzled glances as they couldn't quite figure out the nature of the argument between Lu and Zhang Yu in the bedroom. Zhang Yu and Lu Yao Yao eventually went outside to join their friends in the living room. With a friendly smile, Zhang Yu approached their friends and engaged in a conversation, asking them how they were doing and if everything was going well with them. Seeing Zhang Yu's appearance, their friends were concerned about his injuries and asked him about what had happened the previous day, expressing their worry and inquiring if he was all right. Observing Zhang Yu's injuries, their friends couldn't help but notice the red patches on his skin and humorously likened his appearance to that of a strawberry. They playfully speculated that Lu Yao Yao might have been responsible for his current state. Zhang Yu walked over to the comfortable sofa and gestured to his friends to take a seat beside him. With a reassuring smile, he tried to ease their concerns by saying that they needn't worry too much about his injuries, 
Zhang Yu launched into his creative storytelling to entertain his friends. While Zhang Yu was telling his story, Liu Yao Yao observed him with a pissed expression, thinking that he was once again showing off and boasting about his bravery. Liu Yao Yao intervened and called him, stating that she was planning to head to the supermarket. She inquired whether she should discard the torn clothes, implying that she was considering throwing them away. Zhang Yu swiftly and decisively answered Liu Yao Yao's question, telling her to promptly discard the torn clothing without any hesitation. Upon realizing that Liu Yao Yao was addressing the matter of his torn clothing, Zhang Yu finally diverted his attention from their friends and turned his gaze toward her. Suddenly, he rushed towards Liu Yao Yao and shouted, urgently requesting her to hold on for a moment because he had an important item he needed to retrieve from his clothing. Liu Yao Yao was taken aback and surprised by his swift reaction. As Zhang Yu attempted to retrieve the item from his clothes, it suddenly slipped and fell to the ground, resulting in a moment of awkward silence between the two of them. A napkin unexpectedly tumbled to the floor. With an irritated expression, her eyes narrowing as she questioned him about the strange presence of a napkin. Zhang Yu explained to Liu Yao Yao that he had been aware of his stomachache from yesterday, so while he was at the supermarket, he thoughtfully picked up a bag for her and also grabbed some napkins in case she needed them. Observing the interaction between Zhang Yu and Liu Yao Yao, their friends perceived their actions as something typical of couples who share strong emotional bonds. One of their female friends even thought that the adorable picture of Zhang Yu and Liu Yao Yao should be shared with their classmates. Zhang Yu reached down and picked up the napkin from the ground, handing it to Liu Yao Yao kindly, suggesting that she should keep it handy whenever she might need it. Liu Yao Yao tightly clenched the napkin in her hand, her anger evident from her reaction. Blushing with a mix of shyness and anger, Liu Yao Yao expressed her embarrassment to Zhang Yu about his gesture of buying her napkins, especially with their friends present. She firmly told him that she didn't need them. Liu Yao Yao tossed the napkin back to Zhang Yu, hitting him in the head with it. Zhang Yu playfully voiced his complaint. He asked Liu Yao Yao why she appeared to be unexpectedly upset over his simple action of offering her a napkin. Their friends bid them goodbye as they continued to argue. They advised. Zhang Yu to stay strong as he was about to experience a long argument with Liu Yao Yao. As they were leaving, their friends told Zhang Yu and Liu Yao Yao that they believed in both of them. Once Zhang Yu's friends and Liu Yao Yao had finally left his apartment, he experienced a deep sense of relief. He felt relief because he knew that now he wouldn't be interrupted or bothered by anyone while he was in the process of trying out his new skill. Zhang Yu acted quickly by summoning his shadow once again. Upon summoning his shadow, a dark circle began to form around Zhang Yu. This circle of darkness was visible, highlighting the change that was occurring. Once he had successfully summoned his shadow, Zhang Yu proceeded to activate the dark shadow skill. This skill allowed him to merge with his shadow, becoming one with it. He was eager to put his freshly acquired skill to the test and embark on a series of enjoyable exercises. A distinct aura, signaling an impending change, had enveloped Zhang Yu, giving off the feeling that something transformative was about to happen. Positioned directly below him, his shadow mirrored his stance with utmost precision, demonstrating a readiness to unite with him as a single entity. Upon opening his eyes, Zhang Yu found himself enveloped in darkness, seamlessly united with his shadow. Even though the place he was in was expected to be polluted and uncomfortable, he felt at ease within the dark environment. He thanked this newfound comfort to his shadow form, which seemed to be shielding him from the pollution. Zhang Yu felt a feeling that was similar to what a person might experience if they had been living in an area with a lot of pollution from factories and industries for a very long time. Once he had transformed into his shadow form, Zhang Yu realized that his health points had increased to 10%, which was a positive outcome. Furthermore, he noticed that his stomach was no longer in pain, providing him with a sense of relief. Getting ready to begin his exercises within the realm of darkness, Zhang Yu reached out and gently touched the ground beneath him with determination. Lowering himself to the ground, Zhang Yu aimed to create a powerful impact as he landed. He decisively pressed his hand onto the floor, applying a considerable amount of force. Zhang Yu pushed himself upwards from the ground with determination. As a result of the force he exerted, he found himself gradually rising higher into the air, propelled by the impactful energy he had generated. However, unable to control, Zhang Yu lost control and descended, eventually falling back to the ground. Quickly rising to his feet, Zhang Yu felt the sensation of boundless strength coursing through his body, fueling his enthusiasm and energy. He began performing push-ups with great intensity. 
his heightened excitement and energy drove him to complete an impressive set of 104 push-ups. As Zhang Yu continued to engage in exaggerated exercises, the system suddenly alerted him that he had activated the dark form and entered the shadow layer. This revelation caused his shadow form to undergo a significant enhancement, with visible changes taking place right before his eyes. During his exercise session, Zhang Yu's shadow form began to transform due to the activation of the Dark Devourer aspect. This activation led to a slight increase in his physical strength, resulting in observable changes in his shadow layer. The system provided Zhang Yu with a comprehensive overview of his abilities, revealing a noticeable increase in his physical strength. With the gradual enhancement of his physical strength, Zhang Yu found himself capable of effortlessly performing an easy 1,000 push-ups in a single go. Not feeling entirely content with the cramped indoor training space, Zhang Yu reached a point where he decided that a change of scenery was good. With this thought in mind, he resolved to step outside and continue his exercise regimen in the open air. Zhang Yu swiftly transported himself to the exterior of the dark side of the world, taking in his surroundings. Zhang Yu couldn't help but wonder about the scenario if this were to happen in the real world. He pondered why there wouldn't be multiple individuals eager to step forward and become his disciples, considering the impressive abilities he had acquired. He then proceeded to grab hold of the steel bars on the playground, intending to engage in a workout session. Effortlessly maneuvering around the steel bars, he jokingly announced his intention to become the world champion in horizontal bar exercises. Meanwhile, Back at the night patrol headquarters, the people present gathered together with purpose and anticipation toward the scheduled conference meeting. This assembly reflected their commitment to convene and discuss important matters. Upon their arrival, the group of individuals proceeded to report to their superior, conveying that the range of fluctuations within this layer of darkness was unusually extensive on this occasion. Furthermore, they observed that the oscillations being experienced were outside the norm, displaying an abnormal pattern. Additionally, the pollution levels had notably surged and expanded across the entire area. Some night patrol squads even discovered similar cracks in the northern, southern, and eastern regions. These fluctuations were highly abnormal compared to the typical distribution pattern depicted on the frontline distribution map. Moreover, these fluctuations were found to be most concentrated within residential areas, raising concerns about the potential impact on local inhabitants. Upon hearing the reports, Lu Yao Yao's father appeared visibly unsettled and concerned. In the conference room, the air grew gradually still, punctuated by the occasional exchange of serious glances and thoughtful expressions. The reason for their gathering was to collectively address the increasingly pressing threats that had been unfolding in their midst over the past few weeks. Commander Lu's expression turned more serious as he realized that the situation was getting increasingly difficult to manage. The frequency of unusual and unexpected events had risen significantly, in the span of just a few days, a total of four abnormal and unsettling events had transpired, each involving individuals who had seemingly been inexplicably drawn into some kind of ominous or mysterious force. Commander Lu also dedicated time to examining the circumstances surrounding the recent death of the Night Watchman. He understood that the frequency of these incidents could potentially escalate. Additionally, Commander Lu thought about the fact that abyssal fissures were even more dangerous than disturbances in the shadow layer. He knew that these fissures could cause more harm and trouble. He even considered comparing the monsters in the shadow layer to the abyssal fissures. In this particular scenario involving powerful and fearsome creatures, the entities that emerged from the abyssal fissures resembled the iconic creature known as Godzilla, known for its immense size and destructive capabilities. Amidst the serious atmosphere of the conference, a man's voice broke the silence, urging everyone to take a moment and find joy amid their discussions. A night watchman who had lost an arm intervened during the conference, expressing that the concerns being discussed were mere suspicions and that there was no need for everyone to panic or act as if a catastrophe was imminent. The man continued to speak, emphasizing that their organization had been gearing up for combat for an extended period, which meant they shouldn't overly concern themselves with the current situation. He reassured everyone that their preparations were in place to handle future scenarios effectively. All eyes were on him and his words seemed to have a calming effect on everyone present. Commander Lu's expression softened into a smile, reflecting his appreciation for the reassuring words spoken by the man. The night watchmen visibly relaxed, and they exchanged smiles among themselves, their worries easing as they absorbed the encouraging words from the man. The man directed his fellow night watchmen to proceed with their reports, maintaining a sense of organization and focus within the conference. 
The man instructed the current speaker that once the report on all the incidents was completed, the conference would delve into discussing the list of night guards who had tragically lost their lives recently. Feeling the weight of discussions and responsibilities, Commander Liu took a brief moment to find solace in the quiet of his surroundings, gazing out from the vantage point of his building. Reaching into his pocket and retrieving a box of cigarettes. Calmly, he brought the lit cigarette to his lips as he stood there, gazing out at the city below. In Commander Liu's mind, the thought lingered that those causing trouble deliberately selected a time close to the new year to carry out their troublesome actions. Commander Liu's attention was abruptly diverted by something unusual catching his eye. As he directed his gaze toward the cigarette he was about to light, he realized that it wasn't a cigarette at all. Rather, it turned out to be a bundle of stick biscuits neatly arranged in the same packaging. Seeing the stick biscuits in place of his cigarettes, he immediately recognized that his daughter had once again replaced his cigarettes with these snacks, a playful act she had done before. A box of cigarettes was tossed toward him with precision. With lightning reflexes, he halted the box of cigarettes midair before it could make contact with him. His attention squarely fixed on the person who had casually thrown the box of cigarettes in his direction. The man who had lost an arm spoke up, his tone carrying a touch of lightness despite the seriousness of the situation. He urged Commander Lu not to always wear a stern expression, hinting that a bit of relaxation wouldn't hurt. Perhaps guessing that he might be in the mood for a smoke. Commander Lu calmly picked up the box from the ground. He declined the offer for a cigarette and instead enjoyed the stick biscuits his daughter had placed there. He appreciated the gesture but preferred to enjoy some stick biscuits that his daughter had placed instead. The man playfully shouted and joked with Commander Liu, asking if he was also concerned about getting lung cancer from smoking. Commander Liu firmly told the man to stop talking nonsense and get to the point. He knew that the man had been lingering around because he had something on his mind, so he urged him to speak up. The man paused momentarily, taking a puff from his cigarette before planning to speak. Upon hearing the man's message and understanding the nature of the proposal being raised once more, Commander Liu was noticeably surprised and taken aback. His face displayed a shade close to violet due to the shock and unexpectedness of the situation. After receiving this unexpected news and comprehending its implications, Commander Liu fell into a contemplative silence. When he heard about the situation, he seemed upset and wanted to know if the information was true or not. He asked the man if they were sure about what they heard. The man reminded Commander Liu that the information should have been sent to his computer as well, indicating that he should have already been aware of the details. In response to the man's reminder, Commander Liu swiftly proceeded to open his computer to check the emergency notification. As he opened his computer, he saw an emergency notification indicating that students in the second grade or higher in the Exceptional Supernatural Abilities category were required to take the Abilities Test and select Specialized Exceptional Abilities, unless under exceptional circumstances. While Commander Liu was reading the notification, the man inquired about his daughter's path and asked if he had already chosen her specialization. Commander Liu responded that he hadn't made a decision yet and would wait until after the abilities test. Commander Liu kindly reminded his comrade to broaden the conversation beyond their own families and proceeded to show interest in the younger male member of his comrade's family. Commander Liu began to doubt the honesty of his comrade's son and proceeded to inquire further about the young man's intentions. He asked whether the young man was leaning towards specializing in studying spiritual energies, delving into the realm of strange creatures, or focusing on physical superhuman abilities. Before responding to Commander Liu's question, the man took a puff from his cigarette. After releasing a puff of smoke, he responded to Commander Liu with a serious tone, stating that his son would not choose any of the options he mentioned earlier for specialization. Commander Liu initially assumed that the man wanted his son to focus on studying extraordinary human sciences. However, the man clarified that he intended for his son to pursue regular human sciences rather than the extraordinary sciences. Commander Liu expressed his thoughts to the man, stating that his statement seemed like a joke. He pointed out that it was too early for him to make such a claim about his son's abilities since they hadn't been tested yet. He considered the possibility that if his son did qualify for the test and passed it, he would be forced to select a specialized exceptional human science field. The man extinguished the light of his cigarette. Commander Liu's fellow night watchman companion mentioned that he had no intention of having his son undergo the test, which left Commander Liu feeling quite puzzled and curious about the reasons behind this decision. Commander Liu urged his comrade to communicate clearly, but the comrade simply brushed off the conversation and mentioned that he was going out for a walk, 
leaving Commander Liu to handle official matters at his own pace. As Commander Liu's comrade departed, a girl who was also a part of the headquarters staff entered and expressed her apologies for interrupting. However, Commander Liu promptly inquired about the reason for her visit. The girl approached Commander Liu and extended a document to him, explaining that she had just received a notification report from the Shadow Lair. Commander Liu swiftly took the document from the girl's hand and began examining its contents. His eyes scanned the report to quickly grasp the information it contained. The report provided a comprehensive overview of the recent activities in the Shadow Lair, focusing on a newly identified type of strange creature that had drawn the attention of the authorities over the past several days. The description of the creature in the report was highly detailed, depicting it as a respectful shadow. Its actions were characterized by intense and rigorous exercises. According to the report, the creature's physical appearance closely resembled a pitch-black shadow, blending seamlessly into its surroundings. The initial sighting of this entity took place within the Xingyu Residential Center's garden, where it was observed engaging in vigorous exercises. The report suggests that this creature might have accidentally entered the area. The report further notes that the shadow entity appeared to be not known to fatigue, displaying an enthusiastic dedication to exercising despite its rather eerie appearance. The shadow exhibited a low level of aggression, notably during an encounter when explorers cautiously approached the shadow. They were taken aback as the creature abruptly halted its exercise routine and extended a friendly greeting to them. The girl informed Commander Liu that the monitoring team had stumbled upon a peculiar being in the residential area. However, this entity didn't match any existing records in the database. Seeking his expertise, she had come to Commander Liu to seek his opinion on the matter. Upon careful examination of the detailed reports, Commander Liu was left in a state of confusion. He found himself deep in thought, contemplating its true nature and attempting to identify its identity from the available information. The moon was shining brightly, making everything look clear, but in the shadow lair, things were getting more polluted and dirtier. While holding his phone, Zhang Yu was capturing a video of a spider, and he enthusiastically shared with the viewers that the spider's body is packed with a bunch of proteins. What's intriguing is that it weighs quite a bit more than the same quantity of rice, showing how protein-dense it is. Zhang Yu, speaking into the recording, excitedly shared his insights about spider meat, noting that it's surprisingly tender and delicious with a high moisture content. He went on to explain that by applying intense heat, the spider's outer layer can be grilled, making it easier to get rid of the tiny hairs. Addressing the viewers, he emphasized that the taste is quite distinct. It doesn't quite resemble pork, beef, or lamb but has its unique flavor that's reminiscent of spider meat. With a satisfied smile, Zhang Yu reflected on the recording he had just made, realizing that there's a surprising number of people who find the snapshot from the Shadow Lair's scenery intriguing. He entertained the idea that when he shares the video of the spider he captured, it probably won't take long for the spider to gain fame on the internet due to its unique and captivating features. As Zhang Yu prepared to upload the video, he noticed a surge of content creators already producing content related to exceptional abilities. He couldn't help but ponder the fact that in the past, sharing such content with the public was not allowed. As, Zhang Yu was busy looking at his phone and lost in his thoughts, he was startled by the sudden appearance of the abyss system right in front of him. The unexpected presence of the abyss system caught him completely off guard, causing him to feel surprised and taken aback by its sudden appearance. Zhang Yu's attention was immediately drawn to the notification displayed by the abyss system. The message stated that if he failed to embark on a hunting mission, he would face dire consequences. The system's words were clear, urging him to embrace the role of a hunter and relish the act of hunting, all while aspiring to achieve a higher level that would make everyone tremble. Zhang Yu's frustration was evident as he expressed annoyance with the sudden appearance of the system. He couldn't help but wonder if the system had materialized solely to intimidate him with these ominous warnings. As he gazed at the system, he noticed something unexpectedly intriguing. When he glanced at the system, he was taken aback by the surprising revelation that his remaining lifespan had been reduced to a mere hundred hours. In the wake of this realization, he found himself contemplating the fact that he now had only 100 hours left to engage in hunting and ensure his survival. The system's display repeatedly revealed to Zhang Yu that his lifespan was now reduced to a mere 100 hours. As he absorbed this information, a sense of anxiety began to creep over him, and he even found himself turning slightly pale with a hint of blue. A sudden recollection surged through his mind as he remembered the caution he had encountered before opening the assassin website. 
It dawned on him that this situation must be the very risks they had been warning about, a realization that settled heavily in his thoughts. To regain his composure, Zhang Yu tried to ease his anxiety and avoid hastily jumping to conclusions. He reasoned with himself, understanding that there must be methods available to remedy the situation. He considered the warning he had encountered before accessing the assassin website, recalling the system's message that emphasized the necessity of going hunting to avoid death. Zhang Yu analyzed the situation and deduced that, based on the description provided, his role as a hunter meant he had to continue hunting to prolong his lifespan. Diligently reviewing the manual, Zhang Yu identified the crucial details that outlined his path forward. In deep contemplation, he recognized that the ultimate way to increase his lifespan resided in the act of hunting down and eliminating these unusual creatures that inhabited the world around him. He mulled over the intriguing notion that through relentless killing and an unyielding pursuit of these elusive creatures, he might even attain a state of immortality. However, he also felt confused when he read about the concept of existence in another form, even if his physical body were to disappear. As Zhang Yu pondered the potential positive outcomes of following the manual, he considered seeking assistance from Mr. Lai if he encountered a creature he couldn't defeat. Recalling the spider, he had previously recorded, he devised a plan to eliminate it and gain more time. He decided to record himself battling the spider, believing that sharing these videos could help him gain popularity, despite the prohibition. With his mindset, Zhang Yu underwent a remarkable transformation, becoming a formidable hunter who seamlessly blended with the shadows. Equipped with his cell phone, he activated the live video function and began broadcasting the situation, revealing his identity to the viewers. The audience grew as people tuned in, some amused by the sight, while others expressed skepticism about the reality of what they were witnessing. Moving cautiously, Zhang Yu approached the spider, urging his viewers to remain quiet and not startle the creature. Holding an iron stick tightly, he prepared to launch an attack. Surprisingly, the spider seemed completely unaware of his presence, as if he was invisible to its senses. Undeterred, Zhang Yu remained focused and ready to strike. However, despite his attempts to draw the spider's attention, it continued its activities, oblivious to Zhang Yu's presence. His shadow form prevented him from being noticed, leaving him frustrated and determined to find a way to engage the spider in battle. Growing increasingly frustrated, Zhang Yu watched as the spider continued its movements without any awareness of his presence, despite being right beside it. He marveled at the effectiveness of his shadow form, which allowed him to remain undetected even in such proximity to the spider. Determined, he decided to utilize his assassination skills to identify the spider's vulnerabilities. With determination, Zhang Yu strategically positioned himself directly in front of the spider, meticulously scanning its form until he pinpointed its weak spot. With his target identified, he aimed his weapon at the vulnerable point and prepared to strike. A grin appeared on his face as he imagined the impact of his attack on the unsuspecting creature. Meanwhile, the spider had been going about its usual activities, pausing to appreciate the peacefulness of the shadow layer and the relative absence of powerful creatures. It had recently engaged in a confrontation with another member of its species, sustaining injuries but securing a satisfying meal. Now seeking rest and recovery, the spider was preparing to settle down when it suddenly sensed an attack coming its way. Caught off guard and astonished, the spider was surprised to find that the attacker was a young child, which was unexpected in this situation. Confused, the spider surveyed its surroundings, unable to visually detect the presence of the attacker but sensing their existence. Realizing the need for a more secure resting place, the spider swiftly changed its position, seeking a protected location in the shadow lair. However, before it could reach a safer spot, it was once again taken by surprise as another attack struck unexpectedly. The shadowy surroundings reverberated with the spider's piercing scream, as the excruciating pain from Zhang Yu's attack coursed through its body. Caught off guard by the unexpected assault, the spider emitted a high-pitched cry of distress, its legs scrambling in a futile attempt to regain balance as it tumbled to the ground. The solid iron stick had been thrust deep into its body, inflicting severe damage. Zhang Yu felt a rush of exhilaration as he sensed the impact of his strike resonating within him, as if his shadow points were being drawn out, pulsating with power. This led him to contemplate the idea of strategically targeting certain areas to fully harness his potential. Shedding a significant amount of the spider's blood, Zhang Yu readied himself for another attack against the weakened creature. However, just as Zhang Yu prepared to strike, the spider unexpectedly launched a counterattack, catching him off guard. 
In a sudden turn of events, Zhang Yu found himself on the receiving end of the spider's aggressive blow, forcefully pushing him to the ground. Despite the impact, he managed to maintain his composure and chuckled, reassuring himself that he felt no pain. Unable to see Zhang Yu, the spider attempted to locate him by launching attacks in various directions, targeting potential blind spots. Zhang Yu, concealed in his shadow form, skillfully maneuvered and evaded the monstrous strikes while planning his own counter-attacks. Assessing the spider's condition, he felt a sense of satisfaction, knowing that his previous strike had accurately targeted a vital point, weakening the creature further. Formulating his next attack strategy against the now weakened spider, Zhang Yu summoned his shadow attack, undergoing a transformation that signaled his intent to deliver a more powerful strike. With swift and seamless movement, he seemingly vanished into thin air, only to reappear on the ground beneath the surface. From this hidden position, Zhang Yu maintained a keen awareness of the spider's movements above, concealed beneath the surface. Contemplating the capabilities of his shadow attack, Zhang Yu saw it as a stealthy technique, allowing him to navigate his adversary's defenses unharmed. Like a patient hunter in the forest, he bided his time, waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. In this moment, he realized that he would likely encounter various supernatural creatures in the future, each with their own unique traits and abilities. A smile formed on Zhang Yu's face as he embraced the notion that he had become a hunter, diligently tracking down and capturing his prey. Confidently, a man made his appearance on a live show through his phone, assuring the general public of their protection by the night patrol. During the broadcast, he introduced himself as a dedicated night patrol officer currently on duty, exuding an air of authority. He proceeded to share essential insights about low-level strange creatures, aiming to provide viewers with a basic understanding of these unique beings. While scrolling through her phone, a woman noticed another livestream featuring a woman who planned to guide her viewers to a hidden restaurant tucked away in an alleyway. She climbed onto her bed and continued scrolling, watching various live streams where people interacted with their audience in real time. Changing into more comfortable clothes, she settled into bed, eager to continue watching more live streams, hoping to find something interesting. However, she felt that there wasn't much exciting content lately as she scrolled through different streams, and boredom started to set in. Persisting in her browsing, she suddenly stumbled upon a broadcast that stood out from the rest due to its unique and intriguing nature, capturing her attention in a way the other streams hadn't. It was a live stream featuring someone named Zhang Yu, portraying a character named Yu from the northern capital. In the live stream, Zhang Yu discussed the concept of leveling up by eliminating gods and displayed a diverse range of peculiar creatures that inhabit the shadow layer, presenting them to his viewers. The young girl felt a rush of excitement, standing up on her bed as she had just caught sight of these peculiar creatures on the live video. Curiosity filled her mind as she wondered if what she was seeing was real or if it had been altered using editing techniques. In a previous live stream, Zhang Yu had an interesting segment where he showcased a spider, providing detailed information about its characteristics and habits, and showing it up close to the camera for everyone to see in great detail. While reading the comments on Zhang Yu's livestream, the woman found many of them unpleasant, with individuals putting on a facade and acting arrogantly online. This led her to feel disdain towards their behavior. Unexpectedly, Zhang Yu submerged himself beneath the ground's surface during the live stream, taking her by surprise. This sudden event left her feeling a mixture of astonishment and curiosity about what would unfold next. Feeling a strong sense of excitement due to the unfolding events in the livestream, she couldn't resist the urge to express her thoughts by leaving a comment. Zhang Yu effectively showcased his action of submerging beneath the surface to his viewers, further engaging them in the livestream. The result was a shared sense of surprise among all participants in the livestream, leading to an influx of comments expressing astonishment and reactions to the unexpected turn of events. In an attempt to showcase his approach, Zhang Yu leapt onto the spider and made another aggressive effort to interact with it. This action aimed to visually demonstrate his interaction with the spider to his viewers. Zhang Yu decided to once again employ his reliable solid iron stick as a formidable weapon. Summoning his strength, he unleashed a forceful kick, directing the iron stick towards the spider to inflict significant injury upon it. The spider emitted a distinct sound resembling a scream and displayed surprise at the suddenness of the attack it faced. Observing intently, Zhang Yu watched as the spider started moving in different directions, seemingly trying to determine the source of the attack. Its movements carried a sense of puzzlement as if it was determined to unravel the mystery of who had assaulted it. Exhibiting a surge of aggression, 
The spider launched attacks out of anger, attempting to retaliate against the perceived assailant hidden among its surroundings. After launching an attack in a specific direction, the spider briefly halted its movements, temporarily ceasing its actions. It waited for the smoke to dissipate, seemingly intending to resume its activities once visibility improved and the obstacle had cleared. However, upon directing its attention toward the location of its attack, the spider was surprised to realize that no individual had been injured or affected by its aggressive maneuver, he attempted to poke the spider, aiming to capture its awareness. The spider's reaction was one of surprise, evident in its sudden change in behavior in response to the unexpected touch. This touch seemed to come out of nowhere, causing the spider to visibly startle. The spider actively tried to identify the source of the touch. Zhang Yu formed a peace sign using his fingers, playfully mocking the spider's inability to locate him. Zhang Yu's movements were swift and precise, allowing him to gracefully evade all of the spider's attacks. With a hint of mockery and amusement, Zhang Yu couldn't help but laugh at the fact that the spider, despite its eight legs, failed to land a hit on him, leading her to believe it was too weak. The girl continued to observe Zhang Yu's ongoing interaction with the spider, keeping her focus on the unfolding scenario. She found their interaction to be a source of amusement and entertainment, settling in comfortably with her blanket for a cozy viewing experience. Her eyes filled with enthusiasm as she continued to watch Zhang Yu's encounter with the spider. She couldn't help but be impressed by the spider's remarkable speed and distinctive physical appearance, which captured her attention and fascinated her. In a sudden and dramatic turn of events, the spider released a burst of violet-hued poison from its body, clearly signaling its intent to direct this venomous assault towards Zhang Yu instead of choosing to escape, introducing a new element of danger and intrigue to their ongoing dynamic. The violet poison appeared to possess a potent effect. The spider unleashed its violet poison in all directions, effectively creating a toxic perimeter around its immediate vicinity. This strategic move left no opportunity for Zhang Yu to establish physical contact with the spider, as the poisonous barrier acted as a deterrent, preventing any close interaction. With an eerie demeanor, the spider emitted sounds resembling laughter as it continued to disperse its poison in various directions. In what could be inferred as the spider's contemplation, it seemed to entertain the idea that Zhang Yu might try to ensure his safety by immersing himself in a citric environment. However, despite the spider's initial assumption that Zhang Yu would be unable to evade the effects of the poison, its expectation was puzzled when it became apparent that Zhang Yu had successfully positioned himself on the highest part of a building, effectively elevating himself out of harm's way. Addressing the spider directly, Zhang Yu conveyed a simple yet profound statement, asserting that every location, regardless of where it may be, holds a presence of shadow. Without hesitation, Zhang Yu swiftly leapt off the building with remarkable speed, displaying a clear intent to launch a forceful charge toward the spider. The spider responded by swiftly executing its attack. With a rapid motion, the spider released its corrosive melting poison toward Zhang Yu, showcasing its readiness to defend itself against his approaching charge. However, Zhang Yu demonstrated remarkable agility and adaptability by deftly sidestepping the attack, employing what seemed to be a shadow form. He swiftly evaded the trajectory of the poison, effectively bypassing the harmful effects of the spider's assault. This transformation allowed him to seamlessly transition between positions, gripping his solid iron stick with determined strength. With his weapon infused with an electrifying aura, descending to the ground with purpose, Zhang Yu closed the distance between himself and the spider, positioning himself for a close-range strike timed perfectly to coincide with the spider's attempted attack. Seizing the opportune moment, he executed his assault. With a surge of aggression, he forcefully thrust his weapon, the solid iron stick, into the spider's mouth, penetrating its head with determination. The result was a piercing action that elicited an eerie and chilling scream from the spider, underscoring the intensity of the moment. Lying prone on the ground, Zhang Yu exerted his strength, forcefully driving the iron stick through the spider's head in an aggressive manner. Following the forceful penetration of the spider's head, Zhang Yu found himself drenched in a combination of blood and poison, a result of the intense encounter. The passage of time, marked by the gradual ticking of minutes, brought about a considerable interval since the intense clash had unfolded. Over this duration, the spider's existence came to an end as it succumbed to its wounds and ceased all manifestations of vitality. With the spider's demise as the backdrop, Zhang Yu harnessed a unique ability known as the shadow swallowing technique. This maneuver was employed to record the spider's data within the system, potentially earning valuable points. Upon invoking the shadow swallowing ability, 
Zhang Yu swiftly initiated the process of assimilating not only the physical remains of the spider but also its inherent abilities. The ability efficiently absorbed the spider's flashing capabilities. Upon the successful completion of the absorption process, Zhang Yu experienced a distinct surge of energy emanating from within him. This sensation was accompanied by a profound sense of relief as the arduous task of hunting the spider had finally drawn to a close. In the aftermath of the absorption process, a curious development unfolded. A piece of cloth materialized, seemingly as a result of the spider's assimilation. Eager to communicate the conclusion of his hunting expedition, he turned his attention to his viewers and made a direct announcement, ensuring that his audience was well informed about the successful conclusion of his hunt. As the viewers witnessed Zhang Yu's triumph over the spider, reducing it to a mere skeletal form, a wave of admiration and praise swept through the audience. Many among them expressed their admiration for his prowess, lauding his achievement in vanquishing the creature. However, some couldn't help but draw parallels to superhero movies due to the surreal and almost implausible nature of the battle. Clutching her phone closely, a girl felt a surge of amazement wash over her as she witnessed Zhang Yu's incredible prowess. The experience left her thoroughly impressed by his remarkable abilities and actions. In just this initial interaction, she found herself becoming an ardent admirer of Zhang Yu, already establishing herself as a devoted fan. With her eyes radiating excitement, the girl was captivated by Zhang Yu's content, finding it immensely thrilling. She remarked that it had been quite some time since she had come across something as exhilarating and engaging as what Zhang Yu was offering through his content. Prompted by her enthusiasm, the girl wasted no time in navigating to Zhang Yu's account. In her thoughts, she recognized the compelling nature of his content and made a firm decision to become a follower. The girl took action by clicking the follow button, recognizing that she had stumbled upon an entertainer as captivating as Zhang Yu. Swiftly taking the initiative, the girl sent a private message to Zhang Yu, inquiring whether she had the option to contribute an additional star to the assassination mission, coupled with the promise of a high reward. The system revealed to Zhang Yu that the creature he had defeated belonged to the category of an ancient demon, specifically classified as a first-class low-level entity. Accompanying this classification was a detailed description that outlined the attributes and nature of the monster. The lines adorning the spider's body served as indicators of its power, with denser and more intricate patterns corresponding to a higher degree of spiritual pollution. The system cautioned Zhang Yu about creatures of this kind, advising against prolonged direct gazes unless adequately prepared to risk becoming their target. Additionally, the system provided a comprehensive list of the spider's various abilities, offering a thorough overview of its capabilities. Furthermore, the system detailed the rewards Zhang Yu obtained following the successful absorption of the spider. Among these rewards, he acquired a valuable item called Shadow Silk, which held its unique significance. Moreover, this encounter contributed to an increase in Zhang Yu's shadow points. Upon reviewing the comprehensive information provided by the system, Zhang Yu felt a little disappointed. He realized that the creature he had confronted and vanquished was categorized as a lower-ranking ordinary monster, contrasting with his initial perception of having overcome a formidable and powerful opponent. As he contemplated the circumstances more deeply, Zhang Yu realized that there remained a significant disparity between his abilities and those of the creatures he encountered. This insight became particularly apparent to him when he reflected on the moment he acquired the shadow attack ability. Concluding his examination of the system's information, Zhang Yu proceeded to check his account where he had conducted the earlier live stream. He couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction upon observing the substantial number of engaged viewers watching his content. Making a deliberate choice, Zhang Yu decided that his live session for the day had finished, intending to leave a sense of suspense lingering and pique the curiosity and interest of his audience, setting the stage for their anticipation of his upcoming live stream. Abruptly, Zhang Yu found himself taken aback by an unexpected occurrence. Black lines materialized and began to hover in his hands, bearing a striking resemblance to a web. These lines unveiled their true nature as they expanded and reached out to establish connections with the surrounding building. Zhang Yu's emotions oscillated between surprise and confusion as he grappled with the unexpected turn of events. The web-like lines that had established connections with the building exerted a forceful tug on him, exerting a powerful and relentless force that compelled him to pause and contemplate the unfolding situation. As he was drawn closer by this formidable pull, he found himself immersed in the moment, he let out a shout of exhilaration, followed by laughter. The sensation of being drawn by the lines led him to playfully compare himself to Spider-Man, 
the iconic fictional character known for similar feats of web-slinging and agile movement. Lacking control over his movements, Zhang Yu's body forcefully collided with the wall due to the relentless pull of the web-like lines. The impact left visible marks on the surface, indicating the force of the collision. Once severed from the influence of the lines, Zhang Yu found himself unable to maintain control over his body, leading to an uncontrolled descent that ended in a fall. Zhang Yu swiftly maneuvered and positioned himself atop. A nearby lamppost with nimble agility, working to regain his balance and prevent a fall. Seated atop the lamppost, Zhang Yu took a moment to access the system interface, where he examined various details, including his remaining lifespan. To his surprise, he observed that only three days had been added to his remaining lifespan. Deep in contemplation, Zhang Yu considered the reality that encounters with creatures like these were likely to be infrequent, given the limited time frame he had left. This realization raised concerns about the potential challenges he might face in his pursuit if he was unable to locate these creatures in time. Amid his contemplative thoughts, Zhang Yu's attention was abruptly captured by a notification from the system. The message informed him that his role as the hidden hunter in the shadows had contributed to a boost in his fame, which would bring about unforeseen rewards. Moreover, the expansion of his reputation had a cascading effect, unlocking certain hunter powers that had previously been inaccessible to him. The system's notification included an intriguing addition. Zhang Yu possessed the ability to mark his prey, a skill designed to identify their vulnerabilities and capitalize on them. This marking process would subject the targeted prey to negative effects, potentially inducing sensations like palpitations and fear. However, only one target could be marked at a time, and the mark itself lasted for only one second. Alongside this empowering information, the system issued an important note that activating the mark came at the cost of consuming a specific amount of energy. Additionally, using this ability could inadvertently expose Zhang Yu's location to the marked prey, triggering their caution and heightened awareness. The system emphasized that capturing the marked prey would grant Zhang Yu agility and strength, and a successful hunt would enhance one of his traits and abilities. In a comprehensive explanation, the system clarified that engaging in hunting activities did not impose any associated costs. Importantly, the duration of the hunting period aligned with the duration of the mark itself, creating a designated hunting time. Zhang Yu had the task of successfully eliminating the marked prey, which would result in the enhancement of his negative reputation or status. Zhang Yu found himself lost in thought, contemplating the potential connection between the recent unveiling of his enhanced abilities and the ongoing expansion of his negative reputation. Amidst this contemplation, he couldn't help but wonder about the origins of this negative reputation, reflecting on when it first began to take shape. Suddenly, a realization dawned upon Zhang Yu as he considered the possibility that his negative reputation might have originated from the recent livestream he had conducted. The thought crossed his mind that the events and actions showcased during that particular broadcast could have been a catalyst for the development of his unfavorable reputation. This realization brought a smile to Zhang Yu's face, as he recognized the sequence of activities, including hunting, video editing, live streaming, and the unlocking and accumulation of new skills, that had led to an unforeseen surge in his abilities and physical prowess. After a significant period of reflecting and processing the gathered information, Zhang Yu ultimately made a decision. He resolved to dedicate additional effort and time to his pursuits on that particular day, driven by a desire to take on more tasks and responsibilities beyond his usual routine. Standing above the lamppost, Zhang Yu searched for potential targets, surveying his surroundings with an intent gaze. During his exploration, with his keen eyes, Zhang Yu detected a solitary creature that met his criteria. With swift and decisive action, he swiftly identified a suitable target and promptly proceeded to mark it using his newfound ability. Zhang Yu wasted no time in initiating his pursuit, moving swiftly as he readied himself for the hunt ahead. His face lit up with a big smile, clearly showing his excitement for the upcoming hunt. This new adventure had him eager and enthusiastic, looking forward to the thrill and excitement it would bring. With the hunt now behind him, Zhang Yu embarked on the journey back to his dwelling, feeling a sense of fulfillment from his triumph, which fueled his steps. However, he was taken by surprise as he felt Lu Yao Yao's remarkable energy and determination while she carefully tended to his wounds. Zhang Yu directed his gaze towards Lu Yao Yao and couldn't help but voice his concern, expressing that her actions had caused him discomfort and brought about a sensation of pain. Disregarding Zhang Yu's complaint, Lu Yao Yao proceeded to question him, her curiosity evident as she inquired about his lack of honesty. 
She further pressed him on why he hadn't chosen to remain at home for recovery, suggesting that his recent state might be indicative of yet another confrontation or conflict with someone. Liu Yao Yao offered her assistance to Zhang Yu, helping him apply ointment to his wounds in the comfort of his living room. Her concern for his well-being was evident, driving her to provide support and care for his injuries. Zhang Yu candidly expressed the need for caution while she tended to his wounds and shared with her that he had ventured outside to be a hero. He emphasized that he preferred her not to speak unless she fully understood the context of his actions and situation. Liu Yao Yao appeared skeptical of Zhang Yu's explanation and voiced her doubts. She questioned the idea of Zhang Yu being a hero constantly adorned with injuries, prompting her to inquire about the specific type of hero he had in mind. With a direct and honest gesture, Liu Yao Yao moved the cotton ball from Zhang Yu's nose, reflecting her straightforward approach. She expressed her viewpoint without hesitation, suggesting that she saw his actions as mere displays meant to draw attention, lacking any real skills to back up his claims. Under his breath, Zhang Yu muttered that he could easily heal his injuries using his shadow form, but he intentionally chose not to heal them right away. He revealed that his purpose was to have Liu Yao Yao assist him in applying the medicine, a fact he hadn't openly shared until now. With curiosity in her voice, Liu Yao Yao directed a question towards Zhang Yu, seeking to understand the nature of his murmuring and self-talk. She wondered about the content of his whispered words and prompted him to shed light on the thoughts he had been expressing in his seemingly self-talk. Zhang Yu reassured Liu Yao Yao that his murmurs held no significant meaning and were of no consequence. He then shifted the topic and inquired whether there were any interesting movies available for them to watch. He suggested the idea of actively searching for an engaging movie to watch together, emphasizing the notion of sharing an enjoyable cinematic experience. Opening her phone, Liu Yao Yao responded to Zhang Yu's inquiry by conveying that there had been a lack of good movies recently and that the available options had been of poor quality. However, she countered her previous statement by revealing that she had come across an intriguing YouTuber worth watching. This YouTuber had managed to capture her interests. Intrigued by Liu Yao Yao's mention of the YouTuber, Zhang Yu expressed his interest in learning more about this content creator and their channel. Liu Yao Yao held up her phone, offering Zhang Yu a closer look at the screen as she showcased the YouTuber she had mentioned earlier. She highlighted that this particular content creator had gained significant attention and fame due to the captivating nature of their content, suggesting that their videos were resonating with a wide audience. Liu Yao Yao proceeded to show Zhang Yu the YouTuber named, Yu, who introduced themselves as a memory loss assassin operating from the shadows. Zhang Yu's reaction was one of surprise, causing him to inadvertently spit out the water he had in his mouth when Liu Yao Yao revealed the YouTuber's account to him. Perplexed by Zhang Yu's sudden and surprising reaction, Liu Yao Yao voiced her confusion and inquired about the reason behind his behavior. Observing his apparent excitement, she couldn't help but wonder what had prompted such an enthusiastic reaction from him. Responding with a smile of her own, Liu Yao Yao informed him that the assassin had managed to capture an impressive level of attention and recognition within just two days. This enigmatic figure had risen to become the most popular supernatural blogger, garnering a remarkable following and even securing a coveted spot on the trending list of content. Adopting an air of feigned innocence, Zhang Yu posed a question to Liu Yao Yao, wondering aloud if it was considered unlawful to disclose information about supernatural knowledge privately. He contemplated the possibility of drawing the attention of the enigmatic night watchman, a thought sparked by his concern that his newfound fame might attract their notice at an unexpectedly rapid pace. With a straightforward explanation, Liu Yao Yao articulated to Zhang Yu that it's typically best to disclose only the fundamental and crucial aspects of such subjects and not the core knowledge. In doing so, she highlighted the importance of discretion when sharing information related to supernatural matters. Continuing the conversation, Liu Yao Yao took the initiative to show Zhang Yu an authentic combat video featuring the actions of the enigmatic assassin in a confrontation with mutants. She reached out and firmly grasped Zhang Yu's shoulder, drawing herself closer to him in an almost instinctive manner. While maintaining her hold on his shoulders and drawing nearer to Zhang Yu, Liu Yao Yao extended her phone toward him in a considerate gesture. She informed him that he had the option to follow the enigmatic assassin's content, recognizing his interest in supernatural things. Zhang Yu's demeanor shifted into one of seriousness as he focused his gaze on Liu Yao Yao with a purposeful expression. He turned his attention to the videos she was sharing, which featured the enigmatic assassin's content as well as a fan creation crafted by another blogger. A sense of contentment washed over Zhang Yu, 
evident in the smile that graced his lips as he gazed at Lu Yao Yao. Observing the genuine happiness radiating from her as she watched the recent videos, he couldn't help but share in her joy. It brought him a sense of contentment, knowing that she was delighted, and that, in turn, contributed to his happiness. Rising from her seat, Lu Yao Yao took a moment to playfully express her thoughts and feelings to Zhang Yu. She posed a hypothetical scenario, suggesting the idea of recording and uploading her videos. She asked him if he believed that she might achieve popularity and recognition similar to what the popular assassin had garnered. In a playful jest, Zhang Yu humorously speculated about the kind of content Lu Yao Yao might create. He quipped that she could potentially record herself dancing while dressed in a jacket outfit within the shadow lair. Blushing slightly, Lu Yao Yao playfully told Zhang Yu to go away and teased him for his suggestion. She then revealed her actual plans, sharing that she intended to record videos where she explained various supernatural concepts. Zhang Yu posed a question to Lu Yao Yao, inquiring if she believed that she could contend with more experienced individuals in the night patrol solely by acquiring information and reading up on supernatural topics. He gestured towards attire and advised her against dressing in such a manner when venturing outside. He cautioned her that wearing such clothes could potentially make her a target for stalkers or unwanted attention. Zhang Yu's expression took on an eerie quality as he gazed at Lu Yao Yao, his smile carrying an unsettling undertone as he told her that last time, he lost one. Lu Yao Yao's reaction shifted to a slightly apprehensive one, her curiosity piqued by Zhang Yu's cryptic statement about losing someone. As Zhang Yu momentarily looked away, Lu Yao Yao acted swiftly and discreetly produced a gun from her possession, much to Zhang Yu's astonishment. Lu Yao Yao's actions took an unexpected and startling turn as she promptly raised the gun and aimed it at his back. With the gun now trained on him, Lu Yao Yao confronted Zhang Yu directly, her voice tinged with a mixture of seriousness and curiosity. She questioned whether his injuries were a result of engaging in confrontations due to his alleged habit of stalking girls who dressed in JK outfits. Reacting swiftly, Zhang Yu instinctively raised his hand in a gesture of surrender. He quickly clarified to Lu Yao Yao that his previous statement had been made in jest, emphasizing that he was merely joking and that there was no truth to the implication. Despite Zhang Yu's clarification, Lu Yao Yao maintained her position, keeping the gun directed towards him. Her tone remained firm as she expressed uncertainty about the accuracy of his explanation, indicating that she wasn't entirely convinced by his words. In a tone laced with sarcasm, Zhang Yu mockingly requested that Lu Yao Yao spare him, playfully addressing her as, Officer Lu. However, Lu Yao Yao remained resolute in her stance, firmly rejecting his request and insisting that she wouldn't let him off the hook. She decided to impose her form of punishment by making him cook for her. With a sense of relief washing over him, Zhang Yu sank back onto his sofa in the living room after Lu Yao Yao had departed. Turning his attention toward his phone, he exhaled audibly, feeling a sense of relief now that he was no longer under Lu Yao Yao's watchful gaze. With a brief moment to himself, he engaged with his device, scrolling through its contents to access his private messages on his YouTuber account. He was eager to see what interactions and communications awaited him. As he looked at the private messages, Zhang Yu's gaze fell upon a considerable number of them, prompting a sense of admiration for the abundance of interactions that had increased within such a brief period. This realization led him to contemplate that he was becoming more popular. While engrossed in reading the private, Messages and comments, Zhang Yu's attention was captivated by something that struck him as unusual among the messages and comments. A recurring theme emerged, with several individuals asserting that Zhang Yu's true identity had been uncovered and accusing him of being a fraud. These messages belittled his achievements and unfavorably compared him to the other night patrol members. As Zhang Yu read through these messages, he was taken aback by the hostility and negativity directed toward him, leaving him surprised and uncertain. Unsure of how to process these hurtful comments, he discovered from the messages that his supposed exposure had led to the creation of a video. Curiosity piqued, he clicked on the provided link to access the video and see its contents firsthand. Upon clicking the video, Zhang Yu was greeted by an introduction from an individual identifying himself as, Real Deal. The presenter of the video proclaimed his intention to guide viewers towards an exploration of the truth, rather than the conventional exploration of shops. This enigmatic statement left Zhang Yu both intrigued and puzzled, sparking his curiosity to delve further into the content. As Real Deal showcased the video, he effectively presented it as evidence to support his claims. With a confident tone, 
Real Deal asserted that Zhang Yu's identity was a sham and that the videos produced by the supposed assassin were far from genuine. This revelation challenged the authenticity of Zhang Yu's content and left him grappling with the realization that his reputation had been called into question. Real Deal's presentation took a specific turn as he analyzed the video depicting Zhang Yu in combat against the spider. Real Deal pointed out what he believed to be evidence of editing, citing discrepancies such as the presence of two frames and a lack of continuity in the footage. By highlighting these aspects, Real Deal aimed to cast doubt on the authenticity of the video, suggesting that it had been manipulated or edited. Continuing his analysis, Real Deal further scrutinized the background of the spider encounter in the video. He pointed out that the background had been edited to cover elements that appeared unrealistic or implausible. This observation further contributed to Real Deal's argument that the video had been manipulated to create a false narrative. While observing Real Deal's video, a sense of skepticism began to creep over Zhang Yu. He couldn't help but feel that Real Deal's motives were rooted in exploiting his popularity. Zhang Yu suspected that Real Deal might be attempting to capitalize on his recent trending status and gain attention for himself by casting doubt on Zhang Yu's credibility. In a surprising twist, Real Deal revealed himself to be an actual member of the Night Patrol, asserting that his actions were motivated by a genuine desire to expose the truth. He claimed that his knowledge as a real Night Patrol member enabled him to identify Zhang Yu as a pretender, referring to him as a clown. Real Deal's declaration solidified his position and intentions, painting Zhang Yu as an imposter in the eyes of those watching the video. As Yun Yu continued to watch the video, his curiosity led him to scroll down and read the comments posted by viewers. Perusing the comments section, he noticed a variety of reactions from viewers. Some individuals were engaged in heated debates discussing the possibility of editing his videos, while others vehemently defended his reputation. In response to the comments and debates unfolding before him, Yun Yu couldn't help but let out a knowing smirk. He recognized that he had little control over the situation and chose to adopt a passive stance, allowing people to voice their opinions freely. He was aware that the discussions would continue regardless of his involvement. Deciding to take a step back and refrain from further engagement, he opted to leave the matter as it was. Eager to address the doubts surrounding his videos, got up from his seat and stretched his body, a gesture of readiness driven by a strong desire to validate the authenticity of his content. He resolved to embark on a hunt, determined to offer concrete evidence that would dispel the notion of his videos being fabricated. Before setting out on his hunt, Yun Yu's lips curved into a confident smile as a strategic thought crossed his mind. Amidst the surge of negative comments and the feeling of being exploited by Real Deal's content, his determination grew stronger. Fueled by a desire to counter the backlash and prove his authenticity, he felt an increasing eagerness to venture into the Shadow Lair. Amid his determination, he reached his destination, the Shadow Lair. It was the place where he intended to begin his hunt, with the anticipation of proving himself and dispelling the doubts surrounding his abilities. Equipped with a miniature camera, he entered the Shadow Lair with a specific goal in mind, to capture his actions up close and provide undeniable evidence of his authenticity. He intended to film his endeavors in detail, capturing every moment of his hunt as he aimed to demonstrate the legitimacy of his abilities and content. In his shadow form, Yun Yu skillfully integrated the miniature camera into his right chest, seamlessly blending it into his being. This strategic placement allowed him to capture the footage from a unique perspective while maintaining his fluid movements and shadow abilities. During the hunt, surveying his surroundings within the shadow lair, Yun Yu noted a noticeable decrease in the presence of unusual creatures compared to the previous day. This phenomenon was due to the shadow lair's inherent nature of resetting after a specific time. With a clear objective in mind, he prepared to engage in the pursuit and capture of this chosen creature. Among the various creatures in his vicinity, Yun Yu's discerning eyes locked onto a particular entity that seemed to exhibit behavior indicative of an ambush strategy. The creature's posture and demeanor suggested a readiness to pounce on other mutants, possibly in an attempt to gain an advantage. This observation piqued Yun Yu's interest, motivating him to consider this creature as a potential target for his hunt. Reacting swiftly to the situation at hand, he swiftly held his weapon and prepared to engage in a battle. Armed and ready, Yun Yu positioned himself for the impending confrontation with the identified creature. His determination was evident as he poised himself to face the challenge head-on, with a resolute mindset and unwavering determination. Taking the first step toward demonstrating his skills and authenticity, he deliberately moved forward. 
Yung Yu entered the building with a clear intent to engage his chosen target. With a calculated leap, he aimed to maneuver through the environment, utilizing his agility and shadow abilities to gain an advantageous position. As his foot made contact with the surface, he looked upward and revealed the towering height of the building before him. Facing the daunting height of the building, Yung Yu felt a tremor of apprehension run through his body. The towering structure seemed to evoke a sense of unease within him, causing his body to shake involuntarily. Deciding that jumping was too risky, he chose to use the stairs instead, he realized that taking a more straightforward path would be safer and more practical, allowing him to make his way up the building step by step. This way, he could continue his hunt while minimizing the danger posed by the height. Descending from the elevated vantage point, Yung Yu's gaze fixed upon a particular creature that lay within proximity. The creature's proximity was striking, and he found himself approaching it with a mix of caution and intrigue. Upon closer inspection, his attention was immediately drawn to the curious objects within its mouth. These peculiar items held an air of mystery, causing him to focus his gaze on the creature's oral cavity with a mixture of interest and uncertainty. Spotting the creature and recognizing its potential significance, Yung Yu swiftly activated his ability, summoning the mark that would enable him to gain insight into its weaknesses and potential vulnerabilities. Following the activation of his mark, Yung Yu observed a subtle change in the creature's behavior. There was a discernible shift in its demeanor, as if it had become aware of the mark's presence or had sensed something unusual in its surroundings. Carefully observing the creature's immediate response, Yung Yu couldn't help but deduce that his mark had indeed taken effect. The creature's sudden shift from its previous demeanor to one of fear and apprehension served as a clear indicator that his ability had successfully influenced its emotional state. As Yung Yu observed the creature's actions, he noticed its heightened state of alertness and its efforts to detect his presence. The creature's behavior indicated that it was actively searching for his whereabouts, likely in response to the mark he had placed upon it. While closely studying the creature, a sense of recognition and familiarity washed over Yung Yu. He realized that this creature resembled the scythe monster he had encountered previously, albeit in an evolved and more formidable form. Taking a decisive stance, he prepared himself for the upcoming encounter. With unwavering determination, he engaged in a confrontation that would test his abilities, agility, and strategic prowess. He lunged into action, launching an attack on the evolved scythe monster with precise and calculated movements. Yung Yu's relentless assault caused a significant decrease in the health points of the evolved scythe monster, dwindling it to just 45% of its initial strength. As the creature attempted to escape the intensity of their ongoing confrontation, Yung Yu responded swiftly, intercepting its retreat and preventing it from regaining its footing and gaining distance. His determination to maintain the upper hand and prevent the monster from regrouping or devising a counter strategy was evident in his forceful step forward. With a keen understanding of the dynamics at play, Yung Yu capitalized on the situation and initiated the next phase of the hunt. He felt stronger and faster as he confronted the monster directly, thanks to his improved agility and strength. With confidence, he attacked the creature head-on, aiming to weaken its defenses and gain an advantage, showcasing his newfound skills. However, the creature's unexpected maneuver caught Yung Yu off guard, leaving him puzzled and curious about its plan. It put him at a disadvantage, but his quick reflexes allowed him to evade the monster's attack, propelling himself away from the vulnerable position. Anticipating the impending attack, he took evasive action to avoid the oncoming assault and regain control of the battle. Poised for another strike, Yung Yu prepared to launch a counterattack against the creature. Suddenly, the creature's mouth underwent a puzzling transformation, grabbing his focus and arousing his curiosity. Its wide-stretched jaws resembled a gaping maw on the verge of unleashing a powerful force. Aware of the imminent danger, Yung Yu adjusted his posture to a defensive position, bracing himself for the creature's impending attack. The creature unleashed a sequence of peculiar and unsettling sounds, causing dizziness and disorientation in anyone within its vicinity. These unsettling sounds affected Yung Yu's senses, leaving him disoriented. Suddenly, menacing claws materialized before him, swiftly attacking and causing him harm. Taken by surprise, Yung Yu was left vulnerable and astonished by the effectiveness of the monster's attack, depleting 34 of his health points. Lost in thought, Yung Yu suddenly realized that the creature was charging at him with great speed. Assessing its behavior, he recognized it as a nimble yet fragile assassin-type creature capable of dealing high damage. 
Contemplating the challenging nature of the battle, Yun Yu understood the need for a strategic approach to overcome the formidable monster before him. Despite the side-wielding creature's relentless attempts to launch an attack, Yun Yu utilized his shadow form to gain a distinct advantage. Effortlessly teleporting through the shadows with deft agility, he evaded every strike the creature attempted. His mastery of the shadow form proved to be an effective defense, rendering the creature's attacks futile. With a strategic approach in mind, Yun Yu intentionally revealed only half of his body, luring the creature into coming closer. Astonishingly, his carefully planned strategy remained concealed until that moment. With determination in his eyes, Yun Yu channeled his energy into a clenched fist, positioning himself close to the formidable monster. He aimed to deliver a powerful punch that would leave a lasting impact, showcasing his intense focus and sheer determination. A triumphant smile graced Yun Yu's lips as he witnessed the success of his well-executed plan. The creature fell for his ruse and drew closer, allowing him to strike at close range with his forceful punch. Exploiting the creature's momentary confusion, Yun Yu swiftly continued his assault, taking advantage of the element of surprise. He launched a rapid and aggressive series of strikes from all sides, overwhelming the creature and weakening its defenses. However, amidst the flurry of attacks, the creature devised a strategy of its own, attempting to counter Yun Yu's relentless assault. Reacting swiftly and decisively, Yun Yu intensified his assault, using powerful strikes and forceful punches to subdue the creature and prevent it from utilizing its power in defense or retaliation. With remarkable speed and determination, he closed the distance between himself and the creature, launching a barrage of rapid punches at its vulnerable form. The creature, still reeling from Yun Yu's previous blows, was unable to mount an effective defense as the relentless assault continued. Under the force of Yun Yu's unwavering determination, the creature's defenses crumbled, and it staggered under the onslaught. Zhang Yu positioned himself for the culmination of his assault, preparing to deliver a final powerful strike that would likely result in the creature's demise. However, amid his determined motion, his actions were abruptly halted and he found himself rendered motionless. An unfamiliar and startling voice emerged from the creature's form, commanding an authoritative, compelling Zhang Yu to suspend his impending action and remain frozen. With astonishment filling his eyes, Zhang Yu listened to the creature's spoken words, sensing a familiarity he couldn't immediately place. As he gazed intently at the creature, its features triggered a sense of recognition within him. Gradually, he pieced together the resemblance and realized that the creature before him bore a striking similarity to the night watchman who had died in the shadow lair. The creature's deteriorating health and its eventual demise deepened Zhang Yu's surprise, as he witnessed the twisted transformation of the night watchman within the shadow lair. Perplexed and consumed by his thoughts, Zhang Yu wondered how this transformation had occurred. He had believed that the night patrol had taken the watchman, yet here stood a creature of the shadows. Caught off guard by his astonishment, Zhang Yu found himself momentarily paralyzed, allowing the creature to slip away and evade his intended attack. Confusion and bewilderment washed over him as the creature swiftly eluded his grasp, leaving him futilely shouting for it to halt and end its escape. Determined to unravel the mystery behind the creature's transformation and its connection to the night watchman, Zhang Yu raced after the fleeing entity. His exhaustion was evident, but his resolve remained unwavering, propelling him forward in pursuit. After a prolonged chase that left him breathless and fatigued, Zhang Yu let out a sigh of exhaustion, realizing the toll it had taken on his body. Experiencing a moment of pause, he found himself momentarily frozen, overcome by the fatigue that had accumulated during the pursuit. Recognizing the futility of trying to catch up with the monstrously fast creature, Zhang Yu came to a halt, allowing it to escape his pursuit. He took a moment to catch his breath, feeling the strain of the chase and the toll it had exacted on his body. The system alerted Zhang Yu that upon entering the shadow lair, he had successfully identified a potential prey. It further informed him that the process of confirming the prey's identity as a hunter was underway. Zhang Yu felt excitement surge within him as the system projected a future hunt, where he could visualize the satisfaction of a triumphant kill. Despite the system's alert about the presence of potential prey in the shadow lair, Zhang Yu chose to continue walking forward, seemingly unfazed by the opportunity for a hunt. However, he received a notification from the system indicating that the potential prey had managed to escape. The system conveyed the unfortunate news that the hunt was deemed unsuccessful due to Zhang Yu's decision not to initiate the hunt or target the fleeing creature. Lost in his thoughts and wandering through the shadow lair, Zhang Yu appeared oblivious to the repeated warnings from the system. Despite the system's attempts to alert him, 
he continued to ignore the fact that his frequent hunt failures could result in a weakening of his strength and a reduction in his remaining lifespan. The system's reminders persistently echoed in Zhang Yu's mind, even without him voicing his thoughts. The message from the system was clear that consistent hunting had the potential to extend his lifespan and enhance his strength over time. As Zhang Yu's demeanor took on a somber tone following the unexpected transformation of the night watchman into an unfamiliar creature, the system keenly detected a blend of anger and melancholy in his emotional state. Sensing his disheartenment, the system posed a direct inquiry, seeking to ascertain whether Zhang Yu was considering the possibility of relinquishing his pursuit of hunting. In the absence of a response from Zhang Yu, the system persisted in its attempts to communicate, its voice becoming increasingly insistent and direct. It bluntly conveyed to him that if he chose to forsake the path of hunting, he would essentially be resigning himself to a fate of waiting for his inevitable demise. Fueled by frustration and a growing sense of anger, Zhang Yu's emotions reached a boiling point. Unable to tolerate the persistent repetition of the system's words, he unleashed his pent-up emotions by forcefully punching the interface of the system. With a stern and serious tone, Zhang Yu addressed the system, conveying his firm request for it to cease its relentless urging and refrain from repeating the same words. His words carried a weight of determination and a hint of frustration, underscoring his desire for the system to respect his emotions and decisions in that moment. In a sudden pause, Zhang Yu found himself immersed in contemplation. His thoughts swirled around the weight of the burden and the circumstances that the night watchman must have faced. As his mind delved into this reflection, he felt a sense of empathy and understanding for the night watchman's situation. Zhang Yu's mind stirred with careful consideration as he pondered the fate of the night watchman. He couldn't help but feel a sense of pity and compassion for the individual who had once been a hero, bravely saving lives, only to be transformed into a strange and unknown creature. The irony of the situation weighed heavily on his thoughts, stirring a mixture of emotions within him. Zhang Yu came to a momentary pause, his thoughts briefly directed towards his own circumstances. As he stared at his reflection on the wall, he found himself surrounded by a growing sense of negativity. It was as if his thoughts were forming a cloud of doubt and uncertainty, casting a shadow over his usual determination and confidence. The thought crossed Zhang Yu's mind if he would end up like the night watchman, transforming into a monster after death. The uncertainty of his fate gnawed at him, raising questions about the consequences of his actions and the path he was currently treading. Firmly clenching his fist, Zhang Yu pushed aside the negativity and resolved to stay committed to his current path, determined not to look back or waver in his purpose. With renewed determination and a resolute effort to cast aside any lingering negativity, Zhang Yu's eagerness to press forward with his hunt grew stronger. Brimming with resolve, he embarked on a new hunting expedition, heading towards the cloud-gathering spot located in Easy Zone 1, known as the Wasteland. His unwavering determination fueled his steps as he moved forward, ready to face whatever challenges awaited him in his pursuit of prey. Upon reaching the designated location, Zhang Yu found himself in an area that had been reported to be experiencing numerous anomalies. His confidence surged as he believed that it wouldn't be a daunting task to locate potential prey in this environment. Employing his unique skill known as the Shadow Pupil, Zhang Yu harnessed the extraordinary ability to swiftly teleport himself to elevated vantage points within his surroundings. This proficiency provided him with a distinct advantage, enabling him to effortlessly survey the area for any potential targets that he could engage with for his upcoming hunt. Utilizing the power of his shadow pupil, Zhang Yu effortlessly transported himself into a strategically advantageous position within a towering edifice that offered an elevated perspective of his surroundings. Gracefully descending onto the rooftop of the building, Zhang Yu positioned himself in a vantage point that provided an unobstructed view of the area ahead, allowing him to observe the various creatures that roamed the vicinity. Surveying the rooftop, Zhang Yu's observations were proven correct as he could discern that numerous anomalies were indeed present in the area. However, he also noticed that some of these anomalies were concealed within the buildings, choosing to remain hidden rather than venturing out into the open. Within the confines of the building, Zhang Yu's keen eyes detected the presence of several anomalies, yet these entities seemed to be maintaining a state of dormancy, not engaging in any notable activity. In the midst of his vigilant survey of the surroundings, Zhang Yu's attention was abruptly captured by the distinct and powerful presence of a formidable monster that had seemingly emerged into his field of view. This sudden discovery instantly diverted his focus and heightened his senses, prompting him to fixate his attention on the creature in question. He wondered about its motivations and intentions. While closely observing the creature's actions, 
Zhang Yu couldn't help but notice the distinct aura of strength emanating from it. The creature's aura of strength was particularly potent, especially evident as he observed it devouring its prey. The scene unfolding before him showcased the creature's power and ferocity, leaving no doubt about its formidable nature. Observing the creature closely, Zhang Yu's attention was drawn to its heavily injured legs, and he also discerned that its health points had significantly diminished. The sight of the wounded creature sparked his interest as he contemplated whether this would present an opportunity for a successful hunt. The sight of the creature wounded and weakened brought a smile to Zhang Yu's face, a mixture of anticipation and excitement coursing through him. He recognized this as a prime opportunity to engage in a successful hunt. With a swift and determined movement, Zhang Yu activated his teleportation ability and materialized right at the creature's location, ready to initiate the hunt and seize the opportunity before him. Zhang Yu's heart raced with anticipation as he positioned himself behind the creature. Despite Zhang Yu's relatively swift and discreet arrival at the creature's location, the heightened alertness of the monster allowed it to detect his presence almost immediately. As the creature swiftly turned its attention and readied itself for potential combat upon sensing an intruder, Zhang Yu reacted swiftly by maneuvering himself underground in an attempt to conceal himself from the creature's line of sight. Immediately taking advantage of the situation, Zhang Yu swiftly maneuvered himself beneath the ground to avoid the creature's line of sight. Observing the creature from his concealed position beneath the ground, Zhang Yu couldn't help but be impressed by its remarkable agility and heightened level of alertness. He noted that this particular creature displayed a level of agility and awareness that surpassed those of the creatures he was accustomed to encountering in his neighborhood. Carefully observing the creature's movements, Zhang Yu began to discern its heightened sense of smell, which seemed to play a crucial role in its alertness. Additionally, he noticed that the once prominent red dot on the creature's body had significantly weakened, suggesting that it was a result of the creature's heightened state of vigilance. Recognizing that the creature's guard was a critical factor in its defenses, Zhang Yu formulated a strategic approach. He determined that his initial course of action would be to eliminate the creature's guard, allowing him to gain the upper hand in the confrontation. As the creature continued its efforts to detect the presence it had sensed earlier, Zhang Yu maintained his patient stance, waiting for the opportune moment when the creature would inadvertently let its guard down. The tension in the air was palpable as he focused on the task at hand, ready to strike when the creature's heightened vigilance wavered. Believing that the creature had momentarily lowered its guard, Zhang Yu swiftly acted on his intuition and decisively marked the creature. His movements were quick and calculated, driven by his determination to initiate the hunt with precision. With keen eyes and a steady hand, he executed the action he had been waiting for, seizing the opportunity he had patiently waited for. A sense of accomplishment and readiness surged through him, propelling him forward with even greater resolve. Returning to the familiar setting of Uni City within the shared residence of Lu Yao Yao and Zhang Yu, the atmosphere was marked by a sense of comfort and familiarity. When Uncle Leon, Lu Yao Yao's dad, walked in the front door and caught her attention, Lu Yao Yao, who was busy cooking, noticed them right away. She quickly asked why her dad had gone out and why he was coming back so late. Recognizing the urgency of the situation in the kitchen, Lu Yao Yao promptly turned to her dad and requested his immediate help. Just as she shifted her attention, Lu Yao Yao found herself slightly taken aback by the unexpected presence of Uncle Lai alongside her dad. The sudden appearance of the two individuals left her momentarily puzzled, prompting her to question the reason behind their arrival. With a curious expression, Uncle Lai inquired whether she was once again preparing a meal for Zhang Yu. Meanwhile, her dad's demeanor took on a more serious tone as he affirmed his knowledge of his daughter's activities, implying that he had been aware of her doings all along. With a hint of frustration in her voice, Lu Yao Yao addressed her dad, expressing her annoyance at his tendency to speak negatively about her. In response to Lu Yao Yao's inquiry about why he had left the office early, her dad explained that there wasn't much work to be done, so he decided to leave ahead of time. He then conveyed that since it was uncommon for them to be together, he thought it might be a good idea for them to go out and enjoy a nice meal. With a calm yet firm expression, Lu Yao Yao directed her father's attention towards the stovetop where she had initiated the cooking process, subtly implying that she had already started on the task of preparing a meal. In a genial and cheerful manner, Uncle Lai intervened into the conversation, emphasizing the idea that there would always be future occasions to venture outdoors for a meal. He went on to articulate that the current moment presented a splendid opportunity to indulge in Lu Yao Yao's culinary creations, 
underlining the rarity of such an event and implying that it would be a delightful experience to savor her cooking firsthand. Following his previous remark, Uncle Lai shifted his attention towards Lu Yao Yao and inquired about Zhang Yu's whereabouts. Lu Yao Yao responded thoughtfully, suggesting that Zhang Yu might have gone out to engage in some activities. While Uncle Lai was expressing his opinion about Zhang Yu's audacity to leave Lu Yao Yao to cook, a sudden interruption occurred as Zhang Yu unexpectedly entered the room by opening the door. Unaware that there was another person besides Lu Yao Yao in the house, Zhang Yu walked in with his focus solely on his hunger. He repeatedly voiced how famished he was and directed his questions towards Lu Yao Yao, eager to know about the food she had cooked for the meal. With a cheerful demeanor, Zhang Yu presented Lu Yao Yao with a lollipop he had acquired, playfully recounting his adventure involving almost getting bitten by a dog while obtaining it. He couldn't resist adding a lighthearted question, asking if she had missed him during his absence. However, his mirth quickly faded as he unexpectedly spotted her father and Uncle Lai in the room, causing his conversation to abruptly halt due to the surprise of their presence. Zhang Yu's presence in the apartment brought an abrupt hush over the room as everyone became aware of his sudden entrance and the somewhat embarrassing conversation he had engaged in with Lu Yao Yao. Caught in an awkward situation, Zhang Yu's expression turned visibly concerned, and he discreetly swallowed his saliva as his mind raced to come up with a plausible explanation to offer. Sensing the growing tension in the room, Uncle Lai discreetly tucked away the lollipop he had bought for Lu Yao Yao, realizing that the atmosphere had become more hushed and charged. In an attempt to ease the awkward tension, Zhang Yu shifted the mood by explaining that he had encountered an unexpected situation earlier. He mentioned that a dog had chased him, causing him to run frantically and become a bit disoriented in the process. Seeing the awkwardness in the air, Uncle Lai quickly intervened to ease the situation and ensure that the atmosphere remained pleasant. With a warm smile, he turned to Zhang Yu and kindly suggested that he take a seat. As Zhang Yu settled down beside him, Uncle Lai leaned in and offered some words of wisdom. He mentioned that it's quite common for young people to have disagreements and conflicts, and, in fact, those who don't engage in such interactions are often not truly experiencing their youth. Hearing these encouraging words, Zhang Yu's confidence began to grow, and a small smile appeared on his face as he appreciated Uncle Lai's understanding and support. Lu Yao Yao's father chimed in, agreeing and adding a touch of humor by recalling their own youthful days and how they used to compete for a girl's attention. Playfully, he turned to Lu Yao Yao and asked about the girl she was seen walking with the other day. Lu Yao Yao shared her friend's name, and her father complimented her friend's appearance. He playfully recounted his own youth, mentioning that back in his day, he would even get injured to impress a girl as attractive as her friend. As they all sat together at the dining table, enjoying a delicious meal, Lu Yao Yao's father raised his glass with a cheerful expression on his face. With heartfelt sentiment, he offered a toast, expressing his best wishes for Uncle Lai's success. Zhang Yu couldn't help but observe the situation, noticing the change in Lu Yao Yao's behavior. He sensed her growing discomfort and tension as her father unwittingly brought up a sensitive topic. Zhang Yu found himself pondering how Lu Yao Yao's father had inadvertently stirred up awkwardness, especially in such a public setting and right in front of Lu Yao Yao herself. Uncle Lai happened to notice that Zhang Yu, his nephew, was simply gazing at the scene before him without making the customary gesture of lifting his glass. Upon this observation, Uncle Lai took it upon himself to kindly advise Zhang Yu to raise his glass in a toast, specifically addressing the action of raising the glass towards Uncle Lu, presumably as a sign of respect or acknowledgement. Without hesitation, Zhang Yu promptly elevated his glass in a swift motion, expressing his enthusiasm and goodwill as he vocally cheered to Uncle Lu. The watchful presence of Uncle Lu, Zhang Yu displayed a certain eagerness to impress by drinking all the beverage. He raised his glass to his lips and proceeded to consume the entire contents of the vessel with a determined gulp. Observing Zhang Yu's swift and audacious consumption of the beverage, Uncle Lu's contemplative mind went to work, reflecting. He made the conscious decision to allow Zhang Yu the freedom to flaunt his actions. And in a gracious gesture, Zhang Yu extended an offering of food towards Uncle Lu. His demeanor embodied a blend of cordiality and respect as he verbalized that the dishes before them were cooked by his own daughter, emphasizing that such occasions were infrequent due to his limited presence at home. In this manner, he delicately conveyed that the chance to savor his daughter's cooked dishes was indeed a rare and precious occurrence. Zhang Yu engaged in conversation with Uncle Lu mentioning that his daughter, Lu Yao Yao, must have become skilled at cooking because she often made meals for him when he was at home. 
He jokingly remarked that her cooking skills improved because she wanted to ensure he liked the food when he was around. When Zhang Yu shared this information with Uncle Lu, the latter's reaction was one of surprise. It seemed that Uncle Lu hadn't been aware of what Zhang Yu was saying, showing unexpectedness in his response. This could have been because the revelation was unexpected or new to him, causing a moment of confusion or astonishment as he processed the information. Uncle Lu's private contemplation revealed that Lu Yao Yao did not actually cook for him as Zhang Yu had implied. In fact, Uncle Lu had developed a habit of frequently ordering takeout when he was at home, which contrasted with the idea that his daughter was diligently preparing varied meals for him. This revelation seemed to leave Uncle Lu feeling frustrated and annoyed, as the concept of Lu Yao Yao consistently cooking diverse dishes for Zhang Yu contrasted with his own experiences. Zhang Yu glanced over at Uncle Lu and noticed a sense of frustration in his expression. In response, Zhang Yu had his own internal reaction, feeling that he had successfully made a point or gained an advantage in the situation. This inner thought highlighted a sense of competitiveness or playfulness in the dynamic between him and Uncle Lu. The atmosphere of celebration continued to unfold, and they raised their glasses in mutual toasts while savoring their meal. The mood remained cheerful and festive as they shared moments of friendship and enjoyment. As time went by, Uncle Lu and Lu Yao Yao eventually departed from Zhang Yu's home. Zhang Yu stood by, waving farewell to them with a warm and friendly gesture, expressing his desire for their return and extending an invitation for them to visit again next time. With the departure of their guests, Uncle Lu and Lu Yao Yao, Zhang Yu closed the door behind them. Now that only Zhang Yu and Uncle Lai remained within the confines of the house, Zhang Yu extended a courteous offer to Uncle Lai, inquiring if he would like to partake in some refreshments, perhaps beverages of some sort. In response, Uncle Lai, demonstrating his graciousness, politely turned down the offer while sipping on his beverage. Zhang Yu made his way toward his room, simultaneously Uncle Lai chose to take a seat on the sofa, his actions marked by a sense of quiet and understated presence. Zhang Yu drank the beverage in silence, taking deep swallows as he processed his thoughts or simply enjoyed the refreshing cold beverage. Meanwhile, Uncle Lai maintained his serene presence on the sofa, waiting for the perfect timing to talk to Zhang Yu. Out of the blue, Uncle Lai broke the silence and initiated a conversation with Zhang Yu. He expressed that he had a question in mind that he wanted to ask. Uncle Lai addressed Zhang Yu directly, posing a direct question asking if Zhang Yu had managed to awaken or tap into certain abilities or skills. This inquiry carried a weight of curiosity and potentially held significance beyond the surface, which caught Zhang Yu off guard with the sudden question from Uncle Lai. Upon hearing the question about his abilities, Zhang Yu's reaction was one of momentary surprise. Zhang Yu shifted his posture to lie on his back, tipping his water and responded to Uncle Lai's question with a mixture of sincerity and honesty. With a focused gaze fixed on Zhang Yu, Uncle Lai shared a piece of personal insight, drawing from his own extensive experience of two decades in night patrols. He conveyed his ability to discern injuries and their nature. Building on this observation, Uncle Lai posed a direct question to Zhang Yu, inquiring about the circumstances that had led to his injuries. Caught off guard by Uncle Lai's perceptive insight and genuine concern, Zhang Yu found himself in a situation where honesty was the only option. He realized that evading the truth wouldn't serve any purpose, so he made the decision to open up and share the reality of what had transpired. Zhang Yu moved to sit beside his uncle and decided to tell him the truth. He said that he had developed new abilities around two weeks ago. Uncle Lai, interested to know more, asked how this change happened to Zhang Yu. Zhang Yu couldn't help but feel a bit like Uncle Lai was intensely questioning him with his follow-up queries. Uncle Lai casually took a cigarette, creating a relaxed atmosphere. He comforted Zhang Yu, letting him know that there was no need to feel anxious. With a reassuring tone, he encouraged Zhang Yu to go ahead and share all the details about his awakening. Zhang Yu found himself contemplating Uncle Lai's question, his mind grappling with the concept of when exactly his awakening had occurred. The uncertainty stemmed from his own lack of clear understanding about the precise moment of his awakening. Observing Zhang Yu's contemplative expression, Uncle Lai's gaze was thoughtful, mirroring his own pondering about Zhang Yu's awakening. He speculated that Zhang Yu's awakening might have occurred spontaneously and naturally without a distinct triggering event. This assumption led him to believe that such awakenings were relatively uncommon, happening only a few times each year. Zhang Yu responded to his uncle's thoughts by acknowledging that his perspective might hold some truth. 
he proposed that his awakening could indeed be attributed to an innate talent or inherent ability that he possessed. While under the gaze of uncle, Lai, Zhang Yu suddenly experienced a distinct energy emanating from his uncle. This presence or aura that seemed to surround Uncle Lai caught Zhang Yu by surprise. Uncle Lai briefly closed his eyes, creating a momentary pause in their exchange. Zhang Yu observed this, and a thought crossed his mind. He speculated that Uncle Lai might have deliberately activated his own ability in that moment, attributing the aura or energy he had sensed to Uncle Lai's own actions. Continuing the conversation, Uncle Lai began to explain to Zhang Yu about a phenomenon that had occurred this year. He mentioned that exceptional talents had been identified, and these individuals were subjected to a particular assessment. He elaborated that as long as someone's determination and willpower were sufficiently strong to embrace this opportunity, they were required to participate in a martial examination. Zhang Yu met Uncle Lai's explanation with a revelation of his own. He shared that he was already aware of this information because Lu Yao Yao had informed him. This disclosure surprised Uncle Lai, prompting him to consider that Lu Yao Yao might have learned about it from her father. Uncle Lai continued the conversation, revealing that the Night Patrol Bureau had been facing increasing pressure and a rising number of casualties in recent years. This candid mission painted a grim picture of the challenges they were encountering. In light of this, Uncle Lai made a suggestion to Zhang Yu. He proposed that Zhang Yu could potentially bypass the martial examination process through a backdoor approach. Instead, he could opt to focus on his studies and aim to take the college entrance examination in the future. Uncertain about the full implications of Uncle Lai's suggestion, Zhang Yu found himself grappling with the meaning behind his uncle's words. Inwardly, he pondered whether the advice Uncle Lai was giving him could be taken in a casual manner. Uncle Lai recommended that he consider a range of major universities for his education. He noted that he knew Zhang Yu had an interest in drawing and suggested that he explore the possibility of enrolling in an art department or selecting a major aligned with his passions. This advice seemed to stem from a place of genuine care and concern for Zhang Yu's future. Impressed by his uncle's insightful advice, Zhang Yu held a moment of admiration for Uncle Lai's words, feeling a sense of respect. He asked a follow-up question, wondering if it was possible to obtain a graduation certificate without actually attending school. This unexpected question took Uncle Lai by surprise, possibly due to the unconventional nature of the suggestion. Uncle Lai's response to Zhang Yu's suggestion was a slap across the face, which might have been an expression of frustration or disbelief in response to what he perceived as an unrealistic or impractical idea. Uncle Lai redirected the conversation and suggested a specific path for Zhang Yu. He proposed that Zhang Yu consider attending the Winter Academy, emphasizing the positive atmosphere present there. Uncle Lai outlined a plan that if Zhang Yu were to graduate from the academy, he would help arrange a stable life for him. This future stability, in turn, would pave the way for Zhang Yu to lead a secure and settled life alongside Lu Yao Yao. Upon receiving this suggestion from Uncle Lai, Zhang Yu found himself deep in thought. The proposition of attending the Winter Academy and the promising future it could potentially lead to prompted him to consider the possibilities and implications. As Zhang Yu contemplated the suggestion put forth by Uncle Lai, he felt the weight of the decision before him. The atmosphere held a sense of anticipation as Uncle Lai patiently awaited Zhang Yu's response, understanding the gravity of the decision and allowing him the time needed to process the information and formulate his thoughts. In response to the waiting silence, Zhang Yu swiftly voiced his decision to Uncle Lai. He expressed his desire to pursue the path of becoming extraordinary, indicating that he was inclined to embrace the challenges and opportunities that came with awakening his abilities. Uncle Lai's reaction to Zhang Yu's decision was one of frustration and anger. He stood up, clearly affected by Zhang Yu's choice, and expressed his strong disagreement with it. He asserted that Zhang Yu had to comply with his wishes and follow his guidance, regardless of his own preference. Following the exchange, a heavy silence settled between them. Uncle Lai seemed to be grappling with his emotions and thoughts, left in a state of introspection and contemplation. The room was enveloped in a hush, casting a shadow over the atmosphere. As they engaged in a heated argument, the tension in the air became palpable. Despite the argument, Zhang Yu remained resolute in his choice, unwavering. He directly addressed Uncle Lai, asserting that if Uncle Lai assisted him in bypassing the process through a backdoor route, he would take the step of reporting Uncle Lai's involvement to the Night Patrol Bureau. Zhang Yu's stern declaration seemed to catch Uncle Lai off guard. 
The weight of Zhang Yu's words, where he essentially threatened to report Uncle Lai, appeared to surprise him. Following their intense exchange of words, Zhang Yu and Uncle Lai found themselves in a moment of prolonged silence. Uncle Lai was really serious about his viewpoint. He explained that the world of extraordinary abilities could be much more dangerous than Zhang Yu thought. He told Zhang Yu to focus on his studies for now and assured him that he would take care of everything else. Zhang Yu responded to Uncle Lai with equal seriousness. He affirmed that his decision was not taken lightly and expressed that dangers could be found in various places, not just in the extraordinary world. He pointed out that Uncle Lai wouldn't always be able to protect him, implying that at some point, he would need to face challenges on his own. Zhang Yu's resolute stance left Uncle Lai speechless. Unable to find words to counter Zhang Yu's firm decision, Uncle Lu might have experienced a mix of emotions like surprise, frustration, and possibly even a sense of respect for Zhang Yu's determination. Eventually, Uncle Lai broke the silence with a resigned tone. He accepted Zhang Yu's decision and acknowledged that he would wait to see if Zhang Yu's perspective changed once he gained a deeper understanding of the situation. Uncle Lai extended an offer, letting Zhang Yu know that he could always seek him out if he decided to change his mind. As Uncle Lai prepared to leave, Zhang Yu took a moment to address him with a candid message. He advised Uncle Lai to steer clear of questionable or unethical paths in the future. He raised a concern, asking what might happen if Uncle Lai were to get caught engaging in such activities. Uncle Lai appeared to brush off Zhang Yu's warning about the possibility of getting caught, choosing not to engage with that aspect. Instead, he bid farewell, seemingly ending the conversation on a note of departure. Just as Uncle Lai was preparing to leave, Zhang Yu interrupted the moment and asked him to wait. Zhang Yu seized the moment to share something he had discovered from the information provided by Lu Yao Yao. He explained that the information mentioned that extraordinary individuals needed to use up their abilities completely before they passed away to avoid contamination and the potential transformation into a different species. This information led him to wonder if it was possible for someone to have already passed away, expended their powers, yet still undergone the transformation into a different species. Zhang Yu posed this question to Uncle Lai, exploring the implications of the information and its potential consequences. Uncle Lai's gaze settled on Zhang Yu, his attention captured by Zhang Yu's genuine curiosity and engagement with the topic. The way Zhang Yu had presented his question seemed to convey his earnest interest in the subject matter. Uncle Lai responded to Zhang Yu's query with an acknowledgement. He confirmed that the scenario Zhang Yu had outlined could indeed occur. He explained that special abilities or external factors could contribute to the circumstances where someone had exhausted their powers before passing away and still underwent the transformation into a different species. Uncle Lai was interested in why Zhang Yu had asked the question. Zhang Yu replied that he was just curious and didn't have a specific reason for asking. As Uncle Lai got ready to leave and put on his shoes, he shared a final piece of advice with Zhang Yu. He mentioned that if Zhang Yu decided to take the martial arts exam, he would eventually encounter the different species he had mentioned earlier. Before departing, Uncle Lai offered one more piece of guidance to Zhang Yu. He advised Zhang Yu to prioritize a healthy sleep routine and to avoid getting into fights. Zhang Yu responded with a smile, acknowledging Uncle Lai's advice and showing his willingness to listen. As Uncle Lai was about to leave, he realized that he had forgotten to mention an important detail. He shared that the martial arts exam was scheduled for early in the upcoming year and would begin shortly after the Lunar New Year. This revelation caught Zhang Yu off guard, and he expressed his surprise at how soon the exam was approaching. With their conversation concluded, they parted ways. As Uncle Lai bid Zhang Yu farewell and left, he offered a parting wish, telling Zhang Yu good luck and advising him to thoroughly prepare for the upcoming martial arts exam. After Uncle Lai's departure, Zhang Yu sat alone in silence, taking time to deeply contemplate the discussions that had taken place. With no one else around, he pondered the options he had and the decisions he needed to make. This moment of quiet allowed him to sort through his feelings and thoughts, as he tried to figure out what to do next in a world filled with uncertainties. While scrolling through her phone, the girl's attention was suddenly captured by a notification. Her eyes lit up with excitement as she saw that a blogger she followed had just posted a new video. Once the video was uploaded, the girl turned her focus to the comments section. Unfortunately, she noticed a lot of negative and hurtful comments directed towards the blogger, including Zhang Yu, the assassin. The content of the video and his intentions were being criticized, 
with some comments even suggesting that he was simply seeking attention and popularity. Feeling frustrated, the girl noticed a growing trend of thoughtless criticism from people. She couldn't help but think that these critics might be motivated by jealousy due to Zhang Yu's evident talent. This observation highlighted her perspective on the situation, suggesting that some individuals might be quick to criticize out of envy rather than genuinely engaging with the content. Taking action, the girl promptly decided to stand up against the bashing and hateful comments by typing out a comment of her own. She aimed to defend Zhang Yu and counter the negativity with her words. After engaging in the defense of Zhang Yu and his content, the girl took a moment for herself. She sat quietly, deep in thought, allowing herself time to process her emotions and clear her mind. The negative comments she had encountered under her favorite blogger's recent video seemed to have left an impact on her. Reflecting inwardly, the girl grappled with conflicting thoughts. She expressed her hope that Zhang Yu was genuinely not a scammer, despite the negative comments she had come across. Her fondness for him, cultivated over the past few days of watching his videos, seemed to have formed a connection that she was now protective of. When Zhang Yu released another video, the girl refrained from immediately watching it. Her hesitation stemmed from a hope that the new video wouldn't be an apology, possibly due to the fear that negative comments and criticisms might have influenced him to address the situation in that manner. As the girl clicked to watch the new video, what unfolded on the screen felt like an immersive experience. It was as if she was transported into a virtual reality, and she found herself seeing things from Zhang Yu's perspective. The concept of a shadow layer suggested a deeper hidden dimension that she was now a part of, offering a unique glimpse into Zhang Yu's world. Caught up in the captivating scene she was watching, the girl blushed in response to the emotions it evoked. The sense of amazement she felt was palpable, highlighting the impact of the content on her and the strong emotional resonance it had created. While she kept watching Zhang Yu's video, the girl was still amazed by how it seemed like she was right there with him in the shadow layer. The way the video was made made her feel like she was a part of the virtual world. The way the video showcased the thrilling experience demonstrated how Zhang Yu's videos could make you feel like you're truly there with him, despite it all being on a screen. In the video, Zhang Yu was depicted standing atop a building, giving the impression that he might be contemplating jumping from it. As the girl watched the video, she had an intense emotional reaction, feeling as though she had jumped alongside him, fully immersed in the action. The girl's face turned red, and she blushed deeply due to the overwhelming emotions she experienced while watching the video. She could almost sense the air rushing around her and even found herself tearing up. The vividness of her imagination was such that she felt like she was falling alongside Zhang Yu from the building. After the intense emotional journey of watching the video, the girl snapped back to reality, opening her eyes. A sense of relief washed over her as she escaped the feeling of falling that the video had evoked. When she opened her eyes, she felt as though she was tightly hugging Zhang Yu. The video had transitioned to a scene where Zhang Yu was swinging between buildings, and this unexpected change surprised her. In her imagination, as they landed from the swinging scene, the girl gazed at Zhang Yu in awe, marveling at the virtual spectacle and privately concluding that he seemed like a superhuman in that moment. In the virtual reality, Zhang Yu, the assassin, swiftly moved to shield his body, protecting the girl from a sudden attack. Following the attack, a dense cloud of smoke engulfed the scene, indicating a significant collision or impact. Suddenly, a peculiar creature emerged and placed its feet on Zhang Yu's body, surprising both him and the girl. The girl reacted with fear due to the creature's imposing size. The creature's size and powerful physique were striking, making it appear massive and formidable. Zhang Yu utilized his web-like lines to maneuver closer to the creature, showcasing his agility and resourcefulness in navigating challenging situations. With skill and precision, Zhang Yu positioned himself directly in front of the creature, engaging in close combat using his web-like lines. Witnessing Zhang Yu's display of skills and abilities, the girl was filled with admiration, finding his actions genuinely impressive. With courage and determination, Zhang Yu bravely battled against the formidable monster, adding a layer of heroism to the scene and solidifying his role as the video's protagonist. In a swift move, Zhang Yu delivered a powerful kick to the monster's face, showcasing his resourcefulness and strategic thinking as he gained the upper hand. However, Zhang Yu was caught off guard by the monster's attack, resulting in a hit to his face. This unexpected turn of events revealed his vulnerability, highlighting the unpredictability of battle and the challenges that even skilled fighters like him could face. As the girl continued to watch the video, 
she remained captivated by the unfolding action. She found the portrayal of the battle incredibly impressive and wondered if this was a typical depiction of conflicts involving extraordinary abilities and encounters with alien species. Her thoughts reflected her curiosity about the dynamics of such battles within the context of the video's world. The authenticity of Zhang Yu's videos had convinced her of their genuine nature. She reacted with speed and agility as Zhang Yu skillfully evaded the monster's attack. Caught off guard by Zhang Yu's evasiveness, the monster displayed surprise and confusion, highlighting the unexpected turn of events and the effectiveness of Zhang Yu's maneuver. Seizing the moment, Zhang Yu took advantage of the monster's vulnerability, catching it off guard. The girl watched in amazement as Zhang Yu's skills shone through, resembling a true fighter from the northern capital. His decisive actions caused the monster's health to rapidly drop to 0%, executing a well-timed attack from behind its back. With the monster defeated, Zhang Yu prepared to consume it, utilizing his unique ability, Shadow Devouring, to gain the monster's skills, abilities, and information. This action demonstrated his extraordinary power and hinted at a deeper layer of his character's capabilities. Observing Zhang Yu's use of his ability to devour the monster, the girl made a connection and speculated that Zhang Yu's spider webs might have originated from his absorption of a spider-like creature from a previous encounter with the alien species. As she continued to watch, the girl speculated that Zhang Yu could have acquired new abilities by devouring the defeated creature. Her hypothesis highlighted the intriguing nature of Zhang Yu's powers and their potential for growth and adaptation. After a challenging battle in a dark area and encountering new types of creatures, Zhang Yu returned home and quickly threw his dirty clothes into the laundry basket. In his bathroom, he took a moment to assess the injuries he had sustained, standing before the mirror. His reflection revealed the aftermath of the events that had led to his wounds. Carefully applying bandages to cover the various injured areas on his body, Zhang Yu took a moment to reflect inwardly. The encounter with the alien species in the region he had ventured into had left a lasting impression on him. With each strip of cloth he placed, he couldn't help but ponder the remarkable strength displayed by those extraterrestrial beings. It dawned on him that their resilience and power were truly remarkable. He realized that if those alien beings had not been injured during their confrontation, his own ability to emerge victorious against them might have been greatly compromised, if not altogether impossible. At that precise moment, a notification popped up on his phone's screen, captivating his attention almost immediately. As he tapped the screen to unlock it, his gaze was immediately drawn to a specific notification from a prominent blogger named Real Deal. Intrigued, he opened the message to find that Real Deal was once again attempting to create videos centered around him. However, the content presented by the blogger took a distinct turn and caught Zhang Yu off guard. Through their videos, Real Deal was conveying the notion that the alien species Zhang Yu had fought against had incurred injuries, rendering them considerably weakened. The emergence of Real Deal's videos and the angle they were taking ignited a surge of frustration within Zhang Yu. The blogger's decision to produce content centered around him, particularly with the notion that the injured alien species were now easily manageable, stirred a mix of emotions that he found difficult to contain. He closed his phone and let go of the irritation the video had caused him. Zhang Yu's irritation had reached a point where he couldn't hold back his feelings any longer. With a frustrated tone, he openly expressed his annoyance, labeling the person behind the videos as really annoying. With everything that was going on and the emotions he was experiencing, Zhang Yu had reached a point of exhaustion, both physically and mentally. He decided to give himself a break. He walked over to his sofa, eased himself down onto it, and let out a sigh. As he settled onto the sofa, his mind began to wander back to the intense battle he had engaged in earlier. In that quiet moment, a realization weighed heavily on his thoughts. He recognized his own limitations. Reflecting on the encounter with the alien species, he couldn't escape the truth that his strength, despite his efforts, felt insufficient. Doubts crept in, and he grappled with the idea that confronting more formidable opponents, particularly those classified as first-grade species, might prove to be a daunting challenge. As he opened his eyes, a determined thought formed within his mind. In that instant, he resolved that he needed to undergo a rapid transformation in terms of strength. He contemplated his objective with unwavering focus. The inner dialogue intensified as he reinforced his commitment, resolutely believing that he needed to achieve a level of strength that would leave no room for skepticism or doubt about his capabilities. Zhang Yu's gaze shifted towards the system, his eyes fixating on the interface that held the key to his evolving abilities. 
With a mix of curiosity and anticipation, he explored the array of new skills and capabilities that had emerged as a result of his encounters with various species. The screen before him displayed a collection of enhancements, each representing a tangible result in the rewards he had earned. With a lighthearted tone, Zhang Yu allowed a playful quip to escape his lips, directed solely at himself. He humorously mused that his newfound strength had propelled him to a level surpassing that of Lu Yao Yao. He continued to playfully envision a scenario where even facing 50 versions of someone named Uncle Lu wouldn't pose a challenge for him anymore. Sitting on the sofa, Zhang Yu contemplated something important. He realized that he wasn't as strong as he wanted to be. He had a strong desire to become even stronger, and the determination to continue growing burned even brighter within him. With a focused gaze, he delved into his memories, recalling the numerous battles he had engaged in previously. Each clash had yielded invaluable lessons and additional skills that he had absorbed along the way. Zhang Yu focused his thoughts and concentrated his energy, channeling it into his fist. As he did so, he contemplated the concept of shadow points, the points he gained from his experiences and battles. He realized that these points held a dual nature. While they were similar to experience points, there was a distinctive quality to them. In his mind, he likened them to energy points. Zhang Yu thought about something interesting, that the skills he had learned didn't all cost the same amount of points. In his mind, he compared these skills and their point requirements, piecing together a puzzle of understanding. He realized that each skill carried its weight in terms of the points it demanded. Zhang Yu focused his thoughts and directed his energy towards his palm, feeling the energy flow and pool there. He considered a fascinating idea, that the amount of energy his shadow form uses depends on where he is. To explain, he used examples to illustrate his point. In the shadowy realm, his energy consumption is minimal, almost like it doesn't use anything at all. When he's in places that are dark in the real world, the energy usage is still low, just a bit more than in the shadow layer. However, when sunlight is present, his shadow form requires a substantial amount of energy to maintain itself. After contemplating the intricacies of energy consumption, Zhang Yu took a moment to reverse the process, drawing the energy back into himself. As he did this, another thought crossed his mind about the impending qualification test. The test was drawing near, and he knew it was a significant milestone in his journey. He got up from where he was and headed towards his balcony to think clearly about the upcoming martial examination. Gazing up at the radiant moon in the night sky, Zhang Yu's mind wandered into contemplation once again. He drew a parallel between the exceptional talents of certain individuals and the shadow points he possessed. To him, it seemed that these remarkable individuals might be comparable to possessing just one to three shadow points, not much more than what he had accumulated. Zhang Yu realized that even if he didn't reach his desired level of power before the test began, his current abilities were formidable enough to command respect and perhaps even induce intimidation among his peers. Amid his thoughts, Zhang Yu's mind shifted towards another observation. He contemplated how excessive expertise and boasting tend to capture the attention of those around them. Amid his reflections, Zhang Yu found himself pondering his approach. He realized that while he had been aiming to display humility, there was a part of him that felt the need to exhibit his strength more explicitly. Zhang Yu recognized the support he had from his uncle, which provided him with a sense of reassurance. Knowing that he had someone in his corner supporting and believing in him instilled a feeling of confidence within him. In a moment of amusement, Zhang Yu started laughing loudly, almost as if he didn't care about what others might think. However, his laughter seemed to annoy the old man living beneath his apartment. The following day arrived, and Zhang Yu found himself grappling with a sense of boredom while being outdoors. It appeared that Zhang Yu was experiencing a period marked by a lack of stimulating or fulfilling experiences. As he spent his day in this particular setting, Zhang Yu and his friend found themselves inside the mall, patiently awaiting the arrival of Lu Yao Yao and another friend. They were embarking on a shopping expedition. Lu Yao Yao and her friend were really happy while shopping for clothes. They had a lot of fun picking out different outfits and trying them on. They seemed to be enjoying themselves immensely as they looked at all the clothes and decided which ones to buy. Zhang Yu's demeanor reflected a sense of weariness as he patiently awaited the arrival of his companions. The act of waiting appeared to be growing tiresome for him. Inwardly, he contemplated the implications of spending his days in such idle waiting, recognizing that if he continued this pattern, his overall quality of life might suffer. Zhang Yu's friend, who was by his side, chimed in with a piece of advice. 
he cautioned Zhang Yu against making negative remarks about not living long, especially at the beginning of the new year. This warning was rooted in the belief that making pessimistic comments could potentially attract bad luck. Zhang Yu's expression shifted to a more serious demeanor as he engaged in a candid conversation with his friend. He conveyed that his previous statement wasn't meant as a joke. He explained that if he doesn't take action and actively pursue opportunities, particularly in terms of hunting, his prospects for survival could be jeopardized. Zhang Yu's friend was caught off guard by his sudden and serious remark. It seemed like his statement was unexpected and left his friend a bit surprised, not sure how to interpret what Zhang Yu just said. His friend asked for clarification while they were engaged in their conversation. Zhang Yu's focus shifted as a new development caught his attention. It appeared that Lu Yao Yao and their other friend had completed their shopping excursion and were now ready to join the group. Just as Lu Yao Yao and her friend were considering their dining options, an unfamiliar presence emerged, an entity that seemed peculiar and emitted an unusual energy. The atmosphere surrounding this entity carried a distinct and unfamiliar vibe. As Zhang Yu engaged in the task of suggesting a restaurant to his friends, the enigmatic aura that had manifested earlier began to exhibit movement. After deliberating and discussing their options, Zhang Yu and his friends eventually decided on the restaurant where they would dine. With their choice made, they turned their attention to the menu, each person perusing the offerings to determine what they would order for their meal. Lu Yao Yao's expression shifted to one of irritation as she directed a displeased gaze toward Zhang Yu. It seems that her dissatisfaction stemmed from the fact that Zhang Yu had suggested a restaurant that was more suited for male students, implying that it might not be an ideal choice for their group. Despite Lu Yao Yao's reservations about the restaurant Zhang Yu had chosen, he remained steadfast in his decision. He was determined to make the dining experience enjoyable for both of them. Ignoring any initial reluctance, he confidently summoned the waiter and proceeded to place an extensive order, carefully detailing each dish he wished to try. Lu Yao Yao's face contorted into a displeased expression as she cast an irritated glance in Zhang Yu's direction. Upon hearing the extensive list of items he had ordered, the waiter was feeling nervous and kept glancing at Lu Yao Yao, trying to gauge her reaction. On the other hand, Zhang Yu appeared quite delighted with his choice of food. He seemed so pleased that he even made a special request for his oysters to be larger and exceptionally fresh. Following a patient wait, their eagerly anticipated dishes were at last brought to the table. An assortment of delectable seafood and crisp, colorful vegetables adorned the table, and the waiter kindly advised them to savor their meal at a leisurely pace, allowing them to enjoy every bite to the fullest. Upon the arrival of the dishes, Zhang Yu extended a friendly gesture by offering some of the dishes to Lu Yao Yao. In a considerate tone, he assured her not to be upset, acknowledging that he had picked dishes that didn't align with her taste preferences. However, Lu Yao Yao politely declined his offer, firmly stating that she wouldn't partake in the meal. While Lu Yao Yao was still feeling a bit downcast about the food situation, her attention was abruptly diverted when an unexpected message flashed on her phone screen, instantly capturing her interest. Upon reading the message, Lu Yao Yao discovered crucial information regarding the martial arts examination. The date had been rescheduled to commence on the 17th of February, extending through to the 20th of the same month. Additionally, the message revealed that the specialized training camp was set to kick off on the 25th of February, providing her with valuable details that would significantly impact her martial arts journey. The girlfriend among their group was taken aback by the message regarding the shifted date of the martial arts examination. With an inquisitive furrow in her brow, she couldn't help but verbalize her curiosity, wondering aloud if this change in the exam schedule was a mandatory adjustment or if there might be some flexibility in terms of attendance. While their plump friend indulged in chewing on a juicy shrimp, it couldn't resist the urge to express its perspective on the matter. Amidst the savory delight, it chimed in, noting that as the year-end approached, they would also be required to undergo the qualification test. In its candid opinion, this accumulation of examinations and shifting schedules had indeed begun to feel quite intricate and vexing, leaving an air of complexity and annoyance hovering over their impending challenges. Zhang Yu, noticing his friend's growing unease, reached out with a reassuring tap on his shoulder and kindly reminded him not to dwell on worries, assuring him that his qualifications and abilities were more than sufficient to guarantee success in the impending test. His friend, responding with a hint of sarcasm, couldn't help but offer a somewhat mocking expression of gratitude for this well-intended but somewhat obvious show of support. In a reflective moment, their friend decided to open up and share a rather eerie childhood memory, 
recounting a vivid incident from when he was a mere seven years old. He recalled a spine-chilling encounter with a specter from an alien species. As the story unfolded, he described how he had been relentlessly pursued by this otherworldly being until rescuers finally arrived to intervene. However, the traumatic experience had taken a toll on his young self, resulting in both physical illness and enduring psychological disturbances that lingered long after the ordeal had ended. Zhang Yu proudly stated that if he were in their friend's situation, he would have confronted the alien creature. Annoyed by his bragging, Lu Yao Yao told him that not everyone would act recklessly like him. Lu Yao Yao expressed their viewpoint regarding their friend's approach, likening it to the mental quality of an ostrich, where one tries to escape or ignore a problem instead of facing it head-on. They went on to mention that this approach was something many people tend to adopt. Lu Yao Yao believed that having a mindset where you avoid trouble and seek safety is generally a good thing. But even though this approach has its benefits, it's important to acknowledge that the events caused by the alien species had a profound and lasting impact on the people involved. These events, the things that happened, became deeply rooted in the memories and feelings of those who went through them. It's like they became a part of how they see the world and how they feel about it. These experiences left strong marks on their hearts and minds and they continued to affect how they view life and everything around them. While relishing the flavors of their meal, a hushed silence settled over the group, marking the gradual descent into a more profound and introspective conversation. A heavy silence enveloped all four of them, shrouding the table in a palpable stillness as they delved into the difficult and unsettling topic of their past encounters and unfortunate experiences with the aliens. Yang Yu, ever the peacemaker, decided to take a proactive step in an attempt to lighten the atmosphere and foster a sense of joy among the group. In a bid to lift the spirits and dispel the gravity that had settled over the group, Zhang Yu decided to inject a sense of levity into the situation. He turned to his friends with a warm smile on his face and, with a jovial tone, reassured them that there was no need to maintain such solemn expressions any longer. He raised his glass in a toast, inviting them all to join in, symbolizing a collective desire to shift the mood towards a more cheerful and convivial direction. Just as Zhang Yu was about to make that much-awaited toast with his friends, a sudden and unexpected burst of noise and commotion erupted, catching them all off guard and effectively interrupting their moment of connection and celebration. Lu Yaoyao's quick instincts kicked in the moment she heard the startling sound and a sense of fear washed over her as she immediately recognized the noise as something she had dreaded, the pollution detection alarms. A disquieting and ominous atmosphere descended upon the once bustling commercial center, casting a foreboding shadow over the surroundings. The cause of the series' sensation became painfully clear as it became apparent that the alien species had indeed invaded the commercial district, unsettling both the physical environment and the emotions of those present. Surprisingly, despite the intrusion of the alien species into the bustling commercial center, the majority of the people present did not display immediate signs of alarm or panic. Instead, they seemed to remain remarkably composed, steadfastly maintaining their positions within the vicinity, which only added to the enigmatic atmosphere that now enveloped the area. In a sudden burst of urgency, a man's voice pierced through the previously subdued atmosphere, his loud shout jolting the people around him into action as he urgently implored them to flee from the impending danger. A collective sense of panic gripped the entire commercial center as people scrambled in haste to make their escape. The once orderly crowd descended into chaos as individuals jostled and pushed one another in their desperate attempts to navigate through the alarming and frightening situation, each person driven by a primal instinct for self-preservation. Zhang Yu and his friends watched with a mix of concern and astonishment as they observed the frantic rush of people attempting to swiftly vacate the area where the alien species had made its intrusion. The sheer intensity of the panic around them served as a stark reminder of the gravity of the situation unfolding before their eyes. Amidst the chaotic scene of people crowding and rushing to escape, Yang Yu's friend couldn't help but be absorbed by the unfolding events. Meanwhile, their girlfriend, increasingly worried about their next course of action, turned to him and posed the pressing question of what they should do in this moment of crisis. Lu Yao Yao took the initiative to reassure her friends amid the chaos, emphasizing that there was no need for panic. She encouraged them to remain calm and assured them that they could navigate their way out of the situation safely. Lu Yao Yao's surprise deepened as Zhang Yu, with a serious and determined expression, directed her to move away from their current position, clearly signaling that he was about to take some decisive action. In a stunning display of strength and determination, Zhang Yu unleashed a powerful punch that struck the wall with such force that it created an opening, effectively carving out a path for their escape. Lu Yao Yao stood in stunned silence, 
her disbelief palpable, as she watched this remarkable and unexpected action unfold before her eyes, leaving her in awe of Zhang Yu's astounding abilities. Her gaze remained fixed on Zhang Yu, her expression a blend of astonishment and disbelief, as he pierced the wall with unwavering determination, gleaming in his eyes. Amid the crowded exit, Yang Yu sprang into action, creating a clear path for himself and his friends to make their escape. With a sense of urgency, he directed them to move quickly and hasten their retreat toward the established escape route, determined to ensure their safety amidst the chaos. While his friends successfully made their way out of the commercial center, Yang Yu remained vigilant, scanning the surroundings for any potential signs of danger. As Yang Yu continued his vigilant observation of the area, his attention was drawn to a frantic man desperately attempting to escape from the impending threat of the alien species, which appeared to be on the verge of emerging. To their profound astonishment and terror, the menacing alien species materialized before them, confirming their worst fears as it brazenly invaded their world and descended upon the commercial center. Zhang Yu, his gaze fixed on the monstrous alien presence before him, grappled with a momentous decision. He contemplated the possibility of transforming into his shadow form but hesitated, fully aware that such a transformation would be visible to everyone present, potentially altering the course of events dramatically and unpredictably. Zhang Yu reached out and firmly seized Lu Yao Yao's wrist, his intent clear that they needed to make a swift escape from the looming danger that the alien species posed. In a desperate bid for safety, the quartet sprinted away from the menacing alien presence, joining the large group of people who were also fleeing the area in search of a secure refuge. As they continued their frantic escape, Lu Yao Yao couldn't help but cast a backward glance, her thoughts consumed by a troubling question. She pondered how the alien species had managed to breach the supposed defenses set up near the commercial center, a fact that had left her perplexed and deeply concerned. Amid their desperate flight to safety, Zhang Yu, with a sense of grim determination, responded to Lu Yao Yao's concerns by acknowledging that it was too late to ponder the breach of defenses. Instead, he urged them to concentrate solely on their escape. He added a glimmer of hope, assuring her that the exit was within reach and that they weren't far from safety. He stressed the urgency, emphasizing that a swift exit was necessary to prevent a potential catastrophe within the commercial center. Taking charge of the situation, Yang Yu directed their group toward a specific escape route, indicating the direction they should head. With purpose and determination, Zhang Yu led the way as they followed his guidance, striving to reach safety as quickly as possible. To their great astonishment, an eerie and peculiar sensation began to envelop their surroundings, leaving them with an unsettling feeling, as if something out of the ordinary was unfolding around them. With a sense of urgency, Zhang Yu cautioned his friends to exercise extreme caution, recognizing the signs of imminent danger as the surroundings began to crumble around them. He specifically urged Lu Yao Yao to cling tightly to him, fully aware that they needed to brace for the unfolding chaos and uncertainty. As the ground beneath them began to disintegrate and give way, Yang Yu and his friends found themselves tumbling into the collapsing earth. A chorus of voices, including Zhang Yu and his friends, rang out in desperate cries for assistance. Despite the intense pain surging through his body after the fall, Zhang Yu exhibited remarkable resilience as he determined to rise to his feet. His tenacity and willpower were evident as he struggled to regain his footing amidst their adversity. Once he managed to stand up, Yang Yu cast a concerned gaze toward his friends, inquiring genuinely about their well-being. He wanted to ensure that they were all okay and unharmed despite the chaotic events they had just endured. Relieved to see Lu Yao Yao and their friend on their feet, Zhang Yu received reassurance that they were indeed okay. They shared that they had only sustained minor scratches during the ordeal, which provided a momentary sense of relief amidst the chaos. However, their fat friend let out a painful cry, his voice filled with agony, as he voiced his concern that his leg might be broken due to a falling rock that had struck him. Responding swiftly to their plump friend's anguished call for assistance, Zhang Yu and the rest of the group rushed over to his side. Their expressions reflected a mixture of concern and determination as they approached, their hearts filled with genuine worry for their friend's well-being. Zhang Yu told him not to panic, and upon reaching him, Zhang Yu gently assessed the situation, his eyes falling on the injured leg that had borne the brunt of a falling rock. With a sense of urgency and concern for their injured friend, Zhang Yu wasted no time in swiftly clearing away the debris that had fallen onto his legs. Recognizing the importance of a swift response, Yang Yu efficiently cleared away the debris, showing solidarity with their injured friend. Lu Yao Yao promptly joined him, working together to assist their friend and ensure that he received the care and attention he required during this challenging situation. 
Once the debris was cleared and they had a clearer view, their friend let out a piercing scream of pain. It was evident that his leg had suffered a severe injury with both a fracture and a twisted aspect to it, causing excruciating agony. With their injured friend in considerable pain and distress, Young Yu acted quickly, ensuring that the removed debris was safely disposed of and out of harm's way. Responding with remarkable resourcefulness, Lu Yao Yao swiftly took out a medicine, her quick thinking aimed at alleviating their friend's pain and providing some relief in this critical moment. Lu handed over the medicine and advised him to take the painkillers, explaining that they would offer temporary relief from the intense discomfort he was experiencing. As their injured friend took the painkillers, he gave Zhang Yu a curious and somewhat bewildered look, inquiring about their current location and the sudden onset of darkness that had enveloped them. In response to their friend's inquiries, Lu Yao Yao admitted that she, too, was uncertain about their exact location and the nature of the events unfolding around them. She expressed her bewilderment, acknowledging that she had never encountered such a perplexing and unfamiliar situation before. Zhang Yu reached out and touched the ground, which provided him with a crucial clue about their whereabouts. He shared with his friends that they were currently in the basement of the commercial center, explaining the darkness that surrounded them. As he touched the ground to ascertain their location, Zhang Yu noticed a distinct and unusual sensation that deviated from the expected norm. A strangely familiar feeling coursed through his fingers. Examining his hand with astonishment, Zhang Yu couldn't believe the inexplicably familiar sensation he had experienced. Amid their uncertain circumstances, he surveyed his surroundings with a growing sense of unease and observation. Zhang Yu couldn't help but entertain a startling notion in his mind, he began to wonder if perhaps they had been drawn into what he could only describe as the shadow layer. As they continued to navigate this bewildering and perilous environment, the harrowing cries of other individuals who had fallen and sustained injuries filled the air. Debris had rained down upon them, causing a multitude of injuries and pain. Observing the countless individuals who had fallen victim to the shadow layer, Zhang Yu couldn't help but grimly acknowledge the severity of the situation. It became clear to him that a substantial number of people had been trapped within the shadow layer, facing a dire predicament. Moreover, the inherent challenges of navigating this strange and unfamiliar realm made their escape prospects appear bleak. The sobering realization that the night patrol division, while undoubtedly on their way, might take considerable time to reach them only added to the gravity of the situation, heightening their sense of urgency and the need for a swift resolution. With a concerned gaze fixed upon his friends, Zhang Yu contemplated the grim reality that they now found themselves in. He recognized that even without the immediate threat of the alien species, the presence of potentially lethal pollution within the shadow layer posed a significant danger to their well-being. Lost in contemplation, Zhang Yu pondered the urgent need to expedite their escape from the shadow layer as quickly as possible. Turning to Lu Yao Yao with a sense of urgency, Zhang Yu asked about her father's watch. And she realized that she indeed had her father's watch. This watch possessed a unique capability, it allowed her to send a distressed signal to the night patrols. With a newfound sense of hope ignited by the knowledge of Lu Yao Yao's watch, her friends looked at her with anticipation. A hopeful smile graced Lu Yao Yao's face as she and her friends collectively took a step forward, recognizing the necessity of seeking help and taking decisive action to ensure their safety within the shadow lair. One of the friends with glasses warmly praised Lu Yao Yao for her quick thinking and resourcefulness, acknowledging that her intelligence had paved the way for their potential rescue. While Zhang Yu felt relieved knowing that Lu Yao Yao's watch had the potential to assist them, he couldn't help but contemplate the uncertainty of how quickly the rescue would arrive. Amid this uncertainty, he clung to the hope that the watch's capabilities might offer them some temporary respite from the dangerous pollution within the shadow layer, allowing them to endure until help finally arrived. Understanding the imminent threat posed by the alien species, Zhang Yu adopted a vigilant and ready stance, poised for action at a moment's notice. He recognized that relaxation was not an option, as the alien species could strike at any moment, and he remained prepared to defend himself and his friends against any potential threat. As the alien species began to manifest in their vicinity, a tense and apprehensive atmosphere settled over Zhang Yu and his friends. Panic and fear swept through the group of people who had also been trapped in the same location, their terror mounting as they witnessed the alien species materializing before their eyes. Zhang Yu's alarm heightened as he maintained his vigilant stance, his readiness escalating in response to the presence of the alien species. With unwavering determination, Zhang Yu and Lu Yao Yao assumed a protective stance, positioning themselves at the forefront to shield their friends from the approaching alien species. Zhang Yu stood in defense mode, his resolve unshaken, 
a peculiar and unsettling aura washed over him, filling the air with an eerie and mysterious energy. Just as they were bracing themselves for a confrontation with the alien species, the ground beneath them suddenly crumbled and deteriorated, leaving them utterly surprised. Lu Yao Yao found herself engulfed in a cloud of swirling dirt and billowing smoke, causing her to cough incessantly as she struggled to breathe amidst the dusty chaos. Despite her state of shock and the lingering pain in her arms from the impact, she called out to her friends, desperately wanting to ensure their safety and well-being in the aftermath of the abrupt crash. One of their close and compassionate female friends swiftly made her way towards Lu Yao Yao's side with genuine concern etched across her face. Amidst all the confusion and the thick swirling smoke, their larger friend let out a loud and worried shout, trying hard to see where his two girlfriends were, as the smoke made it difficult to see clearly. When he finally spotted them, he quickly asked about Zhang Yu, expressing deep concern for their other friend and wanting to make sure she was okay. After they had a moment to catch their breath and regain some strength following the crash, one of their female friends leaned in and gently urged Lu Yao Yao to direct her attention to something extraordinary that had captured her gaze. Prompted by her friend, Lu Yao Yao turned her eyes in the same direction. Right before their very eyes, an immense deep fissure had opened up in the ground, resembling the aftermath of a powerful earthquake. It was a sight so astonishing that it left everyone present in a state of profound shock and disbelief. The immediate aftermath was marked by a profound and heavy silence that enveloped the surroundings, broken only by the occasional moan of pain or the soft shuffle of people attempting to make sense of the chaotic situation. The girl who had also been caught in the crash found herself in the throes of this disorienting and chaotic situation. Despite the pain and the chaotic mess surrounding her, the girl was determined to get up. Amid all the chaos, she demonstrated her strength and bravery, shining like a bright light in the darkness. Sitting there with only one eye barely open, she couldn't help but wonder about what had happened to her and the place around her. Gradually, her memory started to piece together the events leading up to this bewildering moment. She recalled how she had been out shopping with her friend at a bustling commercial center, enjoying the lively atmosphere and the excitement of finding new items. In her hazy and bewildered state, she began calling out for her friend, her voice trembling with worry as she sought a reassuring response amidst the disarray that surrounded them. As she continued to call out, her trembling hands brushed against something on the ground, sending a shiver of surprise through her. Instinctively, her fingers closed around the object, her curiosity piqued by this unexpected discovery amidst the chaos. Staring at her friend in disbelief, she realized that her friend was no longer alive. It was a moment of deep shock and confusion as she struggled to come to terms with the harsh reality of what had just unfolded before her eyes. While still grappling with the shock of her friend's tragic demise, a sudden and surreal turn of events sent a fresh wave of fear coursing through her veins. Behind her, an entirely unfamiliar and otherworldly alien species had emerged. Their bizarre presence cast a chilling shadow over her already distressing predicament. These alien beings, unlike anything she had ever encountered, appeared to be menacingly approaching her with ominous intent, brandishing sharp weapons that suggested danger and harm. Filled with fear and confusion, she swiftly turned around to confront the mysterious aliens that had suddenly appeared behind her. Tears streamed down her cheeks, a testament to the overwhelming emotions coursing through her. As she scanned her surroundings, her heart pounded with fear. She realized that the alien was closing in, poised for an attack. In that dire moment, a flood of thoughts raced through her mind, and she couldn't help but contemplate the grim possibility that her life might come to an end in this unimaginable and terrifying encounter. The reality of her predicament weighed heavily on her. She felt trapped and cornered, with no escape route and no way to defend herself. The feeling of helplessness dawned on her, and she wondered if this was the unfortunate end to her journey. It was a stark and sobering realization that left her grappling with the harshness of fate. Only in the movies had she seen something like this. As the menacing monster drew closer, its intentions increasingly clear, her mind became a whirlwind of thoughts and imaginings. In that perilous moment, she couldn't help but entertain a fleeting and desperate hope that perhaps she could be the heroine in a dramatic movie scene. In her mind's eye, she envisioned a valiant hero, strong and fearless, bursting onto the scene to rescue her from the clutches of impending doom. Or, at the very least, she imagined the sudden appearance of a courageous bystander, someone willing to step forward and lend a helping hand in her darkest hour. She made the heart-wrenching decision to close her eyes and accept what seemed like an inevitable fate. In that somber moment, 
she resigned herself to the harsh reality that the heroic scenarios of movies and stories were indeed a world apart from the grimness of her current situation. In her mind, the belief that no savior or help would miraculously appear weighed heavily. Just when she had braced herself to accept her grim fate, a sudden and unexpected turn of events unfolded before her disbelieving eyes. Out of nowhere, a fierce and unexpected attack was launched against the menacing alien, rescuing her from the brink of peril. The rescue came like a bolt from the blue, shattering the bleakness of her. It was like a scene from a scary movie, where the hero got hurt while protecting her. When she cautiously opened her eyes, still in a state of disbelief and wonder, she was met with a truly miraculous sight. Yung Yu, also known as the assassin on YouTube, emerged as the unexpected savior, bravely stepping forward to halt the attack of the alien species and whisk the girl away from imminent danger. As she gazed upon Yung Yu, a smile of relief and gratitude blossomed on her face, expressing sheer joy and appreciation for the timely rescue by a familiar and unexpected hero. Caught off guard by Yung Yu's sudden and aggressive intervention, the monster was forcefully thrown to the ground, its surprise evident in its fumbled attempt to regain its footing. As the girl looked more closely at the man who had bravely rescued her from danger, a dawning realization washed over her, and she began to tremble with a mixture of awe and disbelief. With quivering lips, she mustered the courage to speak, her voice filled with a blend of astonishment and gratitude as she addressed the person who had come to her rescue. Yung Yu's remarkable intervention in stopping the monster's attack was facilitated by a formidable technique known as the Shadow Claw. This unique ability, acquired from the hunter, boasted significantly enhanced destructive power and an impressive degree of flexibility. It allowed Yung Yu to effectively counter the menacing creature's advances with precision and strength, ultimately saving the day through this exceptional display of skill and prowess. With the girl now safely behind him, Yung Yu swiftly vanished from her sight, his movements like a fleeting shadow. He wasted no time in heading directly toward the looming threat of the monster, determined to confront it head-on and put an end to the danger once and for all. Summoning all his might and determination, Yung Yu unleashed a devastating and resolute attack on the monster, his strike fueled by unwavering resolve. In a desperate bid to regain its footing and avoid being pushed back any further, the monster swiftly employed its sharp claws to anchor itself firmly into the ground. Gasping for air and exhausted, the monster struggled to regain its strength in the aftermath of Zhang Yu's powerful and relentless attack. As she watched Zhang Yu, the assassin whom she greatly admired and had closely followed through his videos, her eyes shimmered with a profound sense of appreciation and disbelief. It felt like her wildest dreams had come true, seeing her idol face to face amid this extraordinary and surreal situation. Her heart swelled with gratitude and wonder, finding it hard to believe that this encounter was real. Zhang Yu, amidst the intensity of the battle and the dire circumstances, found himself taken aback by the girl's reaction. He was both confused and pleasantly surprised to see her looking at him with a mixture of awe and appreciation. Her smile was directed towards him, filled with admiration and gratitude. Boldly, the girl approached Zhang Yu, taking his hands into her own. Her words spilled forth with excitement as she confessed her status as his biggest fan, recounting how she had diligently watched all of his videos and gained immense inspiration from his work. She continued to express her deep appreciation for his heroism and the impact he had on her life. Zhang's sharp observation led him to notice the girl's torn and disheveled clothing, a detail that had likely escaped her amid the chaos. When he pointed it out, the girl blushed with shyness, her cheeks tinted with embarrassment. Playfully, she questioned where he had been looking. Ever the gentleman, Zhang Yu responded with tact and consideration, explaining that he had noticed it as a reminder for her to be cautious in her actions. The girl, with a playful glint in her eye, attempted to lighten the mood by teasingly suggesting that if Zhang Yu liked, she could go back and change into a fresh dress. Zhang Yu couldn't help but be taken aback by the girl's playful suggestion, and a subtle blush crept onto his cheeks as he entertained the thought. His reaction, including a slight drool, was a testament to the unexpected and flirtatious nature of the exchange, which had caught him off guard amid their extraordinary circumstances. Curious about the details, Zhang Yu asked the girl if the dress she intended to change into was made of silk, a question that hinted at his intrigue. In response, the girl playfully emphasized that it wasn't just about the silk, she also had plans to bring some spicy chicken along with her. Amidst the exchange between Zhang Yu and the girl, the alien that had been momentarily subdued was left in a state of curiosity and confusion. Recognizing what it saw as a favorable moment, the alien species decided to take action, charging aggressively toward Zhang Yu. 
Zhang Yu quickly snapped back to reality, his instincts alerting him to the approaching danger. Realizing that the alien was charging toward them, he swiftly shifted his attention to the girl and urgently conveyed that they could discuss the dress later. Effectively redirecting the focus back to the imminent threat and the need to address it promptly. The girl watched in fascination as Zhang Yu showcased his extraordinary skills. His movements were characterized by grace and an almost ethereal quality. To her amazement, he seemed to vanish beneath the ground, disappearing with an enigmatic flair that left her in awe of his abilities. In Zhang Yu's mind, the hunt had begun. With his unique skills and determination, he was fully engaged in pursuing the alien threat. As Zhang Yu disappeared beneath the ground, employing his shadow skills to their full extent, the alien species was left bewildered and disoriented. It scanned its surroundings frantically, its senses on high alert, seeking to pinpoint the potential source of the impending attack. Its confusion grew with each passing moment. The monster was taken by surprise as it felt a web-like, spider-like sensation on its back, a mysterious touch that sent shivers down its spine. Utilizing his unique spider-like abilities, Zhang Yu took control of the situation, capturing the monster and drawing it closer to him. With precision and determination, Zhang Yu used his shadow claws to inflict injuries on the monster. Although his attack caused some damage, it became evident that the creature was resilient, and the inflicted injuries were minor. After inflicting the injury, Zhang Yu quickly planted his feet firmly on the ground, preventing the monster from evading his attack entirely. As he turned around and observed the alien struggling to maintain its balance, Zhang Yu couldn't help but reflect on his abilities. He recognized that while he had managed to weaken the creature, his strength and precision may have fallen slightly short of delivering a decisive blow. In that moment of self-assessment, he acknowledged the room for improvement in his skills. Realizing that with greater mastery, he might have been able to dispatch the alien with a single, well-placed strike. Without hesitation, Zhang Yu immediately launched another attack, displaying determination and precision. He swiftly moved to take advantage of the creature's vulnerability, aiming to bring the battle to a decisive conclusion. To his surprise, he sensed a sudden shift in the monster's energy, signaling its preparation for a counterattack. Caught off guard by the monster's swift counterattack, Zhang Yu had little time to react. However, he managed to defend himself by quickly deploying. His shadow claws as a makeshift barrier, using them to shield against the onslaught. It was a tense and perilous moment as he fought to protect himself from the creature's ferocious assault. With adrenaline still coursing through his veins, Zhang Yu took a moment to catch his breath and regain his composure. Zhang Yu's surprise deepened as two more members of the same alien species emerged onto the scene. Licking the blood from his hands, Zhang Yu couldn't help but ponder the daunting reality of facing not one, but three of these formidable alien creatures simultaneously. Amidst his contemplation of the dire situation, Zhang Yu's attention was suddenly drawn to the girl, who was recording him with her phone. Her encouraging words cut through the chaos as she offered him motivation by promising something intriguing if he emerged victorious. Zhang Yu couldn't contain his excitement upon hearing the girl's motivating words. A rush of emotion surged through him, and his cheeks flushed bright red as he blushed all over. With newfound determination and a renewed sense of purpose, Zhang Yu wasted no time. He charged toward the alien with his shadow claws at the ready, poised for a fierce and relentless assault. Zhang Yu's agility and skill allowed him to swiftly evade the monster's attack, leaving the creature's assault to strike nothing but the ground as the second monster charged towards him. Upon assessing the situation, Zhang Yu realized that his body was suspended in midair, leaving him with limited options for evasion. In a decisive move, he unleashed a web-like lion from his arsenal of abilities, aiming to entangle the creature and disrupt its attack. Zhang Yu's web-like lion successfully snared the monster's sharp claws in its sticky embrace, abruptly halting the creature's attempted attack. The monster struggled to break free from the adhesive trap, leaving it momentarily immobilized and vulnerable. Seizing this opportunity, Zhang Yu wasted no time and launched another assault. With precision and determination, he unleashed his shadow claws, targeting the vulnerable creature and pressing his advantage to deliver a decisive blow in the ongoing battle. Turning to face the aliens with a confident smile, Zhang Yu conveyed a clear message of resilience and determination. With unwavering resolve, he made it known that despite their formidable strength and numbers, defeating him would not be an easy task. However, in a moment of reflection, Zhang Yu's guard momentarily dropped, leaving him vulnerable. Seizing the opportunity, the alien launched a swift and devastating attack, slicing through Zhang Yu's shoulders from front to back. 
In the aftermath of the brutal attack, Zhang Yu found himself bloodied and in severe pain, coughing up blood as he struggled to maintain his composure under the injuries inflicted by the monster's claws. Despite his injuries and the intense pain, Zhang Yu summoned every ounce of his remaining strength and managed to evade the deadly side-wielding alien with remarkable swiftness. His agility and combat instincts remained sharp, allowing him to sidestep the imminent threat and narrowly avoid another potentially fatal attack. Exhaustion began to take its toll, and he couldn't help but marvel at the coordinated efforts of the alien species, which effectively collaborated in their pursuit of him. Recognizing the need to focus his efforts on a single adversary to increase his chances of survival, Zhang Yu strategically summoned his spider web ability. With a tactical mindset, he pondered how best to incapacitate one of the aliens before dealing with the others, devising a plan to tip the odds in his favor and turn the tide of the battle. However, his plan was thwarted as the alien monster displayed a heightened sense of awareness and agility. It seemed to have an uncanny ability to anticipate Zhang Yu's movements and pinpoint his location with eerie precision. This unexpected maneuver added another layer of complexity to the battle, making Zhang Yu's task even more challenging. He couldn't help but wonder if the aliens had somehow discovered his location or developed a heightened awareness of his movements, adding intrigue and intensifying the challenges he faced. With the three formidable aliens relentlessly charging toward his location, Zhang Yu found himself facing an increasingly dire and overwhelming situation. As the battle reached a critical juncture, the outcome remained uncertain. With his location now visible to the aliens, Zhang Yu braced himself for the inevitable clash. Facing the combined assault of all three aliens simultaneously, Zhang Yu had no choice but to stand his ground in defense, without the opportunity to retreat into the shadows. He focused on protecting himself from their relentless attacks, which inflicted serious injuries and gradually wore down his health. With two of the aliens relentlessly assaulting Zhang Yu from the front, he was fully occupied with defending himself from their attacks. However, the third alien, taking advantage of the chaotic situation, swiftly moved to flank Zhang Yu from the rear, aiming to catch him off guard. Amidst the chaos of the battle, Zhang Yu devised a plan to expose a flaw in his defense, luring his enemies into a strategic trap. The surprise attack from the alien on his back had taken a toll on Zhang Yu's health, causing it to plummet to a precarious 35%. With his intention to lure the alien into attacking a perceived flaw, Zhang Yu began to mark the target. As he marked the alien and pondered his strategy, Zhang Yu couldn't help but reflect on the consequences of his recent actions. His decision to release his last video had led to a surge in his bad reputation, but it had also unlocked a hidden potential within him. Now, his ability to mark the aliens had been extended to three seconds, providing him with a crucial advantage in this life-or-death battle. As Zhang Yu utilized his ability to mark the target, an additional effect came into play. The target, temporarily overwhelmed by fear in the face of this mysterious ability, would experience a momentary loss of coherent thought. This fear-induced lapse in rationality further tipped the balance in Zhang Yu's favor, providing him with a crucial advantage during the critical moments of the battle. With each passing moment that Zhang Yu marked the target, he gained a strategic advantage. The ticking clock worked in his favor, allowing him to inch closer to the monster while it was temporarily incapacitated by fear. This advantage enabled him to position himself for a more precise and devastating attack, turning the tables in a battle that had once seemed overwhelmingly challenging. With the alien temporarily incapacitated by fear due to his ability, Zhang Yu wasted no time. He swiftly moved into action, capitalizing on the advantage he had gained. His attack was calculated and precise, aimed at exploiting the moment of vulnerability in the alien's defenses, closing in on the temporarily incapacitated monster. Consequently, the monster's health points rapidly plummeted, dwindling to a mere 7%. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, Zhang Yu wasted no time. He swiftly targeted the weak point on the monster's chest, fully aware that removing it would seal the alien's demise and secure his victory. With unwavering determination and precise timing, Zhang Yu successfully extracted the alien's heart, dealing a fatal blow. The air filled with a piercing sound and an agonizing scream, a testament to the creature's excruciating demise. Zhang Yu's decisive action ensured his victory, and the once formidable adversary now lay defeated at his feet. With the threat neutralized, he stood as a testament to the brave spirit of a skilled hunter, having navigated a dangerous encounter and emerged victorious. As the system notified him of his successful hunt, Zhang Yu's shadow form underwent a significant enhancement. His recovery speed increased, 
bolstering his resilience in future battles. Additionally, the newly unlocked form granted him valuable skills, including intimidation and the ability to double his experience gain. The injuries sustained during the grueling battle began to heal rapidly and effortlessly. His newfound recovery speed allowed him to bounce back from wounds and battle fatigue, leaving him in a state of renewed vitality and readiness for whatever challenges lay ahead. Rejuvenated and fully recovered, Zhang Yu set out with renewed determination to confront the remaining two aliens. The aliens became increasingly cautious in their actions as their battle with Zhang Yu continued. Zhang Yu taunted the aliens, mocking their reluctance to engage in further combat. It was evident that they were struggling to find a way to confront him, and this entertained Zhang Yu. Recognizing the aliens' hesitance to engage in combat, he prepared himself for the next phase of the battle. Despite his earlier taunts, Zhang Yu's impatience grew, and he decided to take matters into his own hands. With determination in his eyes, he swiftly closed the gap between himself and the aliens, signaling his intent to initiate the battle. No longer willing to wait for their hesitant response, Zhang Yu was on the verge of engaging them in combat. However, just as Zhang Yu was about to engage the aliens, a sudden burst of blinding light erupted, catching him off guard and leaving him momentarily stunned. As he stared at the strange light in the shadow layer, Zhang Yu couldn't help but question his earlier strong urge to attack the aliens. The sudden appearance of the light seemed to have disrupted his previous intentions, leaving him in a state of contemplation about its significance and its influence on his actions. To Zhang Yu's surprise, the aliens let out screams of agony when exposed to the light. It was as if they had an adverse reaction to the illumination, causing them significant discomfort and pain. Confronted with the advancing, light that caused them visible pain, the aliens quickly acted to escape its radiance. Their instinctual response was to put as much distance as possible between themselves and the source of their discomfort. In a surprising turn of events, the enigmatic source of the radiant light in the shadow layer was finally revealed to be the night patrols led by their commander, Song Chingen. This luminous phenomenon, now known as the Eternal Flame, possessed remarkable properties that had eluded comprehension until this moment. The Eternal Flame had the extraordinary ability to disperse shadows, casting them aside like drawn curtains. It illuminated the previously obscured darkness of the shadow layer. With the radiant glow of the Eternal Flame, Commander Song Chingen took advantage of the newfound illumination, utilizing his formidable powers to extend his influence over the alien entities. He compelled them to remain in place, rendering their attempts to escape futile under his unwavering control. Zhang Yu stood frozen, his heart pounding, as the night commander pointed at him with an air of authority. It felt as if a mere gesture from the commander could erase him from existence in the shadow layer. The sudden turn of events had Zhang Yu on edge, unsure of what was about to transpire next in this mysterious realm. With anxiety trembling in his voice, Zhang Yu urgently shouted to assure the night commander that he posed no threat. Zhang Yu shouted out, attempting to assure the night commander that they were not enemies. However, unbeknownst to them, one of the aliens took advantage of this moment to stealthily approach the night commander from behind. Seeing it as a prime opportunity to catch the commander off guard and launch an attack, the alien charged swiftly with determination. To its utter surprise, the night commander displayed remarkable alertness and swiftly dispatched the alien with a single strike, causing it to vanish. Zhang Yu stood there stunned by the sheer power demonstrated by the night commander, obliterating the alien with one precise strike. In that moment, they couldn't help but contemplate the potential consequences if that attack had been directed at them instead. They had no doubt that such a strike could have instantly ended their life. Zhang Yu approached one of the night guards and extended their hand for a handshake. They mentioned that they had arrived rather late, just as the battle was concluding. The night guard, displaying regret for the delay, proceeded to ask Zhang Yu about their identity, genuinely curious and desiring to understand who they were. Zhang Yu gestured toward the injured girl and emphasized to the night guard that their own identity was of secondary concern in the situation. They stressed the importance of promptly attending to the girl's injuries. The girl, taken aback by Zhang Yu's unexpected intervention, thought that they were the ones who would take her back home. Zhang Yu, with a hint of playfulness, swiftly clarified to the girl that their previous statement was a joke. They reassured her that as a dedicated member of the night guard, their duty to protect the city always took priority. With a respectful salute to the night patrol, Zhang Yu prepared to take their leave, leaving behind a slightly lighter atmosphere amidst the darkness of the shadow lair. In the wake of Zhang Yu's swift departure, both the night patrols and the girl were left in a state of surprise and quiet.
Contemplation, their thoughts lingering on this unexpected encounter in the shadow lair with a mysterious man who appeared as a shadow. The night commander's curiosity about Zhang Yu's name led to a conversation among the subordinates. They discussed how Zhang Yu had gained fame as an influencer on a popular platform recently, but they expressed doubts about their strength, considering them to be at a basic level, which they referred to as level 1, due to their shadow abilities. Upon hearing that Zhang Yu was considered to be at level 1, the knight commander seemed surprised and perhaps a bit curious about their abilities. Holding the flickering eternal flame in their hands, the knight commander found themselves deep in thought, contemplating the mysterious encounter with Zhang Yu, a supposed level 1 shadow user. The way Zhang Yu had effortlessly appeared before them and then disappeared into the shadows left the commander questioning whether there was more to Zhang Yu's abilities than met the eye. The girl, sitting on the floor in tears, felt a deep disappointment. Zhang Yu, whom she initially believed would be the one to escort her home, abruptly left without fulfilling her expectations. After assessing herself in the aftermath of the accident, Lu Yao Yao took it upon herself to venture forth and search for Zhang Yu amidst the tragic scene of death and destruction. Her determined footsteps echoed through the eerie silence that enveloped her, with each lifeless body she encountered serving as a grim reminder of the chaos that had unfolded. As she relentlessly searched for Zhang Yu, Lu Yao Yao's anxiety grew with each unanswered call and the chilling presence of the lifeless bodies that surrounded her. The ominous darkness cast a shadow over her quest, and a sense of dread intensified with every step further into the grim aftermath. In the dimly lit surroundings, illuminated only by the feeble glow of her wristwatch, Lu Yao Yao pressed forward, her heart heavy with concern as she fervently wished for Zhang Yu's safety. His form remained hidden within the mysterious shroud of darkness, beyond her anxious sight. Amidst her persistent search, a sudden booming shout from the darkness pierced the silence, causing Lu Yao Yao's heart to leap. She turned toward the source of the sound and found Zhang Yu lying there, his presence a reassuring beacon in the gloom of the dimly lit and eerie surroundings of the shadow lair. Zhang Yu's voice trembled with fear and urgency as he called out to Lu Yao Yao, the desperation evident in his tone. His heart pounded in his chest like a drum, and a suffocating tightness gripped him, making every breath a struggle. In that vulnerable moment, he yearned for her presence and aid. Lu Yao Yao's heart raced with worry as she cautiously attempted to remove the stones one by one. Her hands shook with a mix of fear and determination, well aware of the urgency in Zhang Yu's strained and desperate voice as he called for her assistance. She hesitated and was torn between the desire to quickly help him and the fear that pulling him directly might not be safe. Uncertain of the consequences, as Zhang Yu was effortlessly and swiftly freed from the pile of stones, Lu Yao Yao couldn't help but be left in stunned silence, her eyes wide with amazement. Lu Yao Yao, still puzzled by the ease with which Zhang Yu had been freed from the stones, pointed to the one in question and asked with curiosity if the stone was holding him because it didn't seem that heavy. Zhang Yu admitted to Lu Yao Yao that although it might not have been impossible for him to get out on his own, he was too scared to try earlier because he was afraid his body wouldn't respond properly. Zhang Yu attempted to downplay the situation by feigning ignorance about the origin of the long injury on his back when Lu Yao Yao inquired about it suggesting he didn't know how it happened, when in fact, it was inflicted by a strange creature he encountered earlier when he tried to save a girl. Growing increasingly concerned for the safety of their other friends, Zhang Yu questioned Lu Yao Yao about their whereabouts, his voice laced with worry and uncertainty. Amidst the eerie silence and dimly lit surroundings, Luis quickly relayed to Zhang Yu that their other friends had been found and rescued by the night patrols. With a sense of gratitude in his eyes, Zhang Yu turned to Lu Yao Yao and expressed his appreciation for her decision to stay and find him. Lu Yao Yao blushed slightly in response, admitting that if she had left without finding him, she wouldn't have known how to explain the situation to Master Lai. Zhang Yu remained silent, unable to find the words to express the depth of his emotions and gratitude towards Lu Yao Yao. He simply gazed at her, his eyes reflecting the overwhelming feelings that swirled within him. At that moment, his heart brimmed with appreciation for the unwavering support and care she had shown him throughout their harrowing journey in the shadowy realm. It was a tear born of gratitude and the deep concern Lu Yao Yao had shown for his well-being. Overcome by his emotions, Zhang Yu suddenly pulled Lu Yao Yao into a heartfelt embrace, surprising her with his warm and unexpected gesture. In that unexpected moment, Lu Yao Yao's heart raced, and a torrent of emotions rushed through her. She had never anticipated that Zhang Yu would hug her like this, and her mind raced to comprehend the significance of this gesture. His embrace, warm and comforting, 
left her feeling a strange mixture of surprise, confusion, and a flicker of something else, something that made her heart flutter. Young Yudi's Lu Yao Yao said he hugged her because he saw some scary creatures. She blushed but smiled, playfully punching him, but the warmth of his embrace and his lighthearted response eased her embarrassment. Their friendship grew stronger as they faced challenges together in the shadow lair. Lu Yao Yao continued to playfully insist that Zhang Yu should let go, but he teasingly clung to her, saying he was scared and wanted to keep hugging her. Their playful banter continued, the sudden appearance of a strange light drew their attention, and they both turned to see a person emerging from it. Amid the dimly lit and ominous environment, the sudden appearance of a stranger with a lantern sent a ripple of surprise through Zhang Yu and Lu Yao Yao. Bathed in the soft flickering light of her lantern, the woman, who seemed to have been drawn by the sound of a scream, approached them with an air of genuine concern. Her voice, laced, with kindness and curiosity, broke through the lingering tension as she politely inquired about their well-being. Lu Yao Yao, feeling somewhat flustered by the sudden embrace, quickly pushed herself back from Zhang Yu. The mysterious woman, seemingly undeterred by the strange surroundings, assured them that she could guide them out of this eerie place. Just as they were about to leave, Lu Yao Yao and the woman turned around when they heard Zhang Yu scream. Lu Yao Yao then shouted at Zhang Yu and asked him what his problem was. Zhang Yu wiped away a tear from his eye and forced a smile, saying it was nothing. Deep down, he couldn't help but think about the missed opportunity to gain shadow points by not swallowing the monsters he had fought earlier. It was a chance to become stronger, and he felt like he had let it slip away. Once rescued from the shadow lair, the night patrol division promptly guided the victims to their headquarters, where they underwent thorough mental health assessments. In the interrogation room, the first point of inquiry centered on the victims' identities, with their names being the initial piece of information sought by the authorities. During this phase of the process, it was Zhang Yu who found himself in the interrogation room, facing a series of questions and inquiries from the authorities. As Zhang Yu sat in the interrogation room, the initial line of questioning focused on his personal information. One of the officers began by gathering essential details about him, such as his name, age, address, and other pertinent background information, to ensure accuracy and accountability. The entire interrogation and questioning process was meticulously recorded on tape. The comprehensive documentation was a vital aspect of the official procedures conducted by the authorities. Officer Liu from the Night Patrol Division informed Zhang Yu that, as per standard procedure, individuals who had experienced such traumatic events were required to undergo psychological treatment and receive medication. This treatment regimen was designed to support their mental well-being and assist in their recovery. It was explained that the effects of this treatment would be expected to last for one month. Officer Liu further clarified that during the treatment period, if the military examination for the qualification tests were to take place, the evaluation grade for the test would be significantly affected, likely leading to a decrease in the overall score. Upon hearing about the potential consequences of undergoing treatment, Zhang Yu expressed his confidence in his mental well-being to the officer, stating that he was mentally well. Zhang Yu inquired if he could forego the treatment, indicating his readiness to proceed without it. The officer responded to Zhang Yu's request by explaining the critical importance of receiving treatment. She emphasized that the shadow lair contained various hidden and dangerous forms of pollution which could have delayed effects on individuals who had been exposed to it. These effects might manifest after some time has passed, making treatment a necessary and mandatory measure to safeguard the well-being of those affected by the shadow lair's unique environmental hazards. Zhang Yu raised a valid concern, pointing out that he had less than 10 days remaining until the military exam. He inquired whether the mandatory treatment would conflict with the timing of the upcoming exam. The officer sought to alleviate Zhang Yu's concern by assuring him that his situation was not unique. She explained that the night patrol had encountered similar cases in previous years and had established policies to address such situations. In these cases, individuals could apply for an early examination to ensure that their commitments and responsibilities were not compromised. Zhang Yu was taken aback by the sudden revelation of the option to apply for an early examination. The officer handed Zhang Yu a commitment letter, emphasizing that he needed to contact his parents and obtain their approval to sign it to proceed with the early examination. Officer Lu and provided Zhang Yu with additional details about the early examination process. She explained that it would be conducted within the night patrol and would follow the same regular testing procedures as the standard examination. Furthermore, 
She assured him that the testing equipment used for the early examination would be identical, and the night patrol would ensure the integrity, transparency, fairness, and security of the entire process. Zhang Yu supplemented the conversation by sharing that his uncle was also a member of the night patrol. The officer smiled and encouraged Zhang Yu to provide his uncle's information and position within the night patrol. Zhang Yu shared that his uncle held an administrative position within the night patrol, specifically in Zone East 1. Upon hearing the name of Zhang Yu's uncle, Officer Luan appeared visibly surprised, and her demeanor suggested a degree of familiarity with the mentioned name. Luan displayed a keen interest in Zhang Yu's revelation, stood up, and sought clarification. She inquired if the Li mentioned was associated with the Mu family and whether the names, Guang, meant brightness. Zhang Yu, taken aback by Officer Lu An's sudden reaction, affirmed the accuracy of the name he had provided in response to her inquiry. Her questioning had introduced an element of doubt, causing him to reconsider the specifics of his uncle's role within the organization. Zhang Yu's sudden realization and concern weighed heavily on him as he began to entertain the possibility that his uncle had already faced disciplinary action or had been interrogated by the night patrol. He acknowledged that he hadn't reported this information before. Officer Luan, aiming to alleviate Zhang Yu's concerns, reassured him that his uncle had not been subjected to interrogation or dismissal from the night patrol. With her notebook in hand, Officer Luan stood up and informed Zhang Yu that if his uncle indeed held a regular administrative position within the night patrol, she would personally escort him to meet his uncle. Zhang Yu and Officer Luan set out together, making their way to the night patrol headquarters where he would have the opportunity to meet his uncle. As they walked, Zhang Yu couldn't help but be captivated by the remarkable sights that surrounded him. The headquarters was filled with an array of cutting-edge technology, holograms, and advanced weaponry utilized by the night guards and those dedicated to safeguarding the public. The impressive display of equipment and technology served as a testament to the organization's commitment to ensuring the safety and security of their world. Zhang Yu was thoroughly impressed by the extraordinary surroundings that enveloped him. While making their way toward Zhang Yu's uncle, he overheard a conversation between two night guards. The night guards discussing someone who did not belong to the night patrol and lacked personnel records. Officer Luan, perceptive to Zhang Yu's sudden change in demeanor, inquired about what might be troubling him. Zhang Yu chuckled lightly and dismissed Officer Luan's concerns, assuring her that there was nothing to worry about. He attributed his momentary anxiety to being a newcomer to the night patrol and being in an unfamiliar environment. However, inwardly, he couldn't help but wonder if the conversation among the night guards had any connection to his alter ego in the shadow lair, raising some apprehension about a potential investigation. As Officer Luan opened the door to the room where Zhang Yu's uncle was located, she offered reassurance, telling him not to worry. She encouraged him to rest in the room while she went to locate and speak with his uncle. As Zhang Yu entered the room, he was met with a surprising sight, he found his friends waiting inside. Zhang Yu's curiosity was piqued by the presence of Lu Yao Yao and Xiao Xiao in the room. Upon entering the room, Zhang Yu observed that Lu Yao Yao was engaged in a conversation with one of the girls. She seemed to be inquiring about whether the individual had indeed seen and met the renowned assassin who had gained popularity on YouTube. The girl, who had been saved by Zhang Yu within the shadow lair, affirmed the truth of Lu Yao Yao's statements. As Zhang Yu observed the girl he had saved and Lu Yao Yao sitting beside each other, he couldn't help but ponder the circumstances that had brought them together within the night patrol headquarters. Lu Yao Yao warmly invited Zhang Yu to join her, inviting him to take a seat beside her. As he settled down, she initiated a conversation with Xiao Xiao, delving into the details of their experiences following their encounter with the assassin. As Xiao Xiao recounted her encounter with the assassin, her eyes seemed to sparkle with excitement, much like a star. She vividly described how she had witnessed the assassin facing off against ten peculiar creatures within the shadow lair. Xiao Xiao emphasized the calm and serious demeanor of the assassin, and with an air of awe, she narrated how, in a mere moment, the shadow sword had materialized, and the assassin had swiftly decapitated the strange creatures. Xiao Xiao continued her animated storytelling, using gestures and actions to convey the events that had unfolded when she met the assassin. As Xiao Xiao recounted her experiences, Zhang Yu listened attentively, though he couldn't help but wonder whether she might be exaggerating or embellishing some aspects of the story. While Zhang Yu was listening to his story, he inexplicably turned his gaze toward her legs, and a peculiar reaction ensued as he began to drool. 
Strangely, the sight of those white socks seemed to outweigh any reservations he had about her possibly exaggerating her story. Lu Yao Yao's curiosity was piqued as she listened to Xiao Xiao, a story about the mysterious assassin named Yu. She raised a pertinent question, inquiring about the identity of this person named Yu. From what she had heard so far, Yu didn't appear to be a member of the Night Patrol. Xiao Xiao shared her belief that the assassin, Yu, might have been a student from their generation. This revelation left both Lu Yao Yao and Zhang Yu curious about the basis for her conclusion. Xiao explained her deduction, elaborating that her conclusion about Yu being a student from their generation was based on various factors. She pointed to Yu's demeanor, behavior, and manner of speaking as key indicators. Additionally, she emphasized a particularly intriguing detail, Yu's likeness for gazing at girls' socks, especially those that were transparent and snug. Xiao Xiao playfully drew a connection between Zhang Yu and the assassin, Yu, asserting that Zhang Yu shared a similar inclination for gazing at girls' socks. Zhang Yu, taken aback by Xiao Xiao comment, pointed to himself in surprise and curiosity, she stood up, her cheeks flushed with embarrassment, and she playfully held onto Zhang Yu's head as if to deliver a playful smack. Blushing, she affectionately chided him, noting that his character hadn't changed a bit. Zhang Yu, seemingly rendered speechless by her actions, could only react with a confused expression. Amid their playful banter, Lu Yao Yao's dad suddenly burst into the room in a hurry, appearing as if he had been running. Lu Yao Yao's dad, panting and concerned, asked his daughter if she was okay. He had heard about her being pulled into the shadow lair. As Lu Yao Yao pinched Zhang Yu's cheeks, she reassured her dad that both she and Zhang Yu were perfectly fine and that nothing serious had happened to them. With a light-hearted tone, Lu Yao Yao mentioned that Zhang Yu might be experiencing some itching, prompting playful banter between them. Zhang Yu joined in the jest, humorously stating that he was hungry as well. Lu Yao Yao's dad breathed a sigh of relief upon hearing that both his daughter and Zhang Yu were unharmed. Expressing his relief, he instructed them to follow him and exit the room, evidently eager to ensure their safety and well-being in the wake of their recent experiences. As they left the room and found a moment of privacy, Lu Yao Yao couldn't help but inquire about the severity of the situation from her dad. He shared with her the gravity of the situation, explaining that it was highly serious. He noted that this incident marked the first time such a large number of people had been pulled into the shadow layer simultaneously, and the count of victims was still ongoing. Importantly, he reassured both Lu Yao Yao and Zhang Yu that they were not implicated in this unfolding crisis. In a moment of reflection, Lu Yao Yao's dad took out a cigarette, possibly seeking a brief respite. He emphasized the significance of the incident they had been through and how it had impacted them. In light of these events, he advised them to consider taking the pre-qualification test. When Lu Yao Yao noticed that her dad was about to light a cigarette, she coughed and subtly signaled to him about smoking indoors. Her dad fell into a thoughtful silence, possibly contemplating the impact of his actions and his daughter's concern. Lu Yao Yao's dad, putting the cigarette aside, proceeded to provide a brief overview of the pre-qualification tests they were considering. He explained that the test consisted of two distinct stages. The first stage involved an ability test, while the second stage focused on assessing one's willpower. Continuing to explain the pre-qualification test, Lu Yao Yao's dad detailed the first stage, also known as the initial awakening test. In this phase, students were deliberately exposed to contamination to trigger and awaken their latent abilities. Expanding on the details of the ability test, Lu Yao Yao's dad conveyed that this phase was relatively low risk compared to the initial awakening test. It primarily focused on assessing students' specialties by closely examining the characteristics of their awakened abilities. Completing his explanation of the pre-qualification test, Lu Yao Yao's dad mentioned the second stage, the willpower qualification test. He emphasized that this phase placed significant emphasis on willpower and mental strength, Lu Yao Yao's dad emphasized that it was the decisive factor in determining whether candidates possessed extraordinary qualities or not. Zhang Yu, intrigued by the details shared by Lu Yao Yao's dad, sought further clarification. He inquired whether willpower was indeed the key to success in the second test and whether individuals with stronger willpower were more likely to succeed. In response to Zhang Yu's question, Lu Yao Yao's dad answered with uncertainty, elaborating further on the intricacies of the examination process. He noted that the outcomes were not solely based on physical endurance or willpower. 
Some individuals might be able to endure the physical pain of losing body parts but only have average abilities, while others who appeared weaker or less serious in their approach might possess exceptional abilities. Continuing to shed light on the concept of willpower, Lu Yao Yao's dad emphasized that it wasn't merely measured by physical endurance. He clarified that willpower encompassed a broader spectrum involving beliefs in goodness, the ability to resist evil influences, and the capacity to adapt to the challenges posed by pollution. In essence, willpower was a complex and multifaceted gauge that encompassed a range of mental and moral attributes, making it a nuanced and intricate aspect of the pre-qualification test. Zhang Yu, eager to deepen his understanding, raised his hand and posed a question regarding the three opinions he had heard about willpower. Intrigued by his question, Zhang Yu's uncle inquired why he was interested in this particular aspect and seemed open to engaging in a discussion to provide further insights. Playfully intervening in the conversation, Lu Yao Yao suggested that Zhang Yu's interest in willpower might be related to someone whose mind was preoccupied with thoughts of girls' legs. Zhang Yu responded with a cautious smile and asked Lu Yao Yao if she was still holding on to that playful remark. Lu Yao Yao's dad addressed Zhang Yu's question, acknowledging that the three opinions regarding willpower did have an effect, even if slight. However, he clarified that the three opinions related to integrity didn't seem to have a significant positive impact on achieving positive outcomes. Zhang Yu's uncle, emphasizing the importance of one's mindset and moral orientation, added that, on the contrary, if an individual held negative opinions and their heart was consumed by malevolence, the test results would likely be unfavorable. Zhang Yu, seeking to delve deeper into the concept, asked why. Negative thoughts and evil tendencies had such a significant impact on the test outcomes. In response, Lu Yao Yao's father explained that these negative thoughts could lead people down a dark path, similar to an abyss. He further clarified that such thoughts contributed to the formation of pollution. Lu Yao Yao's dad elaborated, saying that evil and negative thoughts build up over time, and as a result, they can become even scarier and more harmful than the pollution caused by the strange creatures. Expanding on his point, Lu Yao Yao's dad emphasized that if anyone harbors such thoughts or negative emotions, it's always better to express them or talk about them. Keeping them bottled up inside can lead to confusion, which is something to be avoided at all costs. As he contemplated the importance of expressing negative feelings, Zhang Yu's mind wandered, and he couldn't help but imagine Lu Yao Yao and Zhang Yu wearing adorable uniforms. In doing so, he seemed to acknowledge that having negative feelings was a normal part of being human, and it was essential to address and share them rather than suppress them. While Zhang Yu's mind briefly ventured into less than appropriate thoughts, he recognized the need to divert his attention and perhaps engage in other activities to clear his mind. Lu Yao Yao's gaze, characterized by a combination of silence and judgment, revealed her disapproval or amusement at his momentary distraction. In response, Lu Yao Yao's father stood up and informed them that it was time to go back, emphasizing that someone else would arrive later to guide them for the test. This marked the end of their conversation and a shift in their immediate focus towards the upcoming qualification test. Lu Yao Yao's father then directly addressed Zhang Yu, explaining that his uncle, Lai, might not be able to personally attend to him due to an assignment. However, he reassured Zhang Yu that he would take care of signing all the necessary test papers on his behalf. Zhang Yu expressed gratitude and apologized for any inconvenience they might have caused. Uncle Lu shared valuable advice with Zhang Yu and Lu Yao Yao, encouraging them not to excessively burden themselves with matters beyond their control. Both Zhang Yu and Lu Yao Yao acknowledged their agreement with Uncle Lu's wise words, assuring him that they had understood the essence of his message. After their conversation and receiving guidance from Lu Yao Yao's father, they headed back and prepared for the upcoming qualification test, as well as any challenges that lay ahead. Upon their return to the room, Xiao Xiao warmly greeted them, creating a welcoming atmosphere for their reunion. There was a noticeable sense of relief and comfort as Lu Yao Yao and Zhang Yu rejoined Xiao Dai in the room. The incident in the shadow layer had brought them together in a unique way, forging a connection that went beyond their ordinary lives. As Lu Yao Yao took a seat beside Sayo Dai, her curiosity got the better of her, and she couldn't help but inquire about the whereabouts of the other individuals they had met earlier. Always ready to share her insights, Xiao Xiao leaned in and began explaining. She informed Lu Yao Yao that the others had left the room to complete the necessary procedures with their families. Lu Yao Yao then wondered if Xiao Xiao family had made it to the night patrol headquarters. Sayo Dai responded negatively stating that her parents had left Uni City a few days ago for important business. However, 
they managed to communicate over the phone and took care of what they needed to do without being physically present. While engrossed in their conversation, they suddenly noticed their friend's presence in the room. They turned their heads and saw him there, eager to join the discussion. Their chubby friend entered the room with a voice filled with amazement. He excitedly shared his recent experience with the medical team, explaining how they had applied a spray on his injured leg, miraculously relieving the pain. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more content. Feel free to leave a comment down below sharing your thoughts or suggestions. If you want to stay updated on all our latest uploads, click the notification bell icon. And hey, why not check out some of our other videos popping up on the screen right now? If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by liking, sharing, and subscribing. It really means a lot, peace.